Hello everyone, welcome to Scalers YouTube channel. Today we're going to look into the complete course of Android app development. And before we move on and understand what are the topics that are going to be covered today, please make sure to subscribe to Scalers YouTube channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. And also if you want to learn technologies and frameworks from industry leading experts, be conduct free masterclasses. The link is in the description. Go check it out. Now let's look at the topics that are covered in this particular session. To start off with, we'll be looking into the complete roadmap for an Android application developer and how you can become an Android application developer, what are the things you'll have to learn and everything related to it. After that, we'll look into the tutorial. The first tutorial will cover the basics of Android and also show you how to create a portfolio application. And in the next part of the tutorial, we'll be looking into, again, more Android concepts and also how to create a calculator. But it's not just one simple calculator, we'll be looking into two different user interfaces. What is the next logical step? Once you've created an Android application, you want to publish it to the Google Play Store. Now we have a complete video on that, on how to publish your Android application to the Google Play Store. And finally, we have a complete tutorial on how to create an Instagram clone, right? So these are the topics that are going to be covered in this particular session. There are various different demos. So you guys also can practice along with us. Now let's get started. Hi, this is Arnav. And in this video, we're going to be discussing what would be the ideal roadmap and what are the things that you need to learn to become a professional Android developer. Um, quickly, a little bit about myself. So, uh, Previously, I was heading the mobile engineering team at Zomato and I took care of the revamp of the Zomato app that happened in 2019 uh, and 20. And then I've been working as the lead engineer of the Android team uh, in Target India. Uh, in my you know, journey as a professional Android developer, I have had the opportunity to interview uh, almost close to 150 uh, candidates for different uh, kinds of roles, whether an entry level SD2, uh, you know, lead engineer kind of roles. I have been uh, had the opportunity to interview all of them, and uh, this video is going to be uh, taking from all of those learnings to you know give an idea about uh, what are the expectations that an Android developer, uh, you know, you know, in a professional setup at different levels, whether somebody is an you know associate or a junior Android developer fresh out of college and they have joined, what are the things that we expect out of them? Uh, what are the things that we expect at later stages? So. Uh, you could be uh, just getting started with uh, development or programming at the basics level. You could have worked on a little bit of UI development, maybe made websites or something, which can be a great advantage if uh, you are working on another platform, which is also UI based. And you could also be uh, somebody who has tinkered with Android Studio, downloaded it and tried their first app maybe, but they're trying to understand what are the things that are required? What are the prerequisites for you know landing an Android development job? Now, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of what are the kind of the different levels that people are looking for when they're hiring Android developers. So at a you know a basic Android engineer level, uh, we are looking for somebody who can join an existing Android team. There are other developers there and you can give them features to work on. You can give them very specific uh, you know specifications that the screen should look like this, clicking on that, the data should go there and they're able to build that. Um, as you become a more senior Android engineer, especially somebody who has two years or more under their belt uh, that kind of person would be somebody in a very big complex app they could be given an entire vertical inside that app so for example inside Zomato's app somebody could be responsible for the restaurant page uh, the entire restaurant listing uh, page or somebody could be responsible for the entire order and checkout experience and the men somebody could be responsible for you know uh, your profile page wallets cards that are getting added the entire payment experience uh, they might be working with team of three four more other engineers but they are completely responsible for the portion that they are working on and uh, for smaller apps they could be responsible for the development of the entire app and finally uh, as, like the uh, android team leads or the architects or principal engineer kind of roles that we have in that case we are expecting somebody who can you know talk to uh, product and business teams and understand what the requirement is and they can kind of visualize what has to be built inside the app they can uh, think of the larger architecture that needs to be uh, done inside that app and you know uh, they can allocate that work to the team uh, you know they are the ones who are taking the decisions on whether you're taking building an app in MVVM or MVP, uh, whether something's supposed to be reactive or, you know, uh, where the data needs to be cached locally or something like that. Those kind of decisions are getting taken by uh, those people. 
So let's take a look at uh, what are the requirements that you need to get to one of those uh, places. But before that, I would love to clear a few very frequently asked questions that I face when I mentor people in Android development. Uh, so the first question is, I do not know programming at all. Should I start learning Android development? Uh, the short answer to that for me is no. I would say that you must understand basic programming to a level where you can deal with some data structures and algorithms, uh, you know, uh, and you know, you're hands on with coding so that when you start working on Android, uh, right by that time syntax of the code is not something you're already fighting with okay uh, next i think uh, a lot of people ask is whether they need to know java before they start android uh, i would say that if you know java already it's gonna be a very very beneficial thing when i personally started learning android i did not actually know java and i knew C++ uh, and obviously I had to a little bit understand the syntax while I went with it. By the way, currently people who are working on Android development, new Android developers, everybody is working on Kotlin these days, uh, but uh, it uh, you know runs on the Java virtual machine itself. So an understanding of Java definitely goes a long way towards helping uh, you, know, you get started with Android. Um, another question that people ask a lot is how much data structures and algorithms should I know before I begin? And uh, to answer the question, I would say that if you are very clear with uh, the basic set of data structures like, uh, you know, uh, linked lists, hash maps, stacks, queues, uh, you know, these kind of things, and you know how the operations work, and you know which data structure is suitable in which kind of a use case, that should be uh, placing you up at a good point to, you know, start getting into Android development. Uh, some of the very uh, complex data structures like traversing graphs and trees and creating red black trees, BSTs, those kind of things might not be needed when you get started with Android development on a day to day basis. Those are things we don't need while we're building apps. OK, uh, what are the minimum specifications of my laptop or PC uh, and do I need to have an Android phone uh, for this? Uh, I would say like. You do need a little bit of powerful computer because the running the Android Studio, of course, takes a bit of resources. So something equivalent of a you know at least eight gen, nine gen Core i five kind of machine. At least uh, I would say at least eight GB of RAM, sixteen is kind of preferable if you have. While well, the compilation process, it really helps uh, if you have that. Uh, do you need an Android phone? You definitely, I would say yes. Uh, you can run things on an emulator on your laptop, but that both slows down your laptop. And uh, more than that, uh, it's much easier to test if you actually have a device uh, to test on. So I generally suggest going for that. Um, uh, final question is making Android games and Android apps similar. Uh, this is something uh, some people ask. They ask that whether when I start Android development, will that enable me to make games? I just want to clarify that what we are talking about today is about making Android apps, like some of the popular apps like Google's app, Facebook app, uh, Twitter, you know, these uh, WhatsApp, these kind of apps. They are not similar at all to how games are made. Games are made in a very different way. And actually, the way games are made for Android or iOS or even for desktop, that's all very similar. So that get, gets into, you know, learning Unreal Engine or Unity and making games using that. This is not related to that, actually. OK, so big question, Kotlin or Java when you get started with? I uh, would strongly suggest that if you're getting started today, uh, you should get started with Kotlin because the world in the Android development side, everybody is moving towards uh, Kotlin in a big, big way. And even uh, apps which are eight years, 10 years old, which was primarily written in Java, the entire app, uh, most of such apps, uh, I know a lot of my friends in the industry, the code bases have become almost 50% in Kotlin and it's continuously increasing. So maybe in a couple of years, you would probably very rarely find big Android apps that are written uh, majorly in Java anymore. So if you're starting today, definitely Kotlin is the way to go. Okay. So uh, things that are needed uh, to, you know, get started off uh, before you start even, you know, opening Android, I would say is that um, object oriented concepts and Java and Kotlin semantics. These are some things that I would place them firmly in the prerequisite bucket. So understanding things like especially if you're coming from a different language, then uh, how interfaces, abstract classes, the basic object oriented nature of how Java works, uh, then is the, uh, you know, dealing with uh, the basic data structures that exist inside Java from before. So array lists, uh, you know, uh, hash map, the, how the iterator works. So it's called Java collection framework uh, in a group. So understanding that is also something very important when you start off with Android development, I would say. Um, a very good understanding of uh, different kinds of visibility. So what is a package? Uh, what is package visibility? What is public? What is private? How inheritance works? You should be very uh, clear and thorough with all of these things. 
and uh, finally i think uh, an understanding of how the exception management works so when something goes wrong exception is thrown what is the stack trace how do you try catch they are kind of the basic stuff that i would say are prerequisites before we get started with android development next uh, i would be you know uh, starting off with the basic skills that you need uh, to learn in android before you can start applying to you know an entry level android engineer position so the steps to do it is uh, first obviously you know go to developer.android.com set up your android studio uh, open it make your first project using the wizard and even before you know editing any lines of code or anything just build that app and see it runs on your device that itself is quite a journey because you will face issues in setting up maybe the java sdk maybe in setting up the android studio understanding the project structure that's the first uh, you know step of the journey to do uh after that as you start learning things within android uh, the first few things to learn is understanding what activities are so and then uh, how layouts work so activities are basically windows so every time an uh, app is opened on your screen that's an activity right uh, layouts are how the ui is created on your android uh, phones so how do you place a button at some place how do you center things you know how do you make a scrollable list those kind of things are you know in the uh, layouts so when you're working with layouts it's kind of important to understand a couple of concepts like what's a frame layout what's a linear layout what's a constraint layout understanding which kind of layout you should use in what kind of a use case because for example something like constraint layout gives you unlimited freedom of designing a screen but then obviously it's more complex to actually render compared to something like frame layout which allows you much more limited options on placing things on the screen but it's much simpler for android ui to actually render it as well okay uh, then the different kind of widgets that exist on android which is basically your you know uh, where you can put a text where you can put a editable text where people can type where you can put a button where you can put an image how those things you know come together that's uh, kind of the things that you should just get started off uh, you know then uh, you know uh, again we will uh, come back to a little bit of theoretical and conceptual things that you need to understand at this level so uh, we need to understand that you know uh, what is the concept of event driven uh, programs versus procedural programs so a lot of people who start off with android development they are coming from a uh, uh, probably history of making command line apps where the command line program says enter the next number and you enter it okay then it says enter the second number and you enter it so basically the program is dictating what the user is supposed to do right in a ui driven and you know real world application it's more event driven so even if you have a calculator uh, any of your calculator's logic does not run till the user presses the equal to button okay so before that they will press some numbers and something on the screen so your logic uh, depends on a listener kind of logic so it is going to be listening for people clicking a button and whenever it listens that okay a button has been clicked you have to run certain parts of your logic okay so uh, the logic would not run in a linear fashion the logic would be written in terms of functions and kept in the code and then there would be different listeners like listen for the app to be opened listen for the button to be clicked and when such something is listened for then a certain function is going to be running so this is very different from a very linear flow chart kind of driven uh, pattern that you start off when you're working with basic programming now when you're doing real world ui apps you have to understand how this event driven model of uh, you know ui event driven model of programming works okay so uh, then uh, as you explore more in the android world what are the kind of very important uh, concepts that uh, is expected out of anybody who is an android engineer is uh, the very first thing is the android activity life cycle so when your app opens on the screen app closes down when another app is opened on top of your app what is the life cycle that happens because this is a very crucial interview question that everybody asks in android interview question uh, android interviews okay uh, then uh, different kinds of components that exist inside uh, an android app activities which are basically you know screens that are rendered on the phone services which are background tasks that can run then there are receivers and providers which you know uh, you you learn uh, later on is like uh, whenever you know some events are happening on your phone like a charger has been connected network has been disconnected network reconnected phone has rebooted so those are events and you can create a receiver to listen to such events okay and providers are a way for your app to provide data to another app uh, you know or fetch data from things inside the phone like you know fetch contact details uh, fetch uh, you know storage data those kind of things okay um then next thing to understand is a very uh, important concept uh, specific to android is the concept of intents so intents 
are uh, you know this little piece of information which tells what is the next step that you want to do especially when you're going from one app to another app okay so uh, there can be a share intent which is like when you open your gallery you have your photo and you click on the share button you get a lot of options you can share it to whatsapp you can share it to facebook you can you know share it to twitter those kind of things happen but that's an intent that's an intent to share similarly when maybe you're in an email app and you're trying to attach a file when you click on attach then it shows like okay there's the file manager there's the gallery where do you want to attach from so that's a you know maybe file open intent okay so uh, these are different intents how do we work with intents how do we go from one activity to another activity how do we go from one app to another app it all depends on intents so understanding intents is core to the understanding of how android works okay uh, then on the layout side uh, we need to spend some time understanding uh, how layouts written in xml interact with java uh, how the ids work in layout so when we design our ui it's a little bit like HTML. So we write it in XML, we design a layout, but then that layout has to interact with your Java or your Kotlin code, right? So that's where the IDs are very important. Uh, different IDs, uh, the Kotlin code will actually call that button using that ID, right? Uh, then setting up something like on-click listener, uh, which is basically the event-driven uh, model of working, which I was just speaking before. So you should understand how to set up such listeners. That's the next thing to understand. And then, uh, you know, as you start making uh, actual apps, uh, you know, then uh, we need to understand how to show dynamic data and a list of data. So if you see some of the most common apps that exist in the world, like say Twitter or Facebook or any social media, app, they are basically glorified lists. You open the app and it's a feed, it's a list, it's a list of posts. And every post looks very similar to each other. They have an user after a title, the content of the post and the body of the post and all of that stuff, right? So. The data is dynamic. It's coming from the API. You know, it's not hard coded inside the app. It's coming, they're making an API call, downloading that data and showing it on the screen. So how do you show a list of dynamic data? That's very core to understanding how Android apps are supposed to work. And these are the things which are kind of like very prerequisite level of Android development needed by everybody to learn. Uh, and at this point, you can make a few projects like you can make a calculator app or you can make a tic-tac-toe game. These kind of things I would suggest as projects that you can build at this stage, which gives you the level of confidence, uh, you know, to that that you are able to actually make Android apps, okay. Uh, then uh, comes uh, another conceptual stuff. So these white slides basically are where I'm talking about concepts. The blue ones are where I'm talking about Android specific stuff. So when we are starting to build some projects, then the next part which comes that we need to learn is, uh, you know, how do we architect our app? Where does the data go? Where does the logic go? Uh, how does the screen behave to user input and you know how does the screen show output to the user so there's generally a model view uh, pattern where model is the data view is what the user is seeing and then along with model and view there are different frameworks and different architectures we use there's mvc which stands for model view controller model view presenter model view view model so this, these are all generally called the mv star uh, family of patterns where we discuss that you know this is the data this is the screen and here's the piece of the logic that will actually take user input, modify the data, see changes in data and update it on the screen. What is that frame of logic that will handle that? That's the star there and there could be different things in star. And uh, these days what's very common in the Android world is using the MVVM architecture. Uh, but when you're going for interviews, it will be expected that you know uh, what is also MVC and MVP and you can differentiate between them and you can tell the pros and cons of each of those architectures, okay? Uh, separating out concerns like, you know, UI stuff should not, uh, you know, changes in the UI should not need changes in the data layer, data layer changes should not need changes in the logic layer. So how to build an app, keeping these things separate, that's uh, kind of very important. Okay. Uh, so covering these things are, you know, very important when you want to start making more complex apps beyond something like a calculator or a tic-tac-toe game, right? Um, then I think uh, closing up the set of requirements that are needed for every Android developer, even at an entry level, uh, comes the Android architecture components, which is a set of, you know, uh, libraries and frameworks created by Google, which helps in most of the common things that are needed by Android development. It's also known by the name of Jetpack. Uh, so uh, what are fragments? So fragments are pieces of, uh, you know, your fragments of your app, basically 
which is like a UI plus a little bit of UI related logic inside of fragments. So you can encapsulate slices of views in terms of fragments and you can reuse the same fragment in different different screens of your app in different different activities of your app so understanding how the fragments work the life cycle of the fragment then uh, in terms of mvvm which is like a very common pattern these days using android development so understanding how the view model works how does live data work which is like a reactive way of saving data changes automatically shown on the screen the repository pattern like fetching data from the you know internet or from a database how that works okay and a little bit of understanding of local database management using SQLites on Android. Local data is generally stored in SQLite databases. So how do you save that and using ORMs to do that? At this point, you can make uh, like maybe a task uh, list manager or, you know, people can add tasks and within every task, they can add notes. Uh, these kind of apps uh, you can make at this stage. Okay. And you should at this stage, you should make uh, Android projects uh, using all these architecture components that you have learned. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, there are a bunch of third party libraries, common Android libraries, which are used uh, in making almost all Android apps. Having a little bit of hands on experience with them is something people would be expecting because if you have made any real world app, even as a side project, they would be using some of these libraries. So, for example, for most network related stuff, we use OKHttp and Retrofit, which are libraries created by uh, Square open source. Uh, Right, uh, Retrofit is for making REST API calls, OKHttp is for making any network calls. Glide is an image rendering library which is used to render images from a URL to your phone screen. Uh, then serialization, so when you're making API calls, the data is usually coming in form of JSON or XML. So we use something like Jackson, JSON or Moshi to do the serialization work, like turning a JSON object into a Java object, okay, and back as well. So when you're sending data, then the Java object has to be turned back into JSON, okay. And uh, understanding of at this stage, you should also be uh, kind of adept at understanding the you know multi-threaded nature. So Android obviously is a multi-threaded operating system, and you should not be doing some very heavy-duty work on the main thread of your Android app because if you do that, then uh, your UI starts becoming very janky. And then if you do something that holds the UI for more than four or five seconds, then Android gives the pop-up that application is not responding as well. So any uh, you know, big pieces of logic, data data manipulation, those kind of things should happen in background threads while the UI remains free to operate for the user. It does not get stuck. Okay. Uh, after you have learned these things, you can probably at a place where you can build something like, you know, there is GitHub's API using which you can make like an app which tracks the trending, uh, uh, trending repositories on GitHub today, something like that. Or you can use Imgur, which is a photo sharing website, use the API of Imgur and create a clone of Instagram using that data. So these kind of apps you can start making. And these apps now start looking like projects which you can actually put up on the Play Store for fun. You know, these are fun apps or, you know, like uh, some people might even download it and use it. it. It might not be kind of apps for which you can get funded and start a startup. It's not such big an idea, but these are actually finished apps that you can put up on the Play Store and then people might download and use it. Side project kind of things uh, can happen out of this. So congratulations. At this point, you are an entry-level Android engineer. Uh, most companies which in general are looking for SD one level Android engineers they're hiring. This is the level of skill set that they're looking. Uh, so everything that we discussed till now, you have to learn all of these things uh, to be able to get into an Android engineer role. Okay. Okay. So now that you are, you know, uh, qualified as an Android engineer, how do you scale up from here? What are the things that you need to learn to become like a senior Android engineer? And what are the kind of requirements that uh, a professional place would have from Android team leads? Okay. So let's talk about those things. Um, so again, uh, some conceptual things that you need to learn at this stage is uh, you have to go deep into multi-threading. Once you start working on any, you know, uh, desktop uh, apps that you're making or, you know, uh, where the backend apps you're making or mobile apps you're making everywhere, uh, like like one of the one of the very important components that make a bridge between like entry level junior engineers to a senior engineer is uh, the concept of multi-threading, concurrency, parallelism, because uh, as the tasks start getting more complex, you obviously have to, you know, parallelize uh, your things. 
and in terms of android it's it's obviously like a uh, little bit more complicated by the fact that there is one thread which is responsible for drawing the ui of the screen and you can't do a lot of things there okay uh, there is also restrictions on what are the things that you can do on the main thread you can't do network actions on the main thread the app will crash if you do that uh, android does not allow doing that okay uh, understanding that what kind of tasks do take more time like reading writing data from the disk uh, you know reading writing data from the network uh, these kind of things can take more time how do we put them into you know a background thread uh, also it's uh, important to understand is that uh, the user needs responsiveness they they don't want to feel like the app has paused or stopped or something like that so keeping all of these things in mind uh, you have to understand how to do multi threading how to create a pool of threads in which some of your computation heavy task can be run and once those tasks are done how do you show the result back into your ui okay uh, so these are the kind of concepts that are very important uh, to learn and then uh, you have to go a little deeper into the language specific stuff like for java kotlin specific things like understand why we need synchronized methods so synchronized methods are methods whose body can be executed at a time only by a thread okay understanding what volatile variables are uh, volatile variables you know are variables whose data could have been changed by a different thread uh, so again i'm not getting very deep into these concepts right now in this video but but these are things that you need to understand how, how race conditions happen you know uh, how uh, synchronized volatile why they are used where they are used okay uh, then you need to understand a little bit about uh, you know you know object oriented design patterns which you need as your app starts getting more complex if you if you're looking at an app which consists of 15 20 java files you don't really start seeing the need for design patterns but when you have 100 java files in say a project you start seeing the need for design patterns like where would you need a builder pattern where would you need a factory pattern you know something that you want to use only a single copy across the entire app you can create a singleton for that so understanding those are definitely very important okay uh, then uh, there are the higher level patterns so the op patterns are how you write code but then there are the higher level patterns what is a clean architecture so uh, doing domain driven development where you keep your business logic in the domain the domain does not depend on anything and then you have data sources which handle the persistence layer then you have uh, you know uh, got the the basically the repository layer the ui layer the presentation layer how do you separate all these layers and make them work together okay and uh, then the as your project starts becoming complex as you divide it into different modules uh, another uh, you know very crucial toolkit in in your bag is going to be dependency injection so I, I would suggest you start off with simple dependency injection libraries like coin uh, which gives you a little bit of idea about why dependency injection is needed uh, because when you start using coin you will see that oh okay i was creating this object everywhere now i can create a simple coin uh, dsl and i can just pick that object up from there my code reduces you'll see you'll visualize why dependency injection is kind of useful uh, later on you should uh, you know obviously get well versed with uh, the most common dependency injection framework that is used across the java world and of course across the android world as well which is dagger okay and along with dagger today there is another library called hilt uh, which used along with dagger makes dependency injection very easy to do on android uh, and most big uh, companies with big projects they are going to be using dagger so knowing dagger is going to be kind of imperative for uh, senior android engineering roles in those kind of places okay uh, and finally uh, reactive programming is also something uh, you should uh, take a look at so a lot of times what happens is that uh, how the data is updated and what to be done when the data is updated these two pieces of the logic are sometimes written in very different places and you don't want to kind of couple them together so you write the code which updates the data at some place else and you write the code of what is to be done when the code is updated uh, the data is updated at some place else and then you connect them to with uh either a stream a reactive stream or an event listener or something like that so uh, there are frameworks around how to do kind of these kind of things which is uh, the rx framework which is the reactive uh, programming framework so uh for android specific there is rx java and rx android uh, by the way when you're even when you're doing kotlin development you use rx java the name of the library is rx java only right so uh, rx is a way to do reactive programming in android uh, there are patterns in kotlin also uh, specifically that are coming out uh, in like these days we will discuss about this but having knowledge of rx is definitely uh, very important for you know senior android roles android specific concepts that you also need to add to your arsenal uh, to to kind of get to a place where you can say that okay 
I know enough about Android. I have done my things so that you know I can be given the responsibility for a small app for the features of a big app, right? So uh, uh, runtime permission management. Uh, you know these days you can ask for permission for location. You can ask it only when the app is open or when the app is not open at that time as well. Uh, you know a lot of times when you, you, there could be different features in your app and those features might need permissions that are asked at the runtime to the user while that feature is supposed to be used rather than taking all the permissions in the beginning how that works okay um, how background tasks work so your apps like say gmail app is synchronizing your email and downloading your email and this attachments uh, in the background uh, at different times of the day so using work manager and alarm manager to schedule tasks in your app to happen at different different periods and execute them in the background even when that app is not open or even when the phone screen is off and it is just lying on somebody's desk how to do those kind of things so knowing those things are important uh, dealing with the operating system level providers of android like how to fetch uh, users contact details uh, read sms storage access these kind of things so these are all os level providers how to use them that's also something that you need to know um, if you deal with you know multimedia apps, then uh, getting well versed with ExoPlayer, which is uh, which is a third party library created by Google themselves, but it's not part of Android Core or operating system code, which helps you like you know uh, manually fine tune how videos and audio work, buffering them, coding decoding them, setting the you know uh, stream speeds, st setting the codecs. Uh, you know, play streaming, live streaming video from a certain RTMP URL on the net, and these kind of things. So that's in the multimedia domain of stuff. Okay. Uh, then another uh, vertical that uh, if you work with hyper local apps like delivery apps, etc., e com apps, you get an idea of working is like the GPS framework, collecting location data of the device and uh, the Google locations and Google Maps, uh, you know, SDKs, so that you can embed maps, show the user's current location in the map, how to do these kind of things. Again, that's very important. Um, then uh, another vertical, which is if uh, your app works with, you know, maybe gestures or movement, or it's a game kind of an app, those kind of apps need understanding of the uh, Android sensor framework. So there is like, the light sensor, the accelerometer, the gravitometer, step sensor for how many steps the person has taken if you're making a healthcare kind of related app and the gesture detection uh, framework like swipe gestures, you know, double tap and you know, shake, uh, tilt, these kind of gestures, how to detect those kind of gestures, working on those kind of things is also uh, a very nice thing to have in your toolkit, okay? And finally, uh, connecting with some of these services that Google has made like Firebase, for analytics, for crash reporting, for push notifications, uh, right? Uh, for doing simple machine learning stuff like you know detecting objects and all, uh, there is ML Kit by Firebase. So understanding all of these things are like at a senior Android level, we'd be expecting that you'd be knowing these kind of things as well. Okay. Um, so once you've done this, once you've come to this point, uh, so congratulations, you are uh, capable enough to be uh, sitting for interviews for a senior Android engineer role. Uh, the fundamentals that we discussed for a basic Android engineer, those are obviously going to be asked, but some of these things like your experience with working on these Android uh, components that we just discussed, those are also starting to be important when you're looking at a senior Android engineering role. Okay. Uh, now that we understood till here, what is it that you need to push you to that final level where you could be like a android architect or android team lead okay let's talk about those things okay so here comes obviously uh, where at a team level you're not just writing code but you're setting up culture for the team you're setting up the way the team works you're setting up the workflow for the entire team as well and for that obviously you are the one who's be you know responsible for uh, designing and developing a testing architecture, how tests are written for your project, uh, how would you automate those tests so everybody, every time somebody makes a pull request to the GitHub repository, the tests are automatically going to be running, which tests should run on which kind of pull request, designing those things, automating the release uh, workflow as well so that, you know, making an Android app release should not be a very manual uh, task as your teams start growing. Like like the kind of teams which need an Android architect or a lead kind of position to handle the Android team. They would also be needing like automation in how the app is released. They would need weekly release cadence so that, you know, every week releases happen. So you should have, uh, you know, uh, a setup in place so that you can record 
UI tests, work with the QA team, record UI tests so that they can be automated, uh, use frameworks like Mockito or Mocha, which can mock out certain parts of the app, which uh, while testing are needed. So for example, you want to mock some fake data coming from the API while the tests are running because real data, you can't run tests on real data because the real data keeps changing. So you can't, you know, so for example, taking an example of Twitter app, right? So if you test with real data, every time you open the app, a different tweet is there at the top because somebody else has tweeted something new by that time. Uh, but when you're testing, you would probably want a consistent response. So you can test that, you know, every time I open with this set of response, this is the tweet at the top and I can see it. Okay. So mocking things out in that sense is uh, essential. Uh, so, so all of these, uh, you know, CI, CD, testing, uh, mocking and QA automation. That's a whole bucket of things that are very important and for most senior Android engineering uh, and beyond kind of roles, like where, where you are getting on board to be a lead or an architect, there's gonna be a lot of interview questions around this, like what are your opinions on this? In a previous place you've worked, what kind of automation systems that you had set up? What are your opinions on what will you set up here? If you join us, those questions will be coming, right? Uh, then uh, managing large Android projects become a very uh, defining feature for somebody who wants to be uh, like, you know, grow more further in, in, in the Android vertical and then become an Android architect is that, you know, uh, bigger projects uh, also have bigger teams. So when you have bigger teams, you want to divide the code base in such a way that people's work don't conflict with each other. And to do that, you'll be creating separate, separate gradual modules. Uh, at Zomato, we had I think 60 plus uh, gradle modules at target uh, we have uh, 300 uh, plus uh, gradle modules uh, right uh, i think uh, so how do you know work with code bases which have so many gradle modules how do they you know come together and build uber as the famous example of having i think more than 1500 modules uh, in their project right then uh, when your build system becomes so complex so uh, writing custom gradle scripts so that you know uh, during the app getting built, there could be some other operations that are happening. Uh, there could be analytics of the build itself. So if somebody's build fails, the, it triggers an alert automatically around that. Okay. Uh, pulling in different, different, maybe security keys, which are needed to build those kind of things you have to write down in a build script. So understanding, you know, uh, how Gradle works and understanding how alternatives to Gradle, Gradle like Buck, which is made by Facebook and Bazel, which is made by Google, uh, Google as separate uh, as alternative to Gradle, which are getting used by some apps these days because uh, Gradle builds in very big projects can take up to 20, 25 minutes time, uh, fresh, clean build, right? Uh, build systems like Buck and Bazel have been designed to reduce that build time, make the developer experience better. So a little bit of exploring in those domains uh, would be helpful uh, if you're aspiring to get to that point, right? Uh, creating custom uh, views. Uh, so as you know, your app grows and your design team grows, they would be coming up with very bespoke looking UI components, which are very different from what you can achieve with the material design toolkit or what is default available on Android. So how do you make custom, uh, say for example, at uh, Zomato, we had a loader which looked like a slice of pizza. Uh, at Target, the Target's logo is circular. So we use that as a loader. How to design custom loaders like that? You know, both like in terms of uh, implementing the, uh, somebody has designed it in After Effects. How do you, write that down in Kotlin code, uh, you know, drawing things on the screen pixel by pixel to make those kind of loaders. How do you make custom view kind of components? How do you make a circular view or a star shaped view? These kind of things, uh, you know, start uh, getting important to know uh, these things. Okay. Uh, then uh, with big apps, what happens is you have to develop some uh, base set of rules that run in every activity, in every recycler view so that your team does not have to do more and more boilerplate work, uh, right? So every time a new fragment is opened, maybe some analytics data is supposed to be sent to your analytics server. So you would create a base fragment in which you would keep the analytics code and everybody who is creating a fragment would be extending from the base fragment, okay? Uh, developing such common patterns inside your app's code base is again, something which is gonna be expected from you at this point, uh, you know, uh, so writing custom base activities, base recycler views, base fragment that the rest of your team would be using. It starts becoming a little platform level work. It's called platform work because you are developing components that are gonna be used by other developers to build features, okay? Uh, right, and mostly in big teams, your Android leads and architects, they are generally the ones who are leading the platform team. They don't directly work on features, they work on uh, the components that are needed by the rest of the team to make their life easier, right? Uh, 
performance optimization uh, using android profile or detecting memory leaks using leak canary you should be the guy who should be always looking for ways to make your app smaller faster leaner meaner all of that stuff you should be at the forefront of doing those things uh, as a senior android engineer if you develop the attitude as well as the skills to be able to uh, you know make your app free of memory leaks crashes you know tune it for faster performance uh, you know the, the there are a lot of things like this async layout inflator so inflating the layout can become a time taking process if the layout is complex so there is an asynchronous layout in, uh, inflator as well uh, which you could be using these kind of things uh, start becoming you know more and more uh, important okay so uh, and then finally uh, you know you should also be somebody who has a hand a uh, finger on the pulse of the android ecosystem uh, stay in touch with all the latest and greatest stuff that is happening uh, right uh, you know watch google io see the direction in which the uh the makers of the android sdk and the android os team what new things that they are thinking for the next version of android right stay in touch with those things new libraries that are coming in an alpha level beta level trying those out and seeing if they can be useful for your team to use eventually uh those things start becoming very important so today speaking since 2021 i think some of the latest and greatest today is a lot of people are starting to build ui using jetpack compose instead of using xml so take a look at that how that is working right and and uh, evaluate the pros and cons whether in your team using jetpack compose would be a good idea or not uh these days in kotlin there are a lot of new experimental features like flows streams and coroutines which together can give you an alternative to rx java and a lot of apps are starting to move towards that because the syntax is much more easier to see so how can you develop an alternative to rx java using coroutines and flows something like that it may, maybe you can read about uh, that uh, dynamic delivery so you can you know deliver smaller features of your app later on after the app has been downloaded so the app size becomes small and people download the app they can use the basic features if they try to use a certain other feature then the separate component of the app will get downloaded so this is something i uh, was doing at uh, zomato before uh, i left and i could not actually complete was zomato's chat module uh, is actually written in react native so that kind of is uh, it makes the app size of the app 4 5 mb more uh, we could reduce the size of the app by 4 5 mb if we remove that and not everybody is chatting like when they download the zomato app the first thing that they want to do is order like if their order does not go through they might want to chat at that point we can download the chat component into the app and do it so we can use uh, use something like dynamic delivery and feature modules to achieve that and uh, understanding how these things work again uh, would be something that would be your responsibility if you are the android lead or the architect right uh, like we discussed custom views similarly custom animations as well using motion layout again latest and greatest stuff uh, you know you should you should uh, cover things like that once you have done all of that uh, so congratulations you are at the point where you should be looking at within your own team become somebody who leads initiatives uh, right or you know when you're looking at openings and there is an android architect or a, you know lead android engineer or a principal android engineer kind of openings and you are at this point you have garnered all the experience that i've talked about till now you can start applying to those kind of positions at this point okay so i hope this was uh, helpful both the first part and the second part of this videos and uh, i really hope that uh, people who are starting off in the journey as android developers these videos give them an idea of what are the things that they need to know for various levels of android engineers that the industry is uh, looking for uh, by the way, uh, to become like a senior uh, or, you know, a lead Android engineer, there's a lot of system design uh, and, you know, low level design, builder patterns and, you know, design patterns, object oriented, these kind of things you need to cover. And what better place to cover these things than attend a Scalar Masterclass. So visit uh, scalar.com, uh, you know, just scroll to the bottom. There is, uh, you know, you will find a link to the masterclasses and we have master classes every uh, week every few weeks and most of these master classes deal with uh, you know system design design patterns uh, the exact uh, sort of things that you need as an engineer whether it's mobile developer or whether you know as a general uh, engineer you need to understand these kind of things as you want to grow so go ahead to scalar.com uh, register for the next master class that is coming up and brush up your concepts on system design uh, along with that uh, definitely you know uh, like share and subscribe this video if this was helpful 
uh, we would be coming up with you know more such roadmaps in uh, the next few days. Hi folks. Uh, so we'll talk about any and every question that uh, any one of you has uh, about Androids. One of the first uh, pieces that uh, a lot of people uh, asked me about was a lot of people ask about Android development these days is whether we should go with a native Android development. Uh, we should do uh, Kotlin or whether we should uh, you know uh, go with uh, one of these uh, you know uh, hybrid frameworks like Flutter or React Native. So I think maybe that's one of the uh, questions that we can pick up first. And in fact. That's so the first few questions that have come. Dakshdeep and Akash have already said the same thing. So we can definitely uh, pick up probably Akash's questions for Kotlin. First of all, uh, is job market speaking, I think that's that's what a lot of people ask about. So job market wise, uh, the maximum number of jobs that are there, I think 90% of the jobs out there in the market uh, are in native Android development, which means that it's going to be in Java and Kotlin. Okay. Now, uh, that's the market situation as of today. Uh, Flutter uh, is definitely growing. Uh, by the way, React Native is also there. Okay, so it's, don't forget that React Native is also there. React Native, uh, the kind of apps that React Native was used on uh, largely, uh, today a lot of this market is getting captured uh, by Flutter. Now, uh, there are uh, particularly new startups where having separate Android and iOS teams is uh, difficult. Uh, very early stage startup. That's one of the places where Flutter is uh, getting used. Two, uh, I would say, is uh, agencies. So uh, you know, design agencies, marketing agencies who also make apps for some of their clients or uh, small app studios who make projects for small companies. Right. Uh, that's another space where uh, Flutter is uh, you know has become uh, sort of common today. Uh, so coming to your answer, I would say which one to pick and um, a couple of things. Now, if you are proficient already in Java, by the way, okay, and you want to build up a very serious career in mobile development, you know, you want to earn a good bit of money and you want to make a serious, you know, four or five year long career in Android development. Today, the answer to that is uh, still going with uh, Java and Kotlin, right? Uh, Java and Kotlin, by the way, uh, you know, uh, Kotlin is uh, the new wave in which apps are made. Uh, but today, uh, if you go for interviews for Android development, you would need to know both Java and Kotlin. It's very important that uh, you understand this, that both Java and Kotlin, uh, knowing them is, is uh, important. Okay. Now about uh, uh, Flutter, I would say if you're a web developer, uh, say, just for example, you're not so well versed in Java, but you're making websites. And uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes you make a project and you feel like, okay, can I also would have made an Android app for it or iOS app for it? And uh, just the mobile website would not be sufficient. You might need that app to be on the mobile offline first support or something like that. You can probably pick up Flutter in that case. Dart would be a language kind of easier, more familiar. Well, by the way, Dart is familiar whether you're coming from Java or Kotlin or coming from uh, JavaScript. It, all of them are very similar languages. Would be uh, pretty familiar. Uh, what Flutter does not solve very well is, uh, you know, uh, the fact that there are a lot of external libraries for image manipulation, for video processing, uh, for payment ecosystems. So these kind of things, uh, there are a lot of third-party libraries. They exist only in Java and in Kotlin. They don't exist in Flutter. So even if you make Flutter apps and you want to uh, connect deep system level uh, things into it, like video encoding, encryption, these kind of things you have to integrate, then you will have to write some parts of your code in Swift for iOS and for Kotlin uh, in Android anyway, right? But if you're fetching information from an API and just simply showing it on the screen, right? A uh, lot of it is just API based current uh, information happening. So if you make a front end for, say, uh, even if we talk about Twitter, so, some there's a Twitter client, you are showing tweets on the screen, something like that. Uh, Flutter is a good framework to come up and uh, build for that. But if you're trying to build something like, say, TikTok, uh, right, then uh, handling that video processing, uh, that network pipeline, those things, again, not saying it's not possible, but it's sort of uh, harder. Even with apps like Instagram, which is actually made in React Native, the image processing parts are written completely in native in iOS and in Android. So, so, so I think that answers the Flutter versus Kotlin question at large. And then unless there are anything more specific in this, I would not be picking up this particular question. Uh, going on to uh, uh, the next question is Raghav Agarwal has said, how to make sure that a layout looks same throughout all devices supported by the app? 
and are there any tips for that now uh, there is to be a old school uh, thinking which is you create a, a, a portrait layout and landscape layout then in portrait you create a certain width certain height these kind of layouts but the modern understanding of this is uh, that you do how web developers do how bootstrap uh, thinks about responsive layouts right so uh, you might have two layouts for horizontal and vertical uh, right landscape and portrait but within portrait for different screen sizes uh, you know uh, use proportionality based things like you want first half of your screen to show something second half of your screen to show something so you use constraint layout and within constraint layout there is something called guidelines so you can create a 0 0.50 guideline which is at the middle of your screen half of it and then you can put items above it and items below it and then uh, so on and so forth so i think uh, today the conversation moreover is about uh, the proportion of the screen to be used do you want like three cards to be shown in the screen or two cards to be shown in the screen and then then you just uh, sort of implement that uh, don't try to achieve screen specific layouts try to create a proportional layout and then it will work for all screens that's the modern way of doing uh, apps uh, also, uh, one more thing that has happened a lot and people have understood is that people don't rotate their phones a lot unless they're watching media. So if only when people play games and when people watch media, they use landscape, otherwise they're always using portrait mode. So a lot of very popular apps by Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, many of these apps, they uh, lock the orientation of the activity to portrait mode, which is perfectly fine for you to do that. You won't want to bother about landscape. Mode. but for tablets, obviously, you will have to bother because for tablets, both the orientations happen. But for mobile, locking to uh, portrait mode is something that's a valid thing that a lot of apps use these days. Okay. Uh, whether data structures algorithms are necessary for Android development and how to use? Um, very important question. Um, so when you talk about data structures and algorithms, it's a broad topic, right? What is needed and what is not needed? So some of the very advanced data structures like uh, you know uh, trees, tries, um, you know, red black trees, binary sorted trees, min, ha min heap, max heap, uh, you know, say that di directed graphs. Now these uh, data structures are used to solve very specific set of problems. Now, understanding how these data structures are created, uh, having the ability to manually write these data structures on your own, like you do in competitive programming, that's not needed uh, for Android development, not for any basic level development job, actually, for backend, frontend, Android, any of them. The, the ability to implement these data structures of, by your hand manually, that's not needed. Okay. Uh, conceptually, if you know them, that's good. Uh, but uh, your basic level data structures, like uh, you know, uh, stacks, queues, linked lists, hash maps, these are definitely needed because on a daily day to day life when you're implement creating apps uh, these data structures are getting used a lot okay uh, and uh, arrays and strings now very important is that you understand how arrays and strings are manipulated how they can be manipulated using iterative recursive ways a good understanding of where uh, something like a tree can be used something like a hash map can be used something like a stack can be used which problem uh, can be best solved by which data structure that understanding if is there ha being able to create the data structure on your own uh, without looking up the internet those kind of things people generally need for programming interviews those are not needed for development but knowing which data structure is supposed to be used where well, that knowledge is definitely going to be very useful so uh, ram krishna has a question which is uh, you want to move uh, to uh, dream companies like uber linkedin phone pay uh, that's fantastic for interviews, how should you prepare? Uh, should you learn newer concepts uh, or, or multi-platform? Okay, now, now, interesting. Uh, so newer concepts like Jetpack Compose or Kotlin multi-platform, these are definitely not needed to crack interviews. That's for sure, okay? So uh, any uh, piece of technology, any new library or new way of development that has not existed for more than two years, okay? That is not going to be a deal breaker in interviews. It's as simple as that. Big companies don't use uh, new libraries and new frameworks unless they are at least stable version for at least one year old like that. Nobody is using alpha beta level stuff, right? So Kotlin multi-platform today, some companies are experimenting a little bit. Jetpack Compose, some companies are early adopters of it. 
nobody is going to not take you because you don't know these things so from a job change perspective covering these things are not essential okay very very important now what type of company it is uh, on basis on that it depends whether you should do lead code or whether you should do side projects now say for example a company like phone pay uh, i would say doing side projects is better for a company like uber uh, doing lead code is better because uh, companies like uber and a lot of companies like that which are big workforces they do not hire for android developers they hire for generic sd2 sd3 these kind of roles for that uh, and, and after you join by chance you know android well they will put you on an android project but if you know you don't know android well they don't care they will put you into a whatever project needs uh, current you know immediately hands are needed so companies which hire for generic sd roles their lead code stuff you know that's more important than developing your skills uh, but but a little smaller mid size company like say zomato we used to hire for android developers particularly even at target we are hiring for android developers particularly we are not generic hiring for any developer so their uh, data structure algorithm based questions are lesser and platform specific topic specific questions are more in the interview process uh, shishak's question is about whether people hire specifically android only for sd and i think i just answered that question is that some companies do hire for sds generic roles and some companies do have for android specific roles and if you go and search for uh, you know job offers you will find that there are a lot of engineer software engineer engineer level 1 level 2 these kind of job offers and there are also android engineer kind of job offers on the market right so uh, generally the larger the company is the more generic the role is right uh, smaller the company the more specific the role is if the company has you know 5000 10000 employees engineering employees then uh, it's most likely more generic uh, your topical skills are not so much needed i dare to you strange okay okay coding cosmos uh, very interesting question and i feel like a lot of people uh, come up with questions like this that you are in the fourth sem and uh, we have been doing android since first sem uh, uh, and and you worrying about fushi os and it will replace android uh, so this is exactly the effect of hype marketing uh, that it has on young minds of the industry today okay when i was in my fourth sem i think uh, not fourth sem maybe at least 7th uh, sem that's when i first heard rumors about fushi os okay uh, that's when i heard rumors uh, today it has been four more years since then and fushi apart from a demo on google home device has not you know uh, come out now kotlin uh, people say that kotlin with a new way of development and java would be obsolete and they started saying this in 2016 uh, kotlin google said officially that they will uh, you know make kotlin uh, an official language in 2017 in 18 google said that they will make kotlin as the primary language for which internal libraries and everything is developed 2019 many companies started saying that they are have started to use kotlin internally big companies started saying and i think since 2000 from 2016 and 17 time to 5 years later 2021 is when uh, kotlin has actually become mainstream and in most companies more than 50% code is written in kotlin in android today right uh this starting from 5 years back when kotlin first started getting used in production based apps and it was completely interoperable with java okay so fushia replacing android is uh i mean this video is going to be there on youtube for a long long time and uh, you know i'm going to be putting my neck out and and i wouldn't want to come back and see this video and see me myself being proved wrong but within the next 5 years i don't see fushia becoming more popular than android replacing android is is not even getting there but fushia being like a serious contender and replacement for android uh, is not going to happen within the next 5 years uh, if i take a bet okay don't uh, get into those hypes and don't try to prepare for a future that's 5 years away okay uh, because you don't know what's 5 years away prepare for the industry today and as the industry will change you will adapt to it that's what everybody does okay people who were hardcore angular developers they adapted to react they have adapted to vue js those same people who were hardcore angular developers might have been sometime back backbone js or knockout js developers people adapt it's not like angular people have become obsolete they have just adapted to where the industry has gone okay 
uh, and uh, by the way one more thing and uh, this might not sound very sweet and nice coming from me but uh, from first sem to fourth sem uh, you know your android development skills definitely might have improved but production level android apps i'm sure you're not have started making because production level android apps means having unit test integration test ci cd pipeline working and uh, you know uh, using dependency injection dagger using rx java or maybe these days core routines uh, in place and uh, you know you know all of these things should be happening then only we should say that we are making production level apps so i, I believe that you know just two years of effort uh, you still have a lot of gaps to fill uh, in that uh, space okay so uh, Siddharth has asked, okay, Siddharth, say, are there opportunities for freshers to get a job as an Android developer? Obviously, why not? Lots of people get, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think Android uh, development jobs as uh, freshers. Uh, a lot of companies hire, okay. Uh, by the way, even very big companies like Google kind of companies, uh, they're also, people are hired for a generic SD role. Once hired, many of them right from day one, they're, made to work on uh, Android or iOS or, or web or anything like, you no, know, there's no guarantee what kind of project you would be given. So one bigger company, but at a startup level company, freshers are definitely hired. Like, like at uh, Zomato, we used to regularly hire freshers uh, in our Android team. Uh, and similarly, a lot of companies where my friends work, you know, Swiggy is there, Flipkart is there, uh, uh, Urban Company is there, uh, Ghana.com is there, you know, all of these companies, they hire uh, freshers for Android development jobs. Okay. Abhishek has said, wait, like, like weight of Android apps or my weight, should I, should I, should I reduce weight or, or have you, are you seeing me after a long time on YouTube and you're seeing I have reduced weight? If, if that's yes, I'm flattered. Uh, but uh, okay, coming on to the next question. So Himanshu has asked, is Flutter going to be used by tech giants or startups in the future? By the way, Flutter is used by Google to create their own AdSense app. Uh, Flutter is used by Zerodha which is a big company uh, to make their kite and coin apps and flutter is used by alibaba to create uh, their dashboard app so flutter has started to be used by some of the uh, bigger companies uh, none of the very big companies have used flutter yet for their main app uh, primary app nobody has used uh, startups many of them have started using flutter yes like i said if you are mainly doing a api based and ui based project and device hardware level stuff you're not getting into too much then flutter is a good choice to go with and then you can make an app okay dipanshu has a question which is uh, which has more career opportunities web development or android development in terms of quantity web development just has like way more number of job opportunities than android it's it's a bigger domain it's a bigger field also web is a wide word right i mean you might mean front end you might mean back end you might mean full stack Combining all of those things together, web is a huge domain, right? Uh, today in India, like including service sector, product sector, big company, small company, everything included, if we have 1.5, 1.6 lakh fresh jobs every year uh, in the development space, I think 80 to 90,000 of those would be in the web development space, uh, right? Uh, so, and, and mobile development space jobs would be 20,000, 25,000 of them uh, in that space, I think. The rest of them might be in, in specific, like, desktop app security and uh, you know uh, system administration these kind of things uh, so way more number of jobs is available that is more uh, but if you look at like uh, way the number of jobs with the median salary uh, so you know say jobs that pay 10 lakh per annum the competition for a 10 lakh per annum job in Android uh, or mobile development is going to be less than the competition for a 10 lakh per annum job in web development. Uh, that's there. And as you go a little higher in the salary bracket, like a 15 lakh per annum jobs, I don't think there are more 15 lakh per annum web jobs than there are Android jobs. I think there the numbers start getting a little closer uh, to each other. All right. Uh, so that's uh, about a quantity quality assessment on web development versus Android development. Uh, Pankaj has a question, where do you think Ionic framework stands when compared to Flutter and React Native? So by the way, Ionic, uh, you know, Ionic is a little too specific, but Cordova, which is basically running web apps inside Android or iOS app containers, Cordova itself is a framework which, it's, it's, it's a platform on which the Ionic framework is also made and there are other uh, ways to do it as well. Now, 
Codeva is actually very big, and in fact, in both Android and iOS app stores, uh, the maximum number of apps are the native apps, like the ones made in Objective C and Swift for iOS, or the ones made in Kotlin and for Android. That's the native apps are maximum. The second highest number of apps, uh, you know, are in Cordova in both the platforms. And the reason for that is that there are hundreds and thousands of apps, which basically are the website of that product wrapped into a app kind of container so that locally things can be stored. Ionic actually also is a subset of that problem. Um, I think uh, compared to native Android development and then React Native and Flutter, I think Ionic, particularly framework specific, is going to be a little less, uh, quite less, uh, but it's not like it does not exist. There, there's sufficient amount of opportunities in that as well. Uh, could you provide a real-time tutorial for learning Android app G2? Uh, you know, uh, you should see the last video that we published. We, we just published, like, go channel, like, go back a little, you'll find. I did a five-hour video. It was five hours of me continuously coding an Instagram clone. I, we will do more videos like that as well. Uh, so definitely check that video out. You would love that video, I'd say. Fahil Tanwar has asked, uh, not worked in Java. So if you are not worked in Java, uh, can you start learning Android development from React Native? I, I would say yes, uh, you can. Uh, though I would want to warn you that uh, if you're making bigger projects, uh, then having knowledge of how the Android SDK and Java works is going to sooner or later uh, come uh, and then become useful. Okay. So eventually you will have to learn either Java or Swift or both uh, a little bit to debug some of your uh, issues, right? Um, where to start? I think there's a free code camp series on React Native. Maybe you can just at least start from there. It's a free tutorial. And uh, then, then see where it goes. I think for most people, for most things, that's what I suggest. You know, go to free code camp, try out the technology, see if you're able to get started, make the initial project. And then you can see a lot of, you know, if there are paid courses, if there are books and all of that stuff. Okay, so the free code free camp one is the thing I would suggest is the first place to just go and check out. Uh, Fenil has asked an interesting question how to implement the driver routing feature in Zomato app. So that's a NP hard problem, traveling salesman problem, right? So it's, it's not a very Android specific question. And I would be honest, I wasn't involved in the team that worked on the system. That's kind of like how the tra traveling salesman problem is solved. It's a subset of that traveling salesman problem. So I think if you take a look at the traveling salesman problem, and uh, that's something at Scaler Academy in our courses, we actually do cover. So you probably get a taste of how uh, these kind of algorithms are implemented. Ayushman has a question. Uh, that you're in 6M, I have many other projects, but no work experience, how to get uh, internships at good startups and what should I do? You should apply to a lot of places. Uh, at for early stage startup internships, a good place to discover uh, some of them would be uh, angel.co, angel list, and you can search for some of them there, uh, right? Uh, that, that's one place. Another thing I would suggest is, you know, get together with some friends of yours uh, and, participate in some of the online hackathons where you have to build apps and websites and all. That's also a great place where you learn to translate an idea into a project, which is uh, kind of very useful and very helpful, uh, right? What these interviews uh, try to figure out as well when they ask you uh, the questions, okay? Uh, Raga is a question, what happens uh, is that sometimes that an application perf perfectly running on Android Studio class after release. This happens because of something called ProGuard. And minification. When you make a release mode of your APK in your early days, you can set ProGuard to false or minify enabled uh, to false. But that's not a good strategy long term to make you know production uh, ready projects because obfuscation is important. So follow the uh, ProGuard rules and make sure that all the ProGuard rules are added in your project. Uh, that's uh, one thing. Connect your app to Firebase Crash Lightix so that all the crashes that happen on release, you get a stack trace of them so you can start uh, deploying a fix for that. Manish has a question, how can someone start out in Android development as a pressure in, in COVID times uh, and how many large projects are sufficient? So I think, uh, right. Um, so uh, the COVID time uh, part is uh, probably irrelevant, uh, right? Uh, because uh, the, the answer is, sort of going to be the same whether it's, it's because of pandemic or without the pandemic and, and all that. 
I mean, go to developer.dino.com, learn the basics, and you know, start building some apps, and then start uh, thinking of some projects like a to-do list manager, a scientific calculator, you know, note-taking app, these kind of uh, projects, and uh, you know, uh, start building something uh, like that. That would obviously uh, be a good way to, uh, you know, learn certain uh, skills in Android development that are needed uh, to be able to build such projects. Okay, how many large projects? I think. You should have two, three smaller projects that you have built over a you know week or less kind of time, and you should have maybe three, four, uh, you know, probably contributions to some projects, uh, you know, which which are a little la larger uh, in terms, or you can probably set up a group of your friends, like-minded friends, and you can set up an open source project of your own as well, and then that is something that you can do. Okay, so Rushikesh asked about uh, progressive web apps, cross-platform versus native development. Uh, now, progressive web apps are just basically a way to install your, uh, you know, uh, normal web application, add a shortcut to that in uh, your home screen, and do a little bit of local cache and push notifications, but largely uh, they are sort of powerless. Uh, you know, uh, cross-platform versus native, I think I just discussed already a little bit, the trade-offs come between cost, uh, which is uh, like about having two teams for different different uh, native uh, products, or do you have one team which develops the app for both the product? Those kind of cost uh, calculations come into the picture, uh, right? Um, so, so based on that, we basically decide whether to go with the cross platform or a native implementation. My first time, I saw a big uh, open source project which gave me a very good idea about good architecture was Firefox's Android. Uh, right nowadays, Firefox has two, three apps. There is the original Firefox Android app, then there's a Firefox Focus app. Uh, those, uh, I mean, you might love to see that and see that project structure, but for little younger people, it might be a little overwhelming. Uh, so, so somewhat on the smaller side, Foss Asia has got some good Android projects. I think you can go to GSOC and see last year's Android projects and see their GitHub repos which is a good place to find out open source projects where the architecture is also good, but not so complex that as a beginner, you won't be able to understand it at all. Uh, Shopify approach, Aditya Pahilwani has a Shopify approach, KMM for business and React Native for UI. So both are a couple of different things. KMM for business is something that a lot of companies are thinking of doing. We had started thinking of writing our menu logic in KMM when I was in Zomato because that was a very complex piece of logic and we had to replicate it twice, um, but we did not need depend on a lot of Android or iOS specific stuff to do it. So we thought that we should definitely be able to, I don't know, sort of use it as a, and, and you know, uh, we can use it like that. Now, uh, the UI with React Native part is something that some people uh, decide whether you want to have a common UI effort or not. And uh, I think uh, it depends on the kind of team and all you have set up and whether you want to create a common design language and, uh, or you do have very strong, uh, UI teams on Android, as well as iOS already available in your team. Now, if you have that, then you don't need to create a common effort for UI. Now, uh, react plus KMM, uh, is good, uh, though that means that you would need like. Uh, for a lot of, uh, you know, for Shopify, uh, this, uh, I think, uh, for Shopify, they would need somebody with React understanding, they would need somebody with KMM understanding, and they would need people with native Android Kotlin and native Swift understanding as well to fix certain uh, features. So that every different technology stack that you keep adding, you need expertise in all of them. And uh, as your apps are bigger and more complex and they are running on lots of different, different devices, uh, then uh, native level knowledge becomes unavoidable and it is needed because there will be certain crashes which happen in the native way. So you'll need somebody with uh, native Android development experience and native iOS development experience to be able to fix those parts. For bigger companies, I think uh, it, it does make sense where common, uh, you know, common implementations which can be changed quickly by changing one implementation, you are able to change the UI on both ways, those kind of things can happen. Uh, now, many uh, businesses uh, use KMM to make the logic layer common while the UIs are separate. So that's a different part of the problem to be solved. And a lot of people are already doing that. 
then a lot of people are also doing this thing is that they are uh, writing the ui in a common framework like flutter or react native and then some uh, platform specific stuff like image processing pipelines video processing pipelines they are writing down in uh, native as well uh, right uh, and uh, you know that's uh, kind of the state right now uh, shopify is one of the rare examples who is doing both of those things they are trying to make things common at the ui layer as well and then at the bottom of the business layer as well they are trying to make things a little bit common uh, does the uh, okay so uh, where did i miss the next question so that's asked does the associate android developer certification google benefit us while applying for android developer jobs i haven't seen that actually to affect a lot to be very honest uh, gives a little bit of foot through the door like if somebody has that associate android developer certification then uh, resume uh, shortlisting layer it might help a little bit uh, especially like if you are if your prior work experience is not in an android development role or you are not from a very good college in those cases if that certification is there uh, that helps a little bit if you have already made android projects if you are from a tier 1 or 2 college uh or if you already interned in android development role or you know worked in android development role already then you don't need to go for that certification it does not add anything more to value to your profile good companies to aim for summer internship android i think that i wouldn't have uh, uh right now any idea of uh mostly you should uh, you know uh check out obviously some of your favorite apps that you use on popular apps and then try out their try to reach out to the recruiters uh, via linkedin and see if their internship opportunities open many companies do not have internship opportunities explicitly mentioned on the internet but if you ask their recruiters and you say that you are good on android development you have made some projects uh, do do you uh, have uh, you know internship opportunities maybe somebody might say yes okay what do you see in an intern for second year pass out uh, second year pass out what do you mean by second year pass out like if you're in second year then you're not pass out right uh, but but okay fine i'll just say that you know if you are in your third year and you want to intern i don't know i mean i don't see i don't want to see a lot of skills apart from uh, the uh, the the urge to learn new things and uh, if it's in a startup ish atmosphere then being a self starter that for every two things every third thing every fourth thing you won't come to your whoever is your internship mentor or your engineer whom you are assigned to you don't just come and bother them you you take up piece of problem given to you and you figure things out on your own as much as possible so that attitude you have that's probably more important uh, that i try to see vignesh has asked how to prepare for freelancing and android development uh, portfolio building is important so go to github make projects projects which are finished okay end to end finished put up on the play store uh, get your friends and family to use it uh, try to get 500 download 1000 downloads even that's fine but put it on github github should have a read me of that project it should tell what the project uh, was about like you know packaging is very important uh, which helps you build a sort of freelance side career for future perspective with android is it better to learn ios or backend if you're not spent at least 4 or 5 years in android then just continue to spend time in android itself there's a lot of depth to it okay otherwise decide if you really really love mobile development right making mobile apps is something that you really passionately fall in love with then maybe learning ios or flutter or react native another framework is uh, sort of uh, helpful but if you learn back end then you become versatile you can work on projects where both back end and front end are needed and you can work on both things yourself simultaneously together uh, i think an android developer who moves into back end probably adds two very large skill sets which can give like you know career growth wise salary wise better uh, opportunities what i think uh, this is a small question about target uh, offering summer android internships or not so just to uh, answer that question no i think uh, there isn't uh, right so uh, this is just full time people are getting hired right now so so just answering that question uh, santosh has asked web development or android development for students in 6m uh, you know if you are a student i will give you only one advice that is 
people excel in things that they like uh, there is this whole concept japanese concept of finding or ikigai which is uh, things that uh, you are good at things that you like and things that you can uh, use to make money or make a career out of okay the intersection of these three things is what you should be doing right that's your ikigai um so uh, you are generally good at uh, certain things if trying to solve problems in that domain keep you up at nights keep this nights and, you, and and you're very passionate about it so try out web development and android development both for one one week each see which one excited you see which one is stopping you from going to sleep uh, right uh so that is is uh, probably very important to discover what you really like once you figure out what you like put all your energy into it you might figure out android is what you like you might figure out web is what you like you might figure out you don't like either of them and you like something else like data science or machine learning well whatever but uh, if you spend some time figuring out what you like that is the best investment of your time and energy uh right and uh, based on that take a pick don't try to pick web versus android based on which senior said this is supposed to be taken because it has more scope or whether you look at job offers today and you pick that uh, if you are among the top people doing anything you can be very successful and earn a lot of money and then you know um, travel countries and all of that stuff so uh, don't try to optimize for okay this domain has more jobs or this field pays more and all of that stuff uh pick up which when whichever one you know makes you feel better whichever one you really feel like you like and then you will automatically be very passionate about it automatically learn a lot of things inside it that's going to be important what is easier to make uh, eugene has asked wallpaper app android flutter studio or flutter what is easier to make uh i think uh, wallpapers uh, can be probably easy to make if you just use a pattern based wallpaper or something like that uh, right So I think on the last questions I would pick up. Path Patel has asked how to develop skills for broad level development before getting a job. Uh, do something broad level. I think uh, make an app of your own. Try to put it up on the Play Store and then open source its code and then then maybe ask your friends to come and contribute. That's one of the best ways to, uh, you know, you know, do this. setting up ci cd etc using github actions on your side projects and and doing automatic code reviews and all these kind of things uh, you can set up uh, right uh arti negi has asked whether she should switch to flutter or not and i think that if you already are a good android developer you have made some apps then you can learn flutter additionally it's not called switching it's just adding broadening your horizons i have learned flutter 2 uh, years back although i was very successful android developer at that time that's just you know increasing your your social presence and you know making sure you know you stay in touch with latest trends so for that you can do that okay should i know testing and ci cd for putting my app on google play store uh, uh ayushman has asked uh, uh so yes and no i mean you don't need testing and ci cd knowledge to just put the app on play store but if you have gotten an app to a place where you can put it on play store that level of confidence you have gotten out of building apps then i think uh yes this answers uh, you know uh that that if you put if you set up testing if you set up ci cd it will make your life a whole lot easier and uh, it will prepare you for production level stuff that you need to do at jobs uh but it would be great if you have uh you know these skills uh and and they help you publish that app much more easily as well your your code base is always tested you know and and uh, you know your 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 uh, you know automatically you can deploy your app to play store and as well those kind of things you can and you can do uh, abhishek sharma has asked that uh, i'm new to dependency injection so should i start with uh, dagger or hilt Hilt is a wrapper over Dagger. Uh, Hilt is not separate from Dagger, so you need to know Dagger to use Hilt. Hilt is just uh, it it reduces the amount of code that you need to write with Dagger, but Hilt is built on top of Dagger. If you don't know Dagger, then you don't know how to use Hilt. Okay. Um, bye, everybody. Whenever you are going to develop an application. first of all we need to understand what are the prerequisite what are the softwares that you will need so let's discuss that 
the very first thing the very first tool that you will need is an android studio you can install it from the internet open up your favorite web browser and just type download android studio it's as simple as that i can show you on chrome just you have to go and type download android studio that's the only thing you have to do and here is the first link that you will get this is the official link from uh, developer.android.com you just have to click on that and based on the operating system you are using like mac windows anything you just have to install the android studio it's as simple as it sounds moving ahead once you are done installing android studio the very next thing the very next uh, step that you have to do because uh, we know that we are going to develop an application right so we will need either an android phone or maybe an emulator so what is an emulator it's very much like your mobile phone only it resembles your mobile phone it's just that whenever you will develop any application in the android studio you will run that in the emulator in your laptop in your desktop itself you will be able to see how your app looks like right and the benefit of using emulator is that you can uh, i mean test your application on a variety of mobile phones like uh, there are different mobile phones android phones which is you know having different api levels so you can test on variety of softwares variety of apps let's move ahead and uh, discuss if you want to use your android phone as the uh, testing point so you have to enable the developer option to become a developer you have to click on about phone in the settings you will get the about phone option and after that you have to click on build number 7 times it will show you a toast uh, option to toast uh, you know a uh, pop up that you are now a developer that's all you need to do apart from that you have to enable usb debugging as well in your phone so here is the de developer option that you will get and you just have to enable the usb debugging so that whenever you test your uh, app whatever you have developed you can easily do that in your mobile phone now another thing once you are done uh, installing these softwares these are the prerequisites number one is android studio it's very simple to download as you download any other application like zoom or something in your laptop android studio is very much similar you will get all the next step like how to directly install you know they will show you what are the next steps so it's very simple and you will hardly take like 3 to 4 minute to install that after that you just have to follow these steps if you are going to use your mobile phone for testing the apps otherwise if you are going to use emulator i'm here to help you i will tell you how to set up emulator in your android studio okay now this is very uh, important thing when you are going to develop android applications very very commonly asked question should i develop applications in java language or kotlin so let me tell you i started my journey with java itself because in engineering you know we do dsa data structure algorithm and all those stuff so i started with java and gradually shifted to kotlin so uh, nowadays kotlin is very much in trend both the languages are good native java is there kotlin has some extra features and there are some you know uh, advanced feature advancements which are there in kotlin which java somewhere lacks so if you are starting uh, in 2020 to 23 learning to develop application i would say you can go ahead with kotlin if you don't know kotlin trust me it's very easy if you have uh, learned any programming language like c++ java learning kotlin will, will be very very simple and easy for you okay if you want uh, let us know in the comment section we can bring like one hour two hours tutorial on uh, you know how to learn kotlin the syntax and all the basic stuff so yes th that's about the language don't uh, get confused uh follow this tutorial first of all develop your first application and uh, things will be easy for you i mean you will be at a better position to decide which language you want to use to develop your application both are pretty much good kotlin is something uh, which is better because it has more uh, features enhancements okay now talking about the application that we will develop today it's a portfolio application let's uh, discuss what the app will look like it will be a very simple app your first kind of application in any programming language whenever we are going to you know learn to code we write that hello world kind of 
program, right? So this is kind of Hello World app for you, a portfolio application where you can showcase your achievements, skills, everything. So this is how your app looks like, right? So here we'll put one kind of image of yours and after that here will be your uh, name and designation. After that what we will do, one of the most important concept when it's about developing application, it's intent. Uh, don't get uh, scared of the word, it's easy. Uh, whenever we open any uh, you know page from any button or something, intents are used in the background. So what we will do to help you understand the significant concept, I will uh, use some kind of button concept here. We will write uh, skills and uh, experience let's say and then education details will be here. And the last button we can write work experience or something, right? I'm writing short form here. You have to write in detail. And talking about the design of applications, you can do many stuff there. I mean, it is a very, very basic thing. We are just starting with this uh, normal uh, concept, like this, is, will, this will be image view, and then we will have text views over here. And these will be some buttons. On clicking these buttons, new activities will open up. Let's say you are clicking on work experience, right? Or uh, your uh, like achievement or something, any button. So a new page, a new activity will open up. Uh, in websites, whenever we click any button and open a page, that's a new web page. But in applications, that is called as a new activity, okay? Sorted. So whenever any button we will click, click like work experience, achievements, anything. So we will open a new activity and that will have another set of like uh, views. These are called as views. If you have this image, this is image view, then text view and this is button. So let's move ahead. This is how your app will look like. Now that the UI UX part of the app is clear, we know where to place which view. We will jump into the coding part. We will first create the UI with the XML code and then we will write some Kotlin code to make our application. So I hope you are excited and ready to make your portfolio application. Let's get into Android Studio and do the code, yeah? Awesome. So when we come in Android Studio, the very first thing that you have to do when you are going to develop an application is click on the new project button. So here you can see multiple options are here, basic activity, empty compose activity and you know a lot many options are here. Let me tell you in the beginning you just have to use an empty activity. In the basic activity here this floating button is there right and uh, similarly if you scroll down if you are going to develop an application where let's say your main focus is on developing maps or integrating maps maybe you can start with google maps activity right or maybe navigation drawer in many of the applications like uh, you know those uh, side options are there uh, nowadays bottom navigation is very much famous as compared to navigation drawer activity this is called navigation drawer uh, option whenever you uh, use any app some of them still have this option otherwise the other one is this bottom navigation activity in applications like Instagram, Amazon, they all have multiple options in the bottom, Mintra, etc. Right? So we will today choose empty activity that is just a normal activity. Click on the next button. After that, you have to write the name of your application. So today we are going to develop portfolio, right? So let's write portfolio application or maybe you can write uh, like your first app, hello world app, something like that. This is the name of the package and the location where you will save your project. You can change it from here. This is the browse button and language. We are today using Kotlin, not Java. So we'll choose Kotlin. This is the minimum SDK. Uh, it tells you on what percentage of devices your application will run. Then you have to click on finish. Uh, it will take some time to do the Gradle build as you can see here and the, at the bottom it's doing some of the Gradle build. If your laptop is having low RAM like 2GB or something then you will face a lot of difficulty to be honest in developing application because Android Studio is a very heavy software. So make sure uh, it's one of the 
uh, you know requirements that your ram laptop ram should be at least 8 gb it will give you a smoother experience of developing applications android studio will run very smoothly if the storage of ram is good enough sorted so our application is almost there we'll just simply like you know this is hello world thing we haven't developed anything this is normal thing uh, to run your application what you have to do you just have to click on this run button i will help you understand all these stuff all the all what all these options are like manifest file java source code resource everything let's first check how the apps look like uh, i already have emulator installed here but i am assuming you have uh, downloaded android studio fresh so you will not be having uh, emulator and all those settings for that what you have to do you have to go in device manager here you will see one option create device you just have to click on that and then um, you can see multiple phone options are here pixel nexus and uh, different orientations are here right click on any of your favorite devices let's say pixel xl or, or pixel 6 pro you have to click on next moving ahead this is the like release name these are some of the system images you have to click on install i already have these installed so i will not do that uh, this will take like 10 to 15 minutes based on your internet speed okay you just have to download either of these and then click on next that's it your emulator will be ready and to uh, develop like not develop exactly to run your application you just have to click on this run button here and you will be able to okay wait let me select on emulator from here it's it's getting uh, like ready uh, this like when you run any application the emulator might take 3 uh, to 5 minutes if your laptop is slow but here you can see the build is done and this is the hello world application very simple very easy so now you have like kind of created and developed your hello world application right let me help you understand more stuff here what all these options are because android studio is such a software which is having multiple options and it might be very confusing for a beginner so let's uh, uh, get into the uh, feature part like what are uh, options here in the android studio i'll help you understand all the options like what is manifest what is java folder resource folder everything cool so the app is connected and uh, this is how uh, android studio looks like we just saw these things like i started a new we started a new project and these were the options we already filled the name of the project package name and language all these things are very simple we choose basic activity and there are empty activity and there are more options as well like basic activity navigation drawer activity etc this is how uh, typical android studio looks like when you are in your main activity dot java or main activity dot kt file right so these are some of the options here uh, manifest folder is there java folder is there resource folder is there let's talk about the very first option that is manifest folder inside manifest you will get one file android manifest dot xml it's a very important file it contain all the important information like what will be the icon of your application what's your app name like when we use zomato swiggy something we see that icon and the name of the app right so all those important information will be there let me uh, show you here uh, the manifest file is right here you can see manifest folder is here and inside this we have this android manifest.xml file so here uh, you can see the activities that you will create right now we just have one activity that is main activity.kt we can create a skills activity experience activity uh, because we will be adding those options in our application right to uh, showcase the portfolio so these are some of the uh, activities which will be here in your uh, android manifest xml file you can add user permissions here let's say you are developing any application where camera or location permission is needed so you will need to write all those thing permission and the name of the permission like whatever the permission is so all those important significant things will come here in the android manifest uh, file only okay after that uh, now you know uh, what the manifest file is and android manifest dot xml file is very significant it contain all the important information right moving ahead we have the java folder where we write all the code part 
so this is the java folder here we have main activity dot kt which is the most significant file i mean this is the main activity as the name is self explanatory right we will write our source code here let's say in your application you are having some buttons you are having some images on clicking a button what action should be performed let's say you are clicking on pay button so what next action will be there all the code all the source code in kotlin or java will come here in the main activity okay similarly you can have multiple activities like this is main activity you can have your skills activity experience etc linked to every source code there is ui part there is design part as well so uh, this is kind of uh, source code part the java folder inside app we covered the manifest folder uh, like android manifest file we already know inside java all the source code will come if you write in kotlin or java everything will go there in the java folder moving ahead whenever we develop application so what's very significant thing for the user the ui part right how the app looks like so all the ui stuff the images the layouts the design everything will come here in the res folder that is your resource folder this is drawable here we keep all the uh, you know images designs those stuff and then layout is a very very significant this is activity main dot xml whenever we run any application so whatever ui we draw here in the xml part in the layout directory that will be uh, shown i mean uh, this is kind of a very significant thing core of android app de android applications the xml part uh, will come here in the layout folder xml is used for designing the application for the uh, you can say front end part for the ui stuff okay and then source code is there in the java folder map map is here values directory here you, we can have our style our own style of the application we can change the theme colors strings we can define if if you are using many strings in your application you can predefine all of them in the strings.xml okay and theme uh, is also here you can change the theme and everything this is kind of uh, all the important stuff on the uh, right hand side of your android studio not exactly right hand side it's right hand for me for you it will be on the left side right so these are all the important stuff on the uh, android studio the options that you have to understand the java source code part the ui part uh, drawable is there may most important is your dot kt that is dot kotlin file or dot java and dot xml okay and this is kind of gradle script you won't need this much in the beginning this is kind of very beginner tutorial right but let me help you understand few of the stuff so if you are using any third party dependency or something you will add all those stuff here in the dependencies part let's say you have to uh, enhance the ui part you have to make your application look very beautiful you are using some third party library so you will add all those stuff here and that will make things like simpler for you and after that you have to just click on sync button here at the top you will get the sync button once you add any dependency started and uh, this is uh, all the plugins and all if you have to add any extra plugin you can add in the uh, build.gradle project part and this is the build.gradle module stuff don't worry much if uh, this is a bit tricky for you uh, the most important thing that you have to keep in your mind is the dot kt uh, the source code part and the layout part that we will write with the help of xml code so let's move ahead and uh, understand uh, some more uh, things uh, let me connect my ipad with the uh, mac perfect so now we will understand a bit of the xml part what all options are here so you can see here at the top on the right part uh, the code option is here split and design these are three options if you just want the xml code part you have to click on code this is a split you will see both uh, the things the design as well as xml code and one more thing is if you want like uh, if you have just installed android studio might be that you are seeing something like this the blueprint as well as design for that you can just uh, like uh, click on this blue button and choose the design thing if you want just the design stuff on your xml uh, xml option okay uh, moving ahead this is just the design part talking about making designs for your application there are mainly two things that we can do one is you can just write the xml code here right these are 
the layout options there are multiple layouts when it's about uh, designing your application the other thing is you can use the drag and drop feature as well if let's say you want a button somewhere in your application you can just drag and drop it okay that's another way uh, it's easy but uh, when you will run your application when you will start developing applications you will understand like uh, it's a bit uh, it's though easy but not a very much efficient way of uh, designing your apps ui so what we will do now these are some of the uh, options some of the view options these are very common views that we use like text view to show some text in your application buttons are here image view is here recycle view whenever you scroll something let's say in your whatsapp uh, you have the uh, chat options right so when you scroll that's because of recycle view that's a recycle view of all the names whatever names you have in your contact right we will uh, be developing all the advanced applications as well this one is to help you understand all the basic stuff of android studio and how to develop the application exactly okay these are some text option multiple button stuff like radio button check box floating uh, floating action button floating action is usually here at the uh, bottom uh, like just notice the cursor of my mouse that will help you understand and uh, some layout options most commonly used ones are these ones like linear layout constraint layout frame layout table layout etc what we will do for developing our portfolio application you can uh, go through all these options once you have downloaded android studio first of all take your time and understand some of these options explore the application as much as you can whenever we buy any new phone we explore all the features right so whenever you install any new application this is a very big software android studio so go ahead and explore all the options what all features are here i have already explained the important ones okay and another important one is this lock cat which you will see at the bottom this will help you in uh, debugging your uh, application let's say you are using the app you are running the app and it's crashing so you can get, get the crash report the lock in in the lockcat perfect so now we will design our application in activity main.xml i'll click on a split so that i get the code part as well as the uh, design part all on the same screen so uh, what i'll do this is right now constraint layout i will choose a linear layout uh, that's way better and easy that keep things uh, keep all the views in a very proper position in constraint layout let's say you are missing some of the parts let's say you forget to give constraint to any view like button or something it will get misplaced i mean in your laptop you might place a button here but when you will run it you will find it somewhere there on top or something okay so constraint layout start using that once you have a bit of experience with app development in this starting for smooth experience we will use uh, linear layout okay that will keep things in our control the very next thing that i will do is set orientation for our view so let's write the orientation there are two options whenever we use linear layout vertical or horizontal i'll choose vertical here because i want all the views one after the other, another we have seen the ui right we want image then name of the uh, user name of let's say you are developing portfolio for yourself so your name designation so everything will be vertical not horizontal right this is vertical sequence so i have given the vertical orientation after that the very next thing that i want you can do some of these steps with drag and drop let me show you how it works so i'm deleting the hello world for now and uh, i'll go ahead in the comment section and drag and drop the image so we want the image somewhere here right uh, what i have to do i have to choose uh, one image for now i'll choose this uh, normal avatar you can put your own image i'll try to find my image from the laptop from the pc and we'll put it here okay Uh, after that the very next thing is i want a text view for my name here and uh, we will set the design part don't worry padding margin everything and another text view for the designation like whatever your designation is software engineer uh, artist uh, you can write anything in your portfolio okay let's now jump to the split part and write some code in xml okay so we have uh, kept our image view here what you can do is because it's very much uh, touching the top of the app right we don't want that so you can add some uh, padding or margin options i'll give padding of 10 dp and similarly some margin here for the image view so margin uh, around like 20 dp we can give and that will bring the image uh, somewhat like away from the top of the screen perfect 
and if you have to give the image or something you can put that in the drawable section in the drawable folder as I showed it earlier okay and then let's move ahead and try to do some of the design part for the text view this is our text view let me tell you these IDs are very very important like you are called by your name if your name is Soumya, Ankit, anything so people call you by that particular name in the same way for all these views there is a particular name and that is this unique ID for each view if we will have another image let's say or we have two text views so the idea of first one is just text view and the other is text view 2 when we will write code in the main activity.kt file so we will call all these views by their IDs by their names let's say you have to click on this text view so we will write uh, like text view whatever the ID is dot set on click listener while clicking on that view what action should be performed that code will go there okay so this ID is very very important and let's let's write here name uh, for our convenience I mean we will uh, set up all the stuff like uh, one way is you can hard code many of these stuff in design which I don't recommend much because when you are developing bigger software there is not a good idea to hard code stuff right so may, try to make sure that everything is dynamic in your source code itself in your Kotlin or Java code so another important point is write meaningful names for your ID this can be image view uh, profile this is your profile picture right and text view we can write TV in short TV and name because this is for your name and then TV designation or uh, yeah you can write designation here perfect and uh, this is camel case which I am following whenever you declare any variable this is a good habit to follow camel case that is cap make the capital uh, use capital letter when a new uh, thing is there like TV and N is capital here that is making it more readable okay and after that we will give gravity to our text view layout gravity center and also I want the gravity here to be center so that the name comes in center you can give more designing more style stuff like uh, you can uh, make the text style as bold or something if you want the name to be in bold you can use your favorite font style you can download that as well or simply uh, like if you want to use font of Android studio so from font family uh, we want tech font for our text right not for Android so text font and this is font weight uh, you can give that as well for now we just want some font style okay let me choose from here okay it's not showing that option right now if you if you let's say want to give some color for your text or something so text color text size text alignment all these options are here and font will also come somewhere here only in the uh, text options okay so let's let's uh, uh, right now I'm keeping it simple but obviously when you are developing your application you can add multiple design here like color font text size anything and text size right now it's too small maybe we can give 25 dp to make it little bigger because it's the name of the user right and after that some more stuff can be uh, text color is right now black if you want to use any other color or something you can change with the help of this option and you can see I mean based on your need uh, you, you can choose options from here this will show you all the significant stuff all the significant option perfect this thing is sorted after writing the name uh, we can move ahead and do some stuff for designation in the same way the very next thing is we will do the same styling stuff for our designation text view so let's just copy the gra gravity and all the things that we did for name part and paste it here okay uh, awesome so that's uh, that's we are done with the text view styling if you want some font so you can just add some font options font family and here are some popular ones like sans serif mono space uh, like those stuff are here right so I'm just choosing uh, right now a uh, sans serif awesome so the very next thing after name and designation is we want some buttons so that on clicking the buttons like a skills button will go on a new page new activity okay so uh, let me change the size of designation to 22 dp it should be a bit less than that of name and uh, 
apart from that it looks good to me we can give some padding also so that uh, there is some spacing and all so let's give padding of uh, 10 dp on name as well as designation and margin of 10 dp as well i'll just put the same stuff here in the designation part cool and the very next thing after this is having some buttons like it should be horizontally placed so what i'll do is i will create create another linear layout and the orientation this time will be horizontal okay uh, i'll tell you how and why uh, there are two options match parent and uh, wrap content whenever we create height or width of any view uh, let me quickly explain what these options are first of all for this linear layout i want width to be match parent and height should be wrap content alongside that i want orientation to be there so what i will do is i will write orientation and this should be horizontal perfect so let me tell you what uh, wrap content and match parent means let's say you are having this uh, name option right if i make its uh, let's say width as wrap content it will use only that much space which which is needed for it like name uh, it will only use the space uh, that it need to uh, fulfill the name of the user right if i do match parent it will occupy all the space that's present uh, like let me show right now it's using only that much space if i do match parent it's occupying all the space that's available in the app okay that's the difference between match parent and wrap content wrap content will only occupy that much space which uh, uh, which it needs match parent will use all the space available perfect in the name i'm going to hard code my name right now okay uh, I prefer making a dynamic uh, stuff in the application. Everything should be done in dynamic way in real time, not hard coding. Hard coding only for uh, few stuff, which like uh, for which we can't do the dynamic things. I'll quickly change the designation as well to software engineer here. And after that, okay, let me do it. Software engineer. You can write, I mean, obviously your designation, everything in your portfolio and preferably not hard coding okay and educator awesome after that we'll put some buttons for that we want this linear layout and before that let me quickly tell you if you want to put your image here a hard coded one so in the resource directory i've already explained what resource directory is to you okay in the drawable uh, you can put your image uh, what i'll do is i will quickly find one image and put there so downloads and uh, this is one image here i'll just copy it and put in the drawable folder this is drawable i'll just paste the image here so that i can use it in my code awesome okay so what I'll do, uh, I will change here the source, uh, source SRC is the option that you have to use and after that the image that you want. So right now as you can see it has occupied all the space right. So what I will do is I will give some uh, specific instruction to the view that this is the space that you can use wrap content is uh, using the whole space because uh, you know this picture is large that's why it's occupying all the space even if you will do match parent then also it will occupy all the space right now i will hard code it to somewhere uh, let's try 100 dp and it's a bit small so we'll make it 200 dp awesome uh, these parts are done uh, you have to use the source option if you want to put insert an image in the image view moving ahead this is our linear layout inside linear layout what i want is i want two buttons we can do that with the help of drag and drop feature as well so i'll put two buttons here quickly in the linear layout awesome these two are here and uh, after that i want similar thing uh, like we want kind of four buttons in the ui we have seen right uh, so let's first finish off with these two uh, this is kind of taking um, it's quite, quite congested right for that we can use margin and padding so let's quickly add some margin and padding 
uh, this is 20 dp and similarly here as well 20 dp uh, margin perfect and after that we will uh, write here skills on clicking the skills button we have to open up a new activity a new page and similarly here we will write uh, education details okay education details right now you can see uh, the width is different for both of these why is it so because we are using uh, width wrap content so it will uh, according to the need it will expand so let's do one thing for the width part we can like make it uh, like a fixed number we can give 150 or uh, 2 dp something so that it looks uh, uh, like uniform uh, in the application when we will run it we will see how it is exactly and this is 150 dp uh, so let's uh, just education here so that the ui is a bit better awesome and we need similar stuff for two more features so we'll just copy paste it and you can see we can't have non-unique ids that's why it's showing error so we'll uh, name it button three and this will be your button four and quickly change let's change the options here this is a skill so we want let's say work experience so we'll just try to work here and another thing that you can showcase in your portfolio is your achievements okay awesome now we are almost done with the ui part it's very simple ui to make it more beautiful you can use some third party libraries as well you can add that in the gradle scripts here in the build gradle and you can add your own styling your color theme a different theme for your application and if you want to use let's say uh, dark mode or something you can use all those options in the add all those options in the theme.xml or style.xml perfect so what we will do is uh, let's give a meaningful name to this uh, skills button we will write btn skills much better and uh, now we will directly jump to the code part here i hope this is a bit clear to you how xml exactly works uh, these are some of the options like code split design and you can use drag and drop or simply uh, use the xml uh, code it's very simple and kind of the words are also self-explanatory if you want a button you have to use the button uh, view these are all our views okay button uh, text view image view etc La, now we will go here in our main activity dot kt this is class main activity if you have done a bit of programming if you know any language java c plus plus you would already be knowing what a class is this class is extending app compact activity because we want many of its functions whenever an, uh, an application is built there are some activity life cycles involved that's very important if you are going in any software engineering interview and the team you are interviewing for is android related team you will be certainly asked this question what is android app life cycle whenever an app is opened up which is the first method which is called that is on create method this is the first app method which is called whenever you open any app whatsapp instagram anything after that on start on resume lot many stuff are there let me quickly explain you uh, the activity life cycle um, i'll try to cover it up in detail in the like advanced tutorial and further tutorials but let me give you an overview of how exactly the app activity life cycle looks like so that things are a bit clear in your mind this is exactly how your app activity life cycle looks like on create is the first method and then on start on resume when i when i'll give you an example like uh, how exactly this is done it will make things clear but for now this is the diagram that you have to kind of keep in mind an app activity life cycle is really a very very important topic when you are going to deep dive into the app development domain perfect moving ahead what we will do is uh, we will jump back into our coding part and we will quickly add the features like on clicking the skills button what should be done okay for now if you quickly run your application it will show you all the stuff that you have developed the image view will be there 
uh, you can see uh, right uh, this image is there your image your name designation all those stuff will be there if you want to reduce the gap and all you can use margin or padding features okay right now these buttons are not clickable at all because i haven't written any code for these buttons so what we have to do next is we have to write some code here i have already explained the activity stuff what is uh, like uh, why we are extending this app compact activity in this on create method you observe here this is saved instance state parameter which is of type bundle now why are we passing this parameter listen to me very carefully it's important so uh, let's say you are using an application you are listening to some video you are watching some video on youtube app and uh, you got a ping you got a message on whatsapp so what we simply do we just uh, switch to whatsapp the video the uh, youtube video will be there we uh, simply uh, go on whatsapp and uh, try to give a reply and all then come back on youtube so what we are doing here is as a user for us things are normal but in the background on create method this method that you see here it's getting recalled so we want to give the information to this method that this was the video that the user was watching this was all the information like uh, the video was watched till 10 minutes or something whatever page you were at you want you expect the same page right when you go back on the on that application that's why this is important saved instant instance state it is to save the information of your state of the user's state whatever you were doing we want to store that information so that if you quickly jump between apps so that uh, so that when you quickly jump between applications we can pass on this information awesome and after that the set content view is also very important what this will do we this is just the source code right to which layout this source code is connected to so here we are connected with activity main that is this file whatever the ui thing here is in the xml part activity main.xml we want the same information here that's why we are writing set the content view the apps content view we are setting that here and in this one for the main activity.kt it is activity main so this is a simple syntax that we use to set the ui of the application perfect now what we will quickly do is we will um, write some code so let me tell you if you don't know kotlin so val and where are two uh, keywords which we use for declaring variables okay if let's say uh, you have to declare something which uh, is having constant value very much like final keyword in java then we will use val otherwise we use where so right now what i will do i will uh, create one button for my uh, skills button for this one okay i'll create a variable for this button so we'll call it uh, button skills okay and uh, quickly i have to get i have to fetch this view for that we have a feature uh, we have a method find view by id uh, here the type is button so i'll write the button type of the view and after that you have to give the id so whatever is the id of your button it is btn skills right so i'll write that perfect you don't need a semicolon in kotlin it's simple and then we want to write some code on clicking button skills what should happen we want a new page to open up this is a very important concept now it is called as intent whenever we have to open up something new uh, whenever we click any button or something we use intents in background there are two types of intent button skills dot set on click listener uh, that is on clicking the button whatever action we want to perform we will write everything here inside set on click listener awesome so what we will do now we uh, this much part is i hope clear if not uh, tell us in the comments whatever issues you are facing in developing the application i hope you are following this tutorial as well let me quickly explain what intents are so that the code that i will write now onwards that will be easy for you to understand i'll quickly connect my ipad to show that whenever we go from one page to another this is activity one this is activity two we are using the concept of intents here okay this is really very important concept when you are getting into this domain intents Th these are of two types mainly uh, one is let me write here so 
very first is your implicit intent and the second one is explicit intent. So let's understand what these two intents are implicit and explicit. Whenever you click on any button and you have to go to a new page, new activity, which is in the same application. For an example, let's say you are using WhatsApp, you clicked on any chat and the detailed chat will open up, right? The like, page will change. So that is something you are doing transition within your application, within WhatsApp only. That is an example of explicit intent. Whenever you transition between activities within the same app, like right now we are doing the portfolio app. When you will click on skills activity, we want to open up a new page. When you click on skills button or any, any button, we want a new page in the same application. So that is a good example of explicit intent. Okay. And in case you are using any application and you have to make a call or maybe switch to another application. Let's say you purchase something from Amazon and for making payment, you have to go to another application, Paytm or something. That is example of implicit intent. Sometimes in our phones as well, let's say you have to open up a music video or something. You see option like this. You have to complete action using play music or Ghana app. So that is because you are going to another application completely. Okay. And that is where implicit intents comes into picture. What we will do in this application that we are developing, we are going to use explicit intent. So for that, what you have to do, I will write here intent is equal to, I just have to use the intent method here, which is uh, uh, kind of inbuilt in the studio. Okay. Uh, and you have to pass some important parameters here. This is your method. Okay. The second one this and here you have to give two parameters they are showing you the option as well the very first is package context for that we will pass this that will give the uh, package context after giving the first parameter we have to pass the name of the class so we haven't yet created the skills activity so let's quickly do that uh, just observe the cursor here what actions i'm doing so uh, we will click here, right click here and new and then activity. Last time we created empty activity. We have to do the same stuff for a skills activity. Let's change the name from main activity to to a skills activity quickly. Okay, a skills activity. This is the second activity that we want when we we'll click on a skills button. This should open up. Okay, we want a layout file as well for this and click on finish. Perfect. Now I'll go back here and whenever I click on button skills, I want that class to open up. So I'll give the name of the class here that is skills activity and simply class dot Java. Awesome. Now here what I will do this design is clean right now. The this is the layout for activity skills. I will quickly just write a text here. And that is let's change the layout to linear and just add a simple text view here. Maybe we can quickly drag and drop a text view from the design part. Here is your text view and we will just write this is a skills activity. For now, I'm not designing this skills activity. Uh, you can design it in the way you want. Uh, you have got a basic overview of uh, how to put uh, views in the design part, how to write the XML code, right? So you just have to create this uh, skills activity. For that, you can add colors, you can add, you, know, you, you know, you can put as much creativity as you want. I will put this in the center somewhere. Awesome, and let's quickly run the application to check if our code is working fine. On clicking the button skills, we want a new page to open up, right? Awesome. And uh, this is the old one, I guess. Let it finish the build. And okay, uh, if you notice here, we have to write one more piece of code. We created the intent, but we haven't started the activity. 
it's very very important whenever you create an intent you have to write a start activity and pass the intent as well otherwise if you click the button a new page will not open up awesome and we'll just click on run terminate and now when you click on skills and this page was opening up which is this is a skills activity so our code this piece of code is working fine this is exactly how you do stuff uh, in your complex ex um, complex applications as well okay if you have to click some button you will just simply write button skills any button id right that can be any button set on click listener and then this part will come the intent part right now we used explicit we will understand in future tutorials what is implicit intent how we can use that as well so let me quickly tell you that there are some extra features as well which you can use so i explained you the basic stuff how you have to install the android studio what all are the options the xml part the kotlin part now what we, you have to do i hope you have developed the portfolio application till this point it's not yet complete there are much more features that we can add right so as an assignment after following this tutorial what you have to do like we created our application we added the image view here we added the name designation and there were four buttons right we implemented this one and you have to complete the ui of skills and in the same way you have to complete the four other options as well the work experience achievement all those things and after completing the project after completing the tutorial what you have to do you have to share your project on the internet do it on linkedin on twitter push the project on github it will really help you in excelling your tech career when people will see your project such exciting project projects that will help you improve your profile as well as hiring managers or recruiters they might notice your work and you might get an opportunity to give some interviews etc as well and make sure whenever you share your projects if you have followed the tutorial till now and you have completed all those features tag scaler tag me somya once thing on twitter or linkedin and tell us how you created that project we will be very happy to see your project your progress and if there is any doubt let me know in the comment i will be helping you in resolving your doubts hey somya can you do this calculation for me 5237 times 1998 one sec I can't really live without this calculator. Can you? We all use calculator application on mobile phones to do quick calculation. In this tutorial, I will help you understand. I'll teach you how to code and develop a calculator application. These are the two app UIs that we will be building today. This is UI one and this is UI two. If you have followed the first tutorial of mine where I have taught how to build a portfolio application. in the first ui things will be pretty much similar this is uh, take edit text like in the last one we use some of the views like buttons text views this will be also very much simple this is a bit tricky and i'll help you understand how to design the second one so let's jump into android studio and try to make the first ui and the logic of that one so for that we know what to do the very first step is we have to click on new project and uh, empty activity as always you also know what other activities are and in what cases we can use them for now we have to keep it simple so we will start with the empty activity let's name the project this is our calculator application so let's write calculator app and package name as it is this is the location of the project and we will write code in kotlin so this is the language kotlin and minimum sdk is api 21 let's click on finish and then some griddle builds will happen depending upon uh, what your like laptop ram storage and all is it will take 1 to 2 minute for me it's quick right now so this is main activity dot kt it's loaded if you want to understand what all these features are the manifest file app file java folder everything We have covered everything in detail in the first tutorial, the portfolio one. So you can check out that one. We will put the link in the description. So let's move ahead, and we now know uh, what the UI is. So we will go into the split section. We have to make a simple calculator application. The very first thing that we want is we will use linear layout. If you have uh, again follow the first one, you already know what 
layout options are so here we will use the linear layout and orientation let's keep it vertical only because i want all the views to be one after another first of all we will have to edit text to get the input from the user then a result text view will be there where i'll show the result if you are doing addition subtraction anything we have to show the result there in the text view and apart from that we will have some buttons to do the operation like plus minus divide everything okay next we have to bring some text input layouts so let's quickly drag and drop this text input layout here on the screen this is first one and this is second one because uh, in our calculator we'll expect two inputs from the user for let's say you want to do addition multiplication anything so we'll need two inputs and after that we also need a text view to show the result this is our text view in which we will show the result right now the layout is obviously distorted so let's get into the code path in the xml code and fix the design of this one so we have used linear layout here to keep stuff simple we will remove this hello world text from here and this is vertical orientation because we want everything in vertical orientation okay this is the first text input layout inside which we have this text input edit text to get the input from the user the very first thing that we will do is we will give it one name uh, that is the id every view should have a unique id we know that this should be called uh, we can keep it short like edit text input one or something to make it simple because in our kotlin or java code we will be directly referencing these ids right so this is our first text input edit text and uh, here you can see like it's occupying too much space we know match parent and wrap content as well from the last tutorial so what we'll do uh, this one is match parent that is we have given it the instruction to occupy all the space available right and height is wrap content let's quickly give some padding and margin to this uh, uh, to this view and uh, margin as well okay uh, we should better give all these uh, margin and padding to the text input layout so because uh, this input edit text is inside the input layout only right so let's quickly put it here in the input layout awesome and in the same way we will do for this one so that there is enough uh, wait there is enough gap between them uh, like see uh, in this one in the first one this text input layout the uh, width is match parent and the height is also match parent but we don't want the height to be exactly match parent otherwise it will occupy all the space right so we'll make it a wrap content perfect and inside this first text input layout this is our text input edit text and if you notice here so the other text input layout and the edit text it is somehow coming inside the first text input layout because we use the drag and drop feature and that's why it's not really recommended to use that because sometimes it really messes things up so what we'll do we will keep it outside and um, let me fix the ui first this is our text input layout first one and inside this we don't want this text view we want the result to be out of the edit text right so this is sorted the first text input layout and after that we have this text input layout for the second input and we'll give the padding margin everything here so that these both look uh, very much you know similar this is padding and quickly we will give the margin as well let's keep it 10 dp same as the first input better and we want the height to be wrap content perfect these two inputs are sorted now uh, after this what we will do we will uh, create a text view to uh, store the result we see that the height is uh, wrap content here and it's occupying all the space right and width should be match parent and let's give it a height fix height of 100 dp okay and at the same time we will write here result text view 
awesome and right now uh, you can see like height is getting uh, it is covering all the space in the layout right so quickly we will fix that before that the gravity should be center and uh, the layout gravity as well as the normal gravity both should be center we will quickly change the hint text here and write enter input 1 so that our uh, you know user understand that here they have to enter the number 1 enter input 1 and in the same way we will ask the user to enter the second input here awesome and moving ahead we have to uh, remove the weight here so that it's uh, you know height is adjusted perfect and we will quickly make the text size better because we want the result to be better right it should be bigger and let's make it 25 dp awesome and this is a typo here input to one if you want you can reduce the uh, padding and margin so that these both input uh, texts are a bit closer let's move ahead and uh, try to put some buttons quickly here so that the user can perform some operation for that uh, what do you think i mean which layout should we use you already have developed one application the portfolio one so tell me tell us in the comment which uh, linear layout or constraint layout which layout you would like to use here uh, i'm going to use linear layout here uh, in that i'll put like two buttons horizontally and uh, you can you can use the like drag and drop feature as well if you are more comfortable there and do the fixing stuff there in the code part you already know how to do this in the layout section you can see all the layouts are here a layout horizontal is something which we want here right so i'll quickly put uh, linear layout horizontal uh, so as you can see right now none of the views are visible we will quickly copy this and bring this at the bottom so that uh, the buttons are placed at the bottom okay awesome now we will uh, give some buttons here we will add some buttons in this layout you can do this either via code or maybe from here so here goes the button one and the button two where we will add some options like plus minus something like that don't worry about the uh, congested space we'll fix all those stuff quickly and uh, let's write here plus and this will be your minus operation and similarly uh, more basic operations like division and all okay cool the very important thing we will use these buttons in our code on clicking this what action should be performed so we have to give it a meaningful name and id okay btn plus that is button plus it is the id and this one is btn minus awesome and moving ahead let's let's quickly fix the spacing and everything uh, if i will give weight 2 so it will occupy more space we don't want that so we'll just keep the weight 1 it was just to tell you the significance of the weight parameter layout weight so we'll quickly give some margin here so that it looks uh, better uh, 20 dp and same goes to the uh, minus button uh, margin of 10 dp this margin padding these are some of the uh, quick features you know to fix the uh, view uh, where it should be especially when you are using linear layout in constraint you uh, mostly will be using the uh, drag and drop feature from the design section here uh, if you see here uh, it's a bit uh, like they are not in the same position let's quickly see what's wrong in our layout in our design so this is linear layout we have used horizontal width is match parent we want it to be wrap content and not match parent so that only this much space is used and okay margin we are giving 20 here and 10 here that's why a bit of uh, you know change in the height was there now it's perfect we will quickly copy this for the remaining operations and paste it just below this one and we want to change the id the names of the view let's uh, make it uh, divide and this should be multiplication okay awesome we are almost done with the ui part let's change it to divide 
and this should be again multiplication. Now we have to quickly write the code, uh, the logic part for this, this one. Uh, you can see here if the spelling and all is going a bit, uh, you know, more. So it's, it's getting stretched. So what you can do here is because we are using wrap content and I have already told you the significance of wrap content is it will occupy uh, space as per need and match parent occupies all the space available. So I will uh, hard code the uh, width so that all the buttons are kind of uh, in the same, uh, they look similar, right? So let's, let's try 200 dp, it's a bit more. So we'll keep 150 dp constant for all of these views. Uh, okay. 150 dp is also I guess a bit not suitable for this one um, it's it's better I mean multiplication should be adjusted in this one so we will give it width of 150 dp and here as well 150 dp uh, way better uh, it's look it, like all these are looking a bit similar right and uh, quickly because there should be some gap between result text view and all these buttons so we will add margin here margin of let's say 10 dp only better and same with this layout awesome so ui part is done let's quickly jump and write the code part let me tell you in the code part in kotlin although kotlin itself is very simple and sweet language but what we will do is in our gradle uh, scripts in our build gradle we will add one plugin uh, the plugin will help us use these ids directly like the name of this plus button is btn plus so i can simply say btn plus dot set on click list now in the last project what we did we used the find view by id that feature that uh, method we used right so here we don't need to do that what i'll do is uh, i'll put a plugin apply plugin and uh, Okay, the name of the plugin is uh, Android Kotlin extension, something like that. If you exactly don't recall the name, you can just Google it out. Android Kotlin extensions. I hope the name is correct and there is no spelling mistake. So we just have to click on the sync now button, Android Kotlin extensions. Okay, the name is incorrect. Uh, let's let's quickly check the name of the uh, extension android kotlin extension android kotlin extension plugin and uh, it is kotlin android extensions perfect so swapping off some of the words kotlin android and extension let's click on try again it should build fine now build successful awesome so uh, we'll quickly go in the main activity and uh, you already now know what all these uh, classes are why we use on create method i've explained it thoroughly in the last tutorial we will quickly jump into the code part now i already have told you well and where are the keywords used for creating variables in kotlin so we will create our first variable that is input one and uh, we'll like uh, initialize it here only now let me tell you uh, our next step is we want the input from the user whatever we have to fetch that input uh, whatever the user will write here we have to get that right and before that let's say when the user clicks on um, plus button or something let me do this here first of all let's let's uh, write it uh, multiply and uh, let's say the user clicks on plus button so we have to fetch the input input one and input two and we have to show that in the result text view that's our goal so you already know uh, like we have to uh, now we can get the uh, ids directly because we have used this plugin uh, kotlin android extensions right so btn plus dot set on click listener when this button will be clicked then we have to do some operation that operation is we want to fetch the input and at the same time we have to do the operation in the background and show the output in the result text view for fetching the input from the user what we have to do now you have to listen to me carefully we have created these input layouts right this is the text input layout the outer area and inside this we have one text input edit text 
what we will do we will get give it a name it already has a name we have given it et input 1 so i will do et input 1 and get text we will uh, get the text from the uh, like whatever is written there we will get that uh, to get text or set text we have this uh, you can see text uh, uh, option is here this is from the method get text only uh, input one dot get text dot we have to convert this into a string first and after that because we have to perform operation we can't do multiplication subtraction all those on a on you know a string so we have to convert it into integer so to int perfect and in the same way we have to uh, fetch the input from the second input text that is this one the name of this one is not yet defined so let's quickly give it a name id and uh, in the same way as we gave name to this one et input 1 so we will name it et input 2 perfect so here we will say input 2 input 2 is equal to et input 2 from the activity main dot xml dot get text and again we have to convert it first into a string and then in integer because we have to do some operations so we have fetched the input whatever user has entered now our next step is we want to do something in the result text view we have to quickly show the result in this text view so it is having text view as the id as its name we will rename it to tv text view result this is our result text view okay it is to make things clear when you write code when you will develop bigger applications then this na these namings will be very much helpful because in your code you will always be uh, calling these views right so now we will say tv result dot set text we will we will set the text now what do we want to display here the user is clicking on plus button we have fetched the input from the user input 1 we have input 2 you have it can be 20 input 1 and input 2 can be 50 so we have to print 70 right so what I will do now I will perform the addition operation on input 1 and input 2 after doing this you can see it showing some error so why it is showing error you have to read the error messages and all this way when you keep the uh, cursor on the uh, error line it will tell you there is a type mismatch it is expecting char sequence but we are giving integer input 1 and input 2 both these variables are of int type right but this is expecting a string it is expecting char sequence for that you simply have to use inbuilt method that is you have to convert this integer result into a string and for that this is a simple method so anytime you get error you just have to keep your cursor on that error line and you will get the hint i mean what the error is and you can quickly fix that right so uh, we have done the code part for the plus button whenever the user will click on the plus button we simply will fetch the input one input two and uh, we will set the result text we'll do this operation input one plus input two and we'll quickly print it let's run the app and see if our code is working fine or not click on the run button it will take some time to do the build and uh, till then these are the dependencies section we haven't ad added any third party dependencies it should be quick to build so this is the app that we built let's let's try writing some input uh, 80 and uh, 20 if i click on plus button the output should show up here hundreds and it's showing up right so that means our code is working completely fine this is the basic logic for this uh, simple calculator application now uh, in the uh, starting of the video i told you that we will be building one simple ui as well as a complex one let me uh, get back to the ipad and give you some assignment for this one because the app is not yet complete we wrote the logic for the plus button right we uh, we have to complete the other operations as well now that we have 
build the logic for one of the operation for you the assignment is we like we had this calculator application we took input from the user and we showed the result here in the result text view and then we have some of the operation buttons like plus minus and multiplication division we wrote the logic for the first one in this one uh, we didn't use implicit explicit intent or any such concept it's just simple maths and you have to implement the logic for the remaining ones you have to write the logic for the other operations once you are done with the tutorial with your application the simple one after this we will be doing the uh, little bit complex ui i will just explain quickly the ui part to you all so that uh, you can understand in xml if you have to do some a bit complex ui then how you will do that once you are done completing the uh, logic part of this application make sure you show it on the internet tag scalar tag me uh, put it on uh, linkedin tech twitter and like people will see it right it will help you build your own portfolio if you are pushing it on github uh, there is a complete tutorial let me tell you i have explained on this channel itself on scalar's youtube channel we will put all the details in the description there i have also explained like if you have to do open source contribution if you have to uh, make pull request or do some contribution any other project you can learn that as well from there and maintaining a good developer profile is really helpful in excelling your tech career so now you have to complete this assignment the simple application and let's get back in the android studio and try developing the other ui that is this uh, this ui uh, in which you have to uh, make some more buttons it's a bit like uh, you know a standard ui of calculator the orange theme and everything uh, we'll quickly develop this one for that let's create a new project right uh, you already know the steps to create a project now we'll click on new new project we will choose one empty activity from here let's quickly do that click on next and this is calculator 2 or you can write uh, anything whatever you want the project name to be uh, then package name we will keep the language kotlin only and uh, this is the minimum sdk let's click on finish and we will quickly see how to make ui of such uh, a bit like complex uh, application the main purpose i am picking this ui because i have to explain the style.xml theme.xml those parts in this logic i'll ask you to write on your own if you can't i can make a like a separate detailed tutorial on completing the logic of this one it will be a bit similar to the first one but not exactly so let us know in the comment if you want us to make a detailed logic video for this one but first of all let's understand the style.xml the theme.xml all such stuff because whenever you are going to do some uh, real world app development these things are very important when you are doing ui where you have to uh, do you know same stuff every time so it's a good thing to keep all these stuff at one place and that's how style.xml all those stuff come into picture first of all what i will do is uh, you are already now familiar with this uh, android studio all the features here i will go in resource folder uh, resource folder is the folder in which we keep all the important design stuff ui ux stuff okay so this is our resource folder the drawable is here we will directly jump into the values directory just to remove the night uh, night theme because we don't want that to keep it simple okay uh, in colors that xml i don't want these many color themes to be here first of all we will go here and remove all these extra options i just want black and white maybe we can keep if you look here the theme here is kind of orange ish right so we will use that only uh, orange and almost black color white and red right let's quickly uh, do that let's remove all these extra color options and we will declare our own color based on what theme and everything we want uh, first of all orange obviously as a developer no one expects you to remember the hexa code for all the colors for orange it's i guess somewhat like ff8c00 
but yeah it's almost orangish uh, then after that we have this black color white color and we also want somewhat black which is uh, kind of light black color right uh, i'm telling you so that you get to use the values directory as well whenever you are doing the uh, design part okay almost black and for that we will use the uh, code uh, like triple two is the uh, like light blackish code so let's use that one you can see here uh, this is one of the finest feature i mean they give the live preview of the colors as well whatever code you are writing awesome so we'll get into the theme section uh, here you can see there are so many errors we don't want all the secondary brand colors we'll just remove it uh, we want the primary color uh, to be we want this uh, orange to be our uh, like uh, primary color right and we will uh, do the theme to be app compact so let's fix the theme as well theme dot app compact okay it's not showing the option right now so what i'll do is i'll quickly uh, refresh it we will change our theme here to app compact uh, and remove the dark action bar perfect and we will change the color here the primary color to orange and this one we want like light blackish awesome after this we'll quickly jump to the layout section that is activity main.xml this is the split part now what we will do here uh, the very first thing we will use uh, linear layout and uh, obviously we want everything to be in vertical orientation right so let's give it orientation vertical and we don't need this text view hello world uh, we can like maybe reuse this for the uh, working text view so so for now i'm writing here some like numbers user we want the users to write some numbers here whatever uh, operation they want us to do okay and after that we will give it some id that you can do on your own like uh, when you will write the logic and quickly we will uh, make it uh, look better we don't want this constraint options because in linear layout you don't need this right and this is your text view let's make it size better 25 dp and it should be match parent the width so that it covers the entire area we will quickly change the gravity as well to center layout gravity as well as the normal gravity to center perfect and uh, simply we also want the user to uh, after they done writing the uh, like the expression part we want to show the result for that as well we need one text view this is result text view Uh, let me explain that to you why we did that with the help of uh, the ipad so let's quickly connect it awesome so if you um, if you see the first uh, the second ui first one we already have done so in the second one what we want is here in this area let me write with the pen in this area what the user will do they will write some stuff like let's say uh, they will press on 2 plus 5 or multiply uh, something like that okay so this is first text view in which we want the user to uh, to write something i mean whatever key they will press we are not using edit input text here there is a reason for that i'll tell you uh, this is the second text view uh in which we want to show the result to the user okay uh, here because uh, obviously it's not visible uh, when the user will write something so like the text will show here this is how exactly most of the calculators work right so this is first text view and the second one is to show the result so let's get back into our android studio uh, we don't want to exactly show these uh, options here the text view uh, like we can remove the numbers part and the result text view to make the ui a bit better 
After that, the main stuff comes. Uh, you have to create your own styles.xml. This is the main part that I wanted to tell you uh, when it comes to UI, UX part and mobile application. After this, we want to create a kind of uh, button area here. Let's uh, do one thing. For that, we will create a linear layout. And uh, in every row, uh, for example, uh, there like each of these uh, each of these are rows, right? For every row, we want a specific design rule. So we will create our own styles.xml here, new. And to create new file, like new XML, you just have to click on file. And uh, in the values, uh, val values directory, let's create our own styles.xml so that uh, we can reuse the same style for all the button rows, okay? So I'll go in values folder, right click, new, and um, we have to create a value resource file, right? So let's quickly do that. Or you can uh, click by, you can do by clicking on the file uh, button as well. You can create a file and give the extension name.xml. We here now want value resource file. Let's quickly create that. This will be our styles, uh, the file name, and press on OK. Perfect. Here we want to create some styles, uh, wait, not a style sheet, so, okay, inside resource we have to create the uh, tag the style. So here we will create our own style. And the name of this one can be because we want to define a style for each row, like this is row one, this is row two, right? So we will give it a name uh, button row, makes sense, right? And inside this, we will create some items. We will give it some name, like uh, we want here the width to be match parent. If you have been following the uh, last tutorial, then you already would be knowing uh, why we give match parent or wrap content, right? So quickly, we will give the uh, width here, uh, width, Android layout width as uh, match parent. And in the same way, we will create another item quickly that is height, Android layout height. And we want the height to be a wrap content or you can keep it like a zero dB. It will occupy uh, the needed space only. Perfect. And also we will give it a weight. Weight should be one dB. Perfect, okay, it's it's asking some other input here. So uh, wait, if you uh, like have been, uh, you know, following the tutorials, we know that weight is uh, to help the view understand how much, you know, how much weight, how much uh, area it should take up in the entire space. So for each of the rows, we, we have given match parent as the width. We have the height as wrap content and for the uh, weight, we can just define one. Perfect. And similarly, let's quickly do one thing. Let's uh, split the screen so that we can see uh, what's going in the style section and the design part. Let's uh, stretch it a bit. And uh, now we will jump on and create the linear layout again. So in this linear layout, what I want is I'll do nothing. I will just tell this, I will give it the instruction that use the same style what I created here in styles.xml. So style button row, this is exactly what I want to do. This is the beauty of uh, creating your own style. I mean, you can uh, just reuse the style whenever you want, however you want. I will be creating similar button rows uh, multiple times, like we have to use this. Uh, there are kind of five rows, right? So we'll use this style five times. Uh, it would be like, uh, if, if let's say I would have not created this style, then I would have to write this code multiple times, five times. So let's uh, be wise and try to create some common styles in the styles.xml, okay? So once you are done uh, creating the linear layout, the very next thing that you have to do is right now it's not much clear I understand but it will be once we have done all stuff for buttons as well now you can see we want similar buttons multiple times so again what I will do is 
I will go here in the styles.xml for the buttons as well. I will create a style. Let's name it button button number. This will be the style for all the uh, buttons which are having some numbers. Okay. The words are pretty much self-explanatory. We will create uh, the options here like width and everything. In this case, uh, we will keep the width as 0 dp and height as match parent. Item name and here goes the height as match parent. Just a second. Height and this is your Android layout height which is which is match parent awesome and we will also give it the same weight these are done after this uh, for our text we want some uh, you know some styling or such a stuff so you can do this from here you can see multiple options here like text size if you want to give uh, let's say 20 dp or something you can do that we will see how much is needed what is needed and we want the color uh, to be to be text color to be white right so let's use the white color from the colors.xml now let's come back to the xml part let's uh, close the split section and this is our xml part right so we will just reduce the space and here we will instruct it to use the style, same style as we declared that is button number, the second one, awesome. After we have created the uh, first style here, it's occupying a lot of space right now, but what we will do is we have to create kind of five similar buttons. And once we will like uh, do this for all of these, then it will, it will look better. Uh, so if you look here, we will need four such buttons and we have created four. So quickly let's do this. We want similar five rows. Okay, so just uh, some sort of repetition that we have to do and it's kind of helping us save time. Otherwise, you would have written the same thing multiple times really. So that's it. After that, what we will do is we will go here and uh, we want all these areas to be kind of, we don't want the buttons to start from like that much top, right? So let's quickly give some margin here margin of maybe 20 dp and here as well margin of 20 dp one by one we will fix uh, the ui stuff and this is uh, button number design right let's quickly go in the style section and uh, we don't want text size to be this much big it should be around 10 dp and back to the Activity main, let's go to the project section. Let me open it up, drag and drop it. And here is our, in the layout section, activity main.xml, okay. Uh, you can see, I mean, uh, we have created the designs, but somewhere it's uh, like based on the layout, we will change our uh, common style.xml here. Let's, let's try making the numbers here. So the very first thing is in this button, we want to show text. Uh, it should start from uh, like like clear button right so we'll quickly summarize it you just have to fill in the numbers here in the boxes and to uh, make the uh, layout a bit you know uh, to keep a gap between the result text view and the buttons you can add a linear layout here as simple as i have been doing in all other tutorials i'll quickly do this linear layout thingy here and we will close it here after the two after the two uh, you know text uh, boxes text views 
perfect way better and um, you just have to follow the UI from here like we'll make it red and orange all those are stuff we'll create new styles for them uh, let's let's quickly write the numbers here like seven eight nine okay um, here we go this is the button and this is the text view I was just going to write the numbers in the text itself like in the design part we can't do that right we have to write the XML code uh, so here we will write nine or is it seven so we'll start from seven and then eight and nine let's quickly do this part seven. similarly we will fill the numbers in all the remaining buttons Now we have to increase the weight of this equal button so that it occupies this kind of a space. For that you have to use the layout weight and give it value to. We don't want this extra button so let's quickly remove it. Now if you observe here uh, for some of the buttons, for some of the operation buttons there is a different design. So what you can do is in this one let's quickly uh, fill in the background as orange right and apart from that we can create a style uh, we will quickly go to styles.xml and create a new style for the button uh, operations okay let's uh, paste this uh, wait let's copy this and uh, we will quickly paste this here change the style to button operations button operations and what we have to do is we have to change the text color here to orange because we want the uh, operation to be visible in orange color kind of right so text color um, here is the option text style text background For the operation button let's quickly change the text color to orange and then we'll come back to our main activity so we just have to change the style here to button operation instead of button number and it will do the work for you right so for all the operation ones we'll do the same thing So almost we are done developing the UI of this one. Let's quickly run and see how this looks like on the uh, emulator. If you are using your Android phone for the testing purpose, you can do that as well. Okay. So it's it's almost like uh, cool. It uh, looks like a real world calculator app. The orangish and light blackish theme. So the main purpose of explaining the UI of this one is you can use the themes.xml to create your own themes you can use styles.xml if there is a design which is repetitive like we had to make uh, these rows multiple times right so instead of writing code multiple time we can put everything here in the styles.xml so the uh, ui part i hope of this one is a bit clear you already know how to use linear layout how to use these views and now styles.xml themes.xml all those parts are also clear so what you have to do apart from completing the logic of the first one uh, where it's very simple you have to do this project as well and put it on the internet once again complete both these assignments and let me quickly tell you a few of the um, extra things that you can do in your mobile application project so we can cover this maybe in the uh, coming tutorials and all if you are developing any application so you can uh, use these onboarding examples as well let's say you are developing chart application or 
uh, Spotify, any application. So there are some third party libraries. It, it's very, very easy to, uh, you know, integrate these features in your application. Main part is the logic and uh, uh, using all those concepts like intents and all those things which are very core concept of application development. For stuff like onboarding uh, example, you can just use a third party library uh, where we use that plugin, no apply plugin, Kotlin and Android extension. At the same place, you just have to put a dependency. They will provide you their docs. You just have to read that and integrate those features, okay? So don't worry about these extra stuff, these extra UI thingy. These are very simple. All you have to understand is the logic part, how to create the application. If the flow is clear, the life cycle thing, all those stuff are clear, then it will be very easy for you to develop awesome applications. And assignment, uh, you already know what you have to do. You have to complete the uh, projects and push it uh, on GitHub, uh, show it on the internet, do a recording of your project and tell the uh, world like you have developed this application. couple of minutes you will be understanding everything about how to make your Android application live on Google Play Store. Mobile app development. It's such a domain for which the demand is never gonna stop. It's an evergreen and booming sector in the IT industry. Also, this skill has a huge earning potential as well. If you have any awesome idea or maybe a mobile application already developed in your local machine, this is the time to show your knowledge to the world. Yes, in this video, I will be explaining everything to you, how you can make your Android application live on Google Play Store. So the very first thing is, you should have a Google developer account created on Google Play Console. This is the very first thing that you will need and we will be understanding how to create one in the demo now. So this is how the page will look like when you have to create the developer account. It's a very easy step to follow. I mean, there are two options. One is either you can create the developer account for yourself or if you are, let's say, working in an organization and you have to publish the app on Play Store, then you can follow the second step as well, which is the an organization or business. Both are very easy. So I'm assuming that you have to publish your own application on Google Play Store. So we will be following in this video the first step that is yourself. So let's get started. And also make sure that before creating your developer account, you have two step verification enabled on that particular account. That's very important. So let's first thing is we have to write the developer name. So let's write that. I will write my name over here and in contact name you can like uh, give the basically let me tell you here your exact name will come and if you want the developer name to be something different you would have seen on google play store sometimes like in the developer name there let's say if a group of people are working on an application so they might give some fancy name like any team name kind of coders or any such exciting name which you want to show on google play store inside like that section the developer name section that name will pop up so either you can give your own name or maybe if there is any particular keyword which you want to use you can do that as well and then you have to give your uh, email address then uh, select the country it's it's very easy i mean creating the developer account as you create your account on any platform similarly you have to create the developer account you have to give your address details and everything and then the contact phone number. If you have a website of yours, maybe your own portfolio or any social media profile, maybe LinkedIn or Tech Twitter, something which you want to paste here in the website section, you can do that. The reviewers, they will find it easy to understand like uh, what kind of developer you are. I mean, they will check all the details that you will paste here, right? Your account detail, they will check the Google Play team will check. So if you don't have a website, no any like, social media account or something then it's fine otherwise i highly advise to like paste some link of your maybe portfolio or any social media account over here after that you just have to accept these terms and condition you can read these i mean these are some simple terms and condition which google play follow so before creating your account the developer account make sure you have these things tick and uh, yes after that you just have to click on the create account and pay 
option uh, let me tell you i mean this is a one time payment which you will be making for creating the developer account 25 dollars is the cost and uh, yeah after that you can publish as many apps as you want on google play console on google play store basically so this is a very simple step once you have created your developer account everything is very easy to follow i will be explaining you all the things the dashboard the details so now as assume that okay your developer account has been created so let me take you on that page basically after creating the account the play console something looks in this way the ui ux is very simple and easy to understand these are the navigation menu these are the options that you see here on the left side in the inbox section you will be getting all the updates about your application for you i think if you have not published any application so you won't be seeing any apps here like in my account uh, you can see four apps are listed here right so if you haven't published any so you won't see any application and these are some other option i mean uh, the account details developer page you can just go through them to have a basic uh, to have a basic overview of uh, what all is here on google play console right so now we have to like we have already created an application on android studio right what we have to do is we have to publish that on google play store so you see here the create app button right this is the first step you have to click on create app whenever you have to publish any application on google play store this is a step number 1 click on the create app button so here you have to give all the details of your application let's fill in the app name first so uh, for now for this demo i will be using demo keyword everywhere most of the places and because i don't have to actually publish right so this is for your understanding when you will be making the application when you have to publish make sure you fill in all the details very properly very precisely because this will be reviewed by the google play store team and if there will be like if they'll find if something is like not proper or any detail is uh, kind of not sufficient so they might cancel publishing your application right so make sure you are providing all the details properly so i will write here maybe demo app you have to choose the default language of your application uh, i suppose most of the times we develop app in english language so i have chosen that you can choose any other based on what is the language that you have used in your application and you have to choose whether it's app or game so i will choose app and uh, yes this label basically free or paid this can be like later on as well it can be edited i mean you can edit this later on like on the paid app page which we'll see later in a few minutes so i'll for now choosing free right and these are some declarations some policies which you have to accept then you will click on create app button and a new application will be created in your dashboard so this is how the dashboard looks like in the beginning it might be a bit confusing but i will explain everything in detail okay this this is like they have explained a basic uh, kind of overview getting started with setting up your application we will be following a set of instruction a set of step to set up our application here on the console right we will be uploading the uh, bundle the apk everything the signed bundle so this is step number 1 like uh, when you have to like once you have created the application on the play console all the th steps are like quite easy you just have to fill in the details and we will be understanding i mean what are the details that we have to fill in and there are some pointers which you should certainly keep in mind so that your application is not revoked by the google play store team they follow certain set of rules and regulations right so this is a start testing now step i mean this is something which can be skipped i mean if you want that your app should be tested with some internal tester i mean if you have developed your application and you want some people to use it and give early feedback to you so that you can improve your application then you can like uh, view the task under this section and you can start this process right so this is something very significant set up your app this cannot be avoided 
you have to provide all the information about your application in this section okay you you will be then doing the setup a store listing process and everything we will be basically understanding this process in detail since it's very important and cannot be skipped this one is start testing now it can be skipped and then this is the release your app section so here if you see again the test your app section is there uh, if you want your application to be maybe checked by to be tested by a larger group of people then you can like use this task as well the subtask under release your app task and uh, this is not again mandatory but if you want you can do that and uh, to, to you know tell your followers to tell people that okay this is the application and to ask for feedback you can use this section as well you can ask people anyone to sign up on your test application on google play and provide some feedback to so the developer team so that you can improve upon right and uh, yes these are some steps which are not really mandatory this is something which we will be doing publish your app on google play it's very very significant so in this video we will be doing the set up your app thing which is very important a significant task and another one is publish your app on google play the other sections are easy to understand i already explained a bit of uh, uh, you know a bit of thing about all the sections like what what's the main thing that you have to do in all of them they are not mandatory so we will not cover that in this video but certainly you can do the other like testing and all those tasks as well um, one more thing i mean whatever you are seeing here on the main dashboard you will find the same steps here on the uh, like left side as well let's say you have to do main store listing you can do that from this section as well and similarly you can check the performance and everything from here testing you can start from here as well so basically everything what's here is on this side as well now let's get started with the first step that is set up your application so what we did till now we have our google developer account created google developer account ready after that we will click on create app button on google play console that's the next step and once that's done we will be following a set of instruction we have to fill in some basic detail about our application on the play con console make sure you keep certain things in mind uh, which i will be talking while doing the demo okay so let's do this uh, first step that is uh, set up your app so first thing is we have to give the link for the privacy policy of the application now if you are a beginner you would be confused like what this privacy policy is about it's very significant when you have to kind of submit your application on the play console for review uh, so this is one website it's very handy flycricket.com you can create your privacy policy from this portal itself you uh, just have to like click on get started and you will see a bunch of options there they have a lot many like significant actually features if you have to publish your application on uh, google play store they have a plenty of exciting stuff i mean they can make things easy for you right so let's uh, create an account here already i have i'm having an account so i'll just log in so here you can see these are some of the features some of the options that they provide app store screenshot creator there are some specific uh, things that the like the play store team want you to follow certain you know uh, like uh, the size of the pictures that you upload should be in a specific range there are some rules and regulation so you can create your app store screenshot pictures from here from this website and then the landing page can be created using this website flycricket.com and privacy policy as well so uh, you have to create the privacy policy right so you can click on add your first uh, app so i will write uh, demo app okay we will click on add application and after that we will be creating some of the basic stuff that we need on this portal okay privacy policy is something which is first uh, which is supposed to be created first right we have to fill in this detail there on the portal so 
we will click on add policy and here you can write everything about your application uh, so let me tell you what exactly you have to write in privacy policy once you'll do that you just have to click on publish document i'm already having this privacy policy pdf so i'll use the same only this is of that scan scanner app which i created and uh, let's for now i'm just paste this is a format basically i'm using the same link for now i will provide the link in the description below you can check that out this is the basic format actually which you have to follow you can change the name of the app and uh, the email id developer account and everything so let's let's try to copy and paste this over here and uh, yes after that you can just change uh, basic stuff like the name of the app and uh, details i mean whatever you feel is you need to you and then once you will click on publish document button then the privacy policy will be created for you okay so it's very simple creating the privacy policy i hope it's clear to you it's important actually it's a significant it's a significant very important actually a step to paste the link of the privacy policy it's written here that you must add a privacy policy only if the target audience include children under 13 but i advise you to add you the privacy policy anyhow okay so we'll click on the save button and when we go here on the dashboard so you will see that okay this task is done so you will see a check bar and you know that that check sign the check symbol over that particular task then app access is another task so this in this one like uh, all functionality is available without a special access i'll click on this one basically uh, either like you will in your application if you are having some premium features or something then you can click on this one that all or some functionality is restricted otherwise we are good to go with the first option so you just have to i mean you would be knowing better that okay what are the details of your application right so you just have to fill in all those things here let's go in the ad section does your app contain ads so for now no if you are having some ads or something if you like want to on by ads so you can click on yes over here and also make sure that if your app deals with payment if that deals with money and everything so you have to create your uh, payment profile as well alongside the developer account okay i'll tell you in a short while like how you can do that you will see that option there in the main you know navigation bar only on the google play console let's now look at this section content rating here you will be again giving the email address of the developer let me fill in the detail and once that's done you have to uh, tell like in which category your application will fall is it like social or communication app or maybe game related application you just have to fill in that detail i'm choosing social or communication for now and uh, for all other application type you will be selecting the third option and let's uh, now move to the questionnaire part here are some questions which you have to read and answer very carefully so which of the following would best describe the application if your app is like communication related so like if it's used to communicate with people already known to the user or like uh, what kind of application is that you have to explain i mean is it related to skype sms or something so uh, or maybe if that's all in the second category i mean social so just read the basic details the basic definition that they have given and based on what your app is actually having just select that option okay so then does the app share the user's current physical location with other users so my app doesn't so i'll select no and in most of these actually it's preferable i mean if they are if you have if you have the any application in which you are using location and everything of user just be sure that i mean uh, you share all the details very carefully otherwise there will be high chances that the application will be revoked by the google play store team okay so these details are very significant which you have to fill in so does the app allow users to purchase digital goods or not so in my case no and then we will be moving on to the next step okay all right we'll save these many details and then we'll move to the next step so this is the summary basically uh, the category of our application we selected social or communication 
then these are some other inputs that they asked for right so they have shared like what rating your application will get in different uh, countries because every country has different set of rules and regulations some people like have banned some application and some people allow only such application which are of certain category so based on that like these ratings are vis vi like visible to you okay so for brazil like uh, your application will be uh, available to people of all ages there is no restriction similarly like based on country they have given all the detail for uh, south korea it's for like 12 plus years of people only they can use the application and then we'll click on submit so content rating is basically done you will see a tick on the dashboard on that section as well now let's uh, tell google play console that what is target audience of your application so i'm choosing 18 and over okay and uh, yes these are the options that you have to i mean fill in the details i will click on no and store presence let's let's say this much detail and then this is the summary once the target audience section will be done let's move on to news app section basically they will ask you this basic question like if your application is a news app or not so obviously like mine is not so i'll click on no and uh, we are almost done with this uh, like fill in the app content details uh, section you can see i'm in six uh, of the task out of 10 are completed the next section is COVID-19 contract tracing and status apps. Let's fill in all the details over here. Basically, they will ask details of like uh, if your app is having like COVID-19 contact tracing or some, you know, statuses related to that or not. This is a new section. I mean, it wasn't earlier. So basically, if your app is publicly available for COVID-19 contact tracing, kind of app you just have to provide the detail of your app right you would be knowing if it's related to it or not so for my case like i my app is not like publicly available for covid19 contact tracing or kind of a status app something so i will just click on this one and save the detail so let's move on to the dashboard once again and for now seven of the tasks out of ten are completed Let's now go to the next section that is data safety. Once you click on that, you can see here are five sections. You can read all these paragraphs, all these details written in detail. Uh, let's move on to the next section. So is your app like collecting data or sharing any of the required user data type? In most of these, like obviously um, I do, I'm collecting data, but not sharing data most in most of the cases, this will be the case, right? So just based on what your app is about and uh, what kind is it sharing the data of users to everyone or not just you have to fill in the details right so has your app successfully completed an independent security review so according to the mobile application security assessment framework this is important you can read up details about this framework this particular framework um, on the internet it will be easily available right so only answer yes if the review is good standing so let's move on to the next step and this is the like preview all the details that you provided they are showing you the same thing and click on submit so yes this step is also completed now we will move to the uh, to the next step that is manage how your app is organized and presented that's a very significant step like on google play store how your app will look like what will be the basic category subcategory everything it's it's significant step so uh, this is app we already have like given the information initially as well for the category um, like let me choose education and you can give tags it's significant let's say if people are searching for any application around that particular tag the, the more uh, relevant tags you will use the better will be the search results right so for now i'm randomly choosing because this is kind of demo only right but choose the, all the tags uh, wisely i mean don't put anything extra and uh, don't put less as well because uh, if you put relevant tags it will really help your app come in the top uh, section when anyone will search for it right so again you have to provide your details like email address and everything 
so use the same uh, like email and everything contact details which you provided at other places i'm just filling that in and you have to give your phone number and everything that's not mandatory uh, you can see this asterisk because there are some email addresses are mandatory and for external marketing i mean if you don't want your app to be advertised outside of google play then uh, i mean you can untick that otherwise i would advise to just allow external marketing and uh, moving ahead we are just saving these changes and we'll go back to our dashboard so now nine steps are done this is the last one that is set up your store listing it's also a significant step and the final step actually for the content app section and the uh, app name you have to give the name of the app which will be visible on google play store short description about your application so now i will just write demo in all the sections right but do provide a detailed kind of info for each of this and it's very significant for users to understand like what your app is about full description in full description you will be writing all the features and everything that's there and uh, let's upload the app i can make sure you have all these kind of rules and regulations just follow these while developing the app i can feature graphic i have these already in my system so i'll just use that and uh, yes uh, you can use the website which i uh, showed you earlier that will help you create good like icons and everything feature graphic for your application so this is the feature graphic and they here we have app screenshots i will upload these so these are for now like i'm randomly uploading these you have to be very specific about like what your app is about and make relevant uh, screenshots and everything for creating a screenshot again you can use the um, this website fly cricket which help you in generating the screenshot and everything for your application and that's all our changes are saved we'll move to dashboard now and uh, the final step is we'll go on the release section now so now that the first section is done we have added all the details of our app it's very easy you just have to read carefully what details they are asking for and you just have to provide the right information into that those like questions into those uh, whatever they are asking if they are tick mark or whatever now moving ahead uh, we will be doing the publish your app on google play this is step it's very significant in this we have easy steps i mean you just have to select the countries regions and uh, after that you have to upload the signed uh, bundle they are on the portal so let's do that i will click on uh, like for now there are no releases i'll click on create new release and after that we'll provide the basic details first thing is we have to upload the app bundle now this is very important let me show you this let's say it's uh, like this is android studio and uh, uh, we usually what used to do uh, we used to like click on build and then we used to just create the apk or bundle this time because you have to upload this on google play store so basically what you have to do you have to create the signed bundle so let's understand how to do that uh, you have to click on generate signed bundle or apk uh, let it be android app bundle next this is very important key store path make sure whatever key store you are creating is stored at a safe place whenever you have to update your application you will need this key store so just make sure you store it at a, you store it at a safe place and remember the password as well which you use here so i'll click on create new and uh, for the path i will uh, choose let's say desktop itself my demo key i will write okay and click okay then password i'm just writing 123456 because it's just demo right and then alas is will i'll use the same password and after that this is the validity year basically how long your app will be on the play store you can like by default it's 25 you can increase it as much as you want 
so after that this is important to give the first and last name as well so i'll just enter that and just click on ok so now this thing is done the key store path thing is done you just have to click on the password and next so now you have to click on release this will release a signed apk bundle for you just click on finish it will take some time the gradle builds everything that will uh, happen and the bundle will be created for you okay so uh, for now uh, like as soon as that will be created you will see a pop-up over here that okay it has been created it takes like one minute if your system is uh, like internet system everything is passed otherwise like three to five minutes as well so once that's done you just have to click on upload over here let's say this was my previous uh, like uh, you can uh, i will try to kind of upload any previous uh, you know that release thing signed apk thing so you just have uh, you have got the basic overview i mean how to generate that okay it's very simple you just have to go on this build option and click on generate and everything once that's done you will click on upload over here right write the release name and whenever you do any update or something in your application you just have to change the number in the gradle script so version name is one so you will do like 1.1 and version code to two okay so that's very important when you do updates and all you can give your release notes over here like what changes are there what updates are there in that particular release note okay once that's done just review the release almost these were the two main sections actually you have to fill in the app details what what's like everything they are in the application and once that's done you just have to uh, make that application live on play store once this uh, bundle will be created uh, over here you just uh, will upload it okay so i hope the entire workflow is clear to you when you publish your application on google play store make sure that in the code like in all the files you are using your own code just don't like copy paste the code from github or somewhere otherwise there might be chances that your application will get revoked or maybe suspended so that's one significant pointer that you should keep in mind apart from that i hope the process the entire process is clear to you you will be now able to easily upload publish your application on google play store Okay, so to get started, let me quickly walk you through uh, what are the APIs that we're going to be using and exactly what kind of app we're going to be building, okay? So, uh, first of all, uh, you should go to apidocs.imgur.com uh, and that's where you can get documentation about the API. Uh, to start off with, uh, we have to go and register our app uh, and once we register our app, we basically um, get an API key, uh, the client ID. So, this the client ID is going to be pretty important for us to make all the API calls. I'll just make a client ID very soon, uh, but, but let me give the overview first. And then we have got uh, this gallery endpoint. So we've got this uh, api.imgood.com uh, slash three slash three because it's the V3 of the API uh, gallery uh, slash section. So section we can set uh, hot top or user. We can use hot and top. Hot is uh, the most popular stuff, top being the top stuff. Then there's a sorting. We can sort by viral and top and time and rising. Um, and then there is something called window. Window is basically like whether you want the top images of today, this week, this month or year and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of other parameters like whether you want to show mature content, you want to show uh, viral content and all of that or not. Okay. So we would be using this uh, to create our feed and we're just going to be see where the feed is going to go. The other thing is we can also see tags. So if you go to gallery tags, uh, then you see that, you know, we can go api.imgood.com slash three slash tags and which uh, gives you uh, a bunch of tags here and each tag uh, contains uh, a certain tag ID, uh, name of the tag and, uh, you know, how many followers, total items that are there inside the tag and, you know, so on, right? Uh, we can again, I think, uh, sort and filter our tags using some some basic things. I, be I believe so. I'll give you a list of uh, our tags that that uh, Imgur has. Okay, um, great. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating this app, which you know uh, 
it's going to be instagram like app of course and here at the top of the app we will have these you know the story stuff uh, so we're going to be you know using uh, right so this is where our stories are going to be there okay uh, and then there's going to be the feed here so the feed is going to be like this uh, where you know uh, there'd be like uh, the image and below the image there would be like you know the the title of whatever it is and all that stuff just like Instagram is designed right and we would have uh, like obviously more of these uh, right and uh, in fact I just uh, you know uh, let's just say that you know we have got uh, Like, like it'll be more of them we will scroll through that and then uh, we would have like at the bottom of the app we will have two tabs okay uh, and these two tabs would be uh, two kinds of feeds we can show actually so maybe one of the feeds we show uh, you know the you know hot stuff and you know one of them we can show the you know top stuff uh, so we can show some icons here instead maybe also uh, maybe in, instead of the hot stuff we can actually go and write you know create like a flame like icon like like that something like this okay so this could be like our hot stuff and the top stuff we can show something like you know uh, like sorting uh, icon or something like that uh, you know or maybe like you know uh, you have this uh, sorting icon usually and uh, it says that you know I've sorted top to bottom or something like that so you can use some icons also as well uh, so we'll see okay so uh, when somebody basically clicks on you know uh, top or they click on you know uh, hot or something like that uh, in that case you know we, we will basically refresh the feed we will show the stuff that's coming on the feed from uh, you know this place uh, from, from the, uh, the the images tag I think uh, where do we go sorry um yeah so basic gallery information we'll get and we will show either the top or the hot based on that and uh, when when we click on any of these uh you know uh, any one of these circles here which is each of the tags so what we'll do here when we click on the tags is that we will go to a new screen uh in our app and in that screen it is going to be much like how instagram stories work so in this screen the image will actually like you know kind of come up here right and it's gonna be probably like filled up with uh, right and uh, at the top of the screen we will show those bars that that are usually there on Instagram right uh, and uh, they will be filled up and uh, you know like they'll, they'll keep getting filled at the top uh as we skip for 10 seconds from one uh, image to the next image and, and so on okay uh so that's how basically we want to go about doing this uh on, on input right mm, so let's get started i think we have the api and uh, we can get started i think we can create our application name by the way first of all here you have to log into imgood to do that uh, you can give it an application name uh you can give it like you know uh, uh, sorry. Let's just call it Insta clone or something like that. Or I think we can give a new name, Imguram. It's like Instagram with Imgur API. I think Imguram looks like a nice name. Uh, OAuth to authorization uh, without a callback is fine. I think we don't need a callback URL for this uh, because they're not going to be doing a sign up or something like that. Web uh, the Website is also actually optional. I will give you an email ID here. So I'll give my, uh, you know, email ID gmail.com, right? And uh, description, whatever, right? You know, uh, Instagram clone uh, for scalar YouTube, right? Uh, submit that and uh, I will get a client ID and a client secret as soon as I submit that, okay? The client secret is not so useful for me right now because I'm not going to be doing actually all, all the authorizations here. Uh, the important thing is the client ID for me, right? Uh, by the way, if you're going to be making it, uh, then do not share the client ID and the client secret with somebody else. Uh, 
I'm sharing it right now in the video here. I will actually disable this app once this video is published uh, because nobody apart from you should know the client secret because then they can authorize other users via your application and then do something malicious like post some bad photos or something like that. Um, anyway, so this is the client ID that we need and uh, you know, just uh, let's probably save that somewhere. Now I'm just writing it down here and we'll, you will use that later on in our next app. So we'll just keep it saved uh, somewhere with you. But I think you can come back to all of your apps or something like that later on as well. And I think you can find it out as well. Uh, probably, I don't know. Uh, is there a way to come back to apps or something? Anyway, uh, saving the client ID is kind of important there. I, I don't know if there's a show, show all apps kind of page where you can find all of your clients or not. Uh, let's get started with the Android app now, okay? Okay, uh, so to get started uh, with exploring the API a little bit so that we know what kind of data that we can fetch, right? Um, if you go to the, you know, api.docs.info.com website and at the top right corner, there is a run in Postman button. So if you click on that button, uh, you can click on Postman for Mac. I mean, before that, you should download the app, of course, Postman. So I think uh, uh, postman.com, you just go and uh, download the app for Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you're using. Um, once you've done that and you click on that, you click on Postman for Mac, what will happen is I have already done that once. Uh, so this collection for Imgur API gets added and it has got all the use cases that are defined in the docs here. They are all uh, added to your screen here, okay. Um, the bit where I copied the API key, right, if you remember. So here once you have uh, gone to, so if you go to api.imgur.com by the way once, uh, that's the place and in your name you can find out settings uh, sorry uh, mistake. So you go to settings. So there are the list of apps that uh, you know uh, I have made so this Imguram is the app that I just made we go to click on edit uh, Sorry, uh, the, this is the client ID out there. So I copied that if you remember now the copy that uh, client ID uh, What will happen is that if you go to gallery and if you go to gallery tags and uh, here you will see that there's this client ID uh, Variable out there is there. Okay so by default, this variable would not have a value when you add this, uh, you know, uh, collection inside Postman. So what you need to do is inside Imgur API, uh, go to edit that collection. Uh, okay. And when you, when you edit that collection, there is a variable style. So inside variables, add client ID as a variable and paste this value. Okay. Uh, once you have done that, then you can come back to the gallery tags value and you can actually make this API call. And when you make that API call, you will see that you get these, you know, information back. So, you know, what you can do is you can actually copy this uh, information and use uh, uh, JSON viewers. There's a bunch of JSON viewing uh, websites out there where uh, you can just uh, paste that. And then if you go to the viewer, you see that, you know, there's this data where uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, there are three galleries and uh, tags have come. So there are 194 tags have come uh, some four uh, galleries have also come which is uh, most viral uh, user submitted random and staff picks most viral one uh, they have got uh, one top post each in each of them uh, and then each of these uh, tags they have gotten uh, you know how many followers does this tag have total items inside that uh, whether current user is following so these kind of uh, information that's available uh, right um, what else so within a particular tag if I want the images uh, so that's uh, you know so we can add a tag name a sort and a window and all of these things so uh, we can go ahead and actually write something in the tag name uh, sort the window and the page and all of these things in fact I can just go and in, in place of tag name can uh, probably uh, right uh, i don't know we have got trivia as a tag name uh, we've got all so all probably gets us cute pictures um by the way as per the documentation here um if i look at gallery tag um not uh all of them are uh you know compulsory pieces of information in fact uh, 
API endpoints. If I go, go for gallery. Uh, by the way, there's some information given here which ones are uh, optional, which ones are not optional. So when you're looking for a gallery tag, um, so sort is optional. Uh, you don't need to send the sort. By default, it sorts to top. And uh, page, uh, the paging number again, it's optional. And the window is also optional. So I can actually sort window and page. I can just remove, by the way, and I just send this request. Uh, the header should have the client ID. Okay. Uh, and I just send that. And I get the information of, uh, you know, this. So if I just go to, uh, you know, uh, the JSON viewer, I paste this data. Uh, and I try to view that data here now. So it contains the data of uh, items. Uh, these items contain about 59 images. Uh, each of them uh, contain uh, like link to the actual image there, uh, you know, the tags and all that stuff. So um, most of these, like, you know, you get the link here. And, and in this link, if you just copy the you know, value inside the link, uh, by the way, just a second here yeah so uh, I will just copy it from here right so every image gets a link you can just copy that link and if you paste that that's actually the image inside that link okay uh, so every one of those links uh, they, they have like a URL inside them uh some of those links uh would have uh you know instead of a jpg they might not end as jpg because the image actually might not be uh, a jpg image it could be a video in those cases the you know ending uh it does not have an extension in that case okay uh, so that's how the data is uh right um and uh, that that's the data inside every tag now, how about uh, the other API which we found out is all the stuff in the gallery. Uh, so the top or the viral and all that stuff. So how can we check that out? We can also check that out, get gallery here. Uh, again here, so section is uh, supposed to be, by the way, I'll just not save the changes. Don't save them. Uh, so I'll remove show viral mature and album previews i'll just i'll keep the album previews to uh true for now okay uh section sort window and page are again i think uh optional i'll just remove the sort window and page part of it uh the section i think we can pass hot here and just send that so here are all the hot images that we have gotten here and again i'll just uh, copy this and go to the json viewer once and paste it and see so we get data data contains uh, again like around 60 items uh, we can see each uh, item here it's a, it's a tag there's a type is also available whether it's a you know uh, i think image or whether it's a, a gallery or like that so there is like a array of images uh, like that it's available okay um so that's kind of the way the data is coming in uh in, in 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 some cases you will find that they contain an array of images within that uh okay so every item contains some metadata some information and there is a images array inside that which contains all the images so it could be one image it could be an array of images and uh, so on we are getting okay so uh, let's get started with this information. Let's start building the API gathering part. And then going forward from here, there are two ways to build this app. We can either build it a uh, bottom up way where we can build the layer which fetches the data from the API first, or we can do it with can build a top down way where we can build the UI first and then we can connect it to the API later. Okay, mock out the API and make it later. Uh, in our case, I think the API is very well defined, right? And the UI is just some Xcali draw, you know, this is very wireframe-ish. I don't have a final UI in mind. I haven't engaged with a UI designer who can give me a finished UI. Uh, so I can polish up the UI at the end. Uh, we can do it in a bottom-up way where the API is well defined. So I'll create the API module first, get the data from there, write some tests for the API. 
and then we will create the UI using that API. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? We'll start off with a new project. Uh, the entire process I'm gonna be doing live on this video itself. Uh, so right from creating the project, every piece of coding itself. Uh, so we'll pick a phone and tablet project and uh, we will go with a, you know, just uh, empty activity is fine, uh, right? I mean, we'll mostly change that stuff. Bottom navigation activity, we can go with that as well, but uh, I think for now we can just go with an empty activity. I'll add a bottom navigation tab if needed. It's up to you, you can pick either uh, choice that you want. Okay, so if you go with bottom navigation activity or whatever, uh, go next. Uh, first, we will work on the API side though. So it does not really matter what you pick there. We can change those things. Uh, package name, so let's just do it. I don't know, uh, com.scalar.imgura, maybe it's, uh, so name of the application is, uh, okay. Um, you get a folder where you are saving that. Uh, okay, uh, we'll be using Kotlin. Uh, this uh, minimum SDK version is 23, is generally the suggested one today to use. Uh, which makes sure that around 85% of people today using Android phones would be able to use your phone. You can use 21 as well, which makes that 95%, but I think 23 is fine to go with. Uh, and then let's just click finish. Uh, it will set up my project, download some libraries. If you're doing your first Android app, this takes a lot of time. Uh, me, it might not take so much time given that I regularly develop Android apps, so the libraries would already be available. Right, uh, so, Uh, what we need to do is, uh, so by the way, uh, we will create a separate uh, module here. Uh, so as you can see that, uh, you know, uh, in my project, uh, by default, uh, you know, uh, an app module is created where the source code is there. Uh, what in addition to that I will do is, uh, I will have to create another package here. So this is an Android module. Uh, for APIs, what we will do is we'll create a Java only module. Java only means you can write code in Kotlin as well. Uh, being that it's not a Android app, but it's a, you know, a Java specific module, which, which helps in the way that, uh, just a second, sorry. So, uh, uh, if you go and, you know, click on file, uh, new and you, and you select, uh, you know, new module, so you can create, uh, an Android library, or you can also create a Kotlin library. I think with the Android library versus the Kotlin library is the Java and Kotlin library, they are easier to test. They are faster to test. And you can actually use this library uh, for other purposes as well. Uh, it's like if you wanted to use it in a Java desktop app or in a Java server, you can use that in those uh, cases as well. It, it can create a .jar file. It's not Android specific uh, code nature. The downside is that in those libraries, you can't use any Android specific com.android APIs. You can't use any of them. Now in bigger projects uh, at, at bigger companies, we generally prefer using a Java library because they're easier to test. Uh, so when you have a CI CD integration, when, when automated testing and building is happening, they're faster to build and faster to test. Okay. So I'll call it lib uh, imgur. Uh, uh, it's the imgur API library. Okay. Lib imgur. I just uh, call it class name. Uh, uh, imgur API, maybe a class name. We'll just see how we we'll structure all of that stuff up. Okay. Um, and just finish that. So new library gets created. Uh, what we need to do is, uh, we need to make sure the app uses the Imgur library. By the way, if you look at settings.gradle, uh, there is include app, include libimgur, two uh, Im, uh, you know, libraries have been added. In my apps gradle uh, file, I will add the fact that it includes that library. So I can add uh, implementation. Okay, so writing this line uh, means that my app module is going to be using the libimgur module. By the way, you can add this thing uh, using a graphical way as well. You can go to project structure, 
and inside project structure you can go to modules you can select app and uh, dependencies you can select app and uh, you can add a new dependency as a you know like that uh, but you can if you write it manually like that then it gets added like this as well so you can click uh, you know module dependency uh, select which module you want right uh, it's already added here in that sense okay uh, if i just remove that by the way uh, so that uh, line gets deleted okay as you can see the line is deleted just click add module dependency libim good and uh, okay so apply has been added okay so this is the library getting added okay uh, these are your test implementations uh, uh, unit testing and these are for integration testing uh, these are the libraries that we're using in our project okay uh, some of these libraries are actually older as well the default project that got created they're suggesting that i can use a newer one you can you know move to a newer one uh, that's fine as well okay uh, sync that stuff um, and go to the android view in which case uh, you only see the files that are needed to be seen so in the imgur api if i just i don't know add anything okay uh, in a oh, sorry okay just add that uh, if i go to my app uh, and uh, you know main activity here uh, inside on create if I write, uh, you know, uh, val imgur api equal to imgur api, just construct that. And if I just log a line, uh, okay, uh, this will, if I just run this app, by the way, and I can run it on my emulator right now. So I'm just going to run it, my emulator will start up. It's going to showing you that uh, you know you can call a class which is there in a different library uh, here how you can do that you can do that by creating a separate module that is a java module by the way and you can import uh, that class like this here and then you can run it the gradle file of a java module looks a bit different as you can see here and this is the apps one so the app one has the uh, Kotlin Android and uh, Android application plugin added here. It has this Android body where it has information about how to build it in Android and all that stuff. Uh, the uh, Gradle file for a Java module looks pretty different. It has, uh, sorry, not this one. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, yeah, here's the one. So this just contains the source compatibility for Java, like which language is going to be compiled to plugins, Java library and Kotlin, none other things. Okay. Um, so if you want to add other things, like if you want to add uh, dependencies, you have to add them manually uh, like this, then you can start adding dependencies. So for example, I want to add retrofit as a dependency uh, to this. I, I will just uh, come to that and I will add that. Okay. Uh, by the way, you should keep your Java version compatibility same between the app and that. So I think uh, using 8 here would be better, right? So we are compiling it to Java version uh, 8. By the way, today if you're making apps, you can also use Java version 11. So you can do uh, 11 here as well. I think uh, this is the JDK version 11 you can use here. And same here, you can use version 11. And you can compile this project as well using JDK version 11. So you can uh, go to project structure, uh, SDK location, you can select an Android SDK. So JDK, you can pick a JDK that you want to use. Your computer could have multiple JDKs installed. Today you can use JDK 11 or above as well. Uh, if you're targeting Android uh, SDK 23 and above, okay. Uh, compiling it with 1.8 is not a necessity by the way. So my current Java version, I believe, uh, would be so i think i have got 11 available to me um, so current points to 12 which is fine uh, okay
So if you are compiling with an Android version below 28 and if you are targeting minimum SDK version below 23, you should stick to Java version 1.8. Uh, but if you are targeting with 29 or 30 level SDK and uh, you are you are targeted min SDK as 23 or above, then you can use a Java version 11. Staying with the more latest Java version allows you a few more uh, features. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, when you're building with Kotlin, it does not really matter though, uh, right? But you can stay with the more latest Java version in that sense. Uh, okay, that said, uh, my app is run here. When my app is run, if I go to my logcat, um, I will see that. Uh, my imgur i think uh, file has gone printed or not i'll just uh, run it again okay it will build and run again and it should print uh, that uh, you know value which i had written here in my main activity it should say imgur a equal to 10 if it is able to properly build it and run And as you can see, it's going to print. Okay, so uh, that's working. Uh, code from my library is getting executed inside my app. Now, uh, what I will do is I will initially not write any code inside the application side. I'm just going to first of all make the library, and I will make sure that the API can be used, and uh, then we will write code for the uh, app and the UI and up, uh, all of that after that. Okay. Okay, so to start off with, uh, we need retrofit here to be added in the uh, API library. Uh, we can do is uh, go to, again, like that project structure and uh, go for the dependencies for libimgur and you can add a library dependency and we can search for retrofit and uh, studio should search retrofit for us and find that out. This is, I personally feel a little slow process. Uh, I, I mostly just prefer going to, uh, Retrofit, uh, uh, you know, read me file there, and there should be a Gradle file somewhere available. I don't know. There's the retrofit uh, repository. Go to download, and there should be the line for how to uh, install retrofit here. Uh, here, latest version we can find out from GitHub. Uh, retrofit latest version is uh, sorry. It should be retrofit 2. Uh, 2.9.0 is the latest version. Okay. So you'll look at tags and we'll find uh, the, the, the latest version. Uh, so here it's there. 2.9.0 is the latest version available. Um, or you can click on releases and they're generally available there as well. So 2.9.2 is the latest version. So we'll use that. Uh, by the way, the search did not really turn out something. If you want this to turn out something, you can probably use a more specific search query like this and uh, search for that. Yeah, so we got square up letter fit 2.9.0. Here's the one. Two point nine point zero. Okay, and uh, along with that, we would need uh, a JSON serialization library as well, and we will be using Moshi for that actually. So, so we'll just add uh, same stuff here. Uh, so, adapter. There's a converter Moshi. Uh, so, we would use a converter Moshi for this. Uh, that would install Moshi for us as well. Okay. Uh, good. Um, we we need uh, support for uh, coroutines, and we need support uh, for. So by the way, Moshi separately we don't need to add. If we add converter Moshi, then automatically Moshi gets added. Uh, okay, custom converters. There's a list of them, right? Uh, so that gets added. Uh, if a particular version of Moshi you want to set up, so Moshi, uh, how to add Moshi via Gradle, you can just uh, check that up. So, yeah, so this is how you add uh, Moshi. 
we would also add moshi code gen so moshi code gen is basically uh, a way to make moshi work faster at runtime by generating the serialization classes at compile time so to use moshi uh, code gen you generally have to uh, use uh, i believe uh, kpt so i don't see that happening It should be Moshi compiler or something. I'll just uh, check that out. I'll just uh, add another dependency uh, like this here. Search and okay, just adding this. Moshi Kotlin code gen. Is that the one? Ah, oh, this is the one. One point one two. This is the one that I want. Uh, this should be added as not as implementation but as uh, kpt uh, so okay um, that's something that we need to add uh, to do that we have to add one other thing we have to add uh, the kotlin kpt uh, plugin here okay so the kpt plugin uh, makes sure that we can add code gens okay um, once that's done and now if i try to add uh, File project structure uh, libim good dependencies. In fact, just have to do that once again a little bit more. So uh, retrofit two point nine point zero to be added. converter moshi to be added same version um, then we need to add uh, the moshi stuff okay so we add moshi 1.12 implementation and we have to add the code gen stuff uh, so that's for moshi kotlin code gen compile kotlin code gen i think that's the one and uh, we add i think now we would have the kpt stuff available probably we just add annotation processor click ok apply you have to change annotation processor to kpt the annotation processor is for java annotation processes and kpt is for kotlin annotation processes i think this should work okay uh then what we need to do is uh here we'll add couple of uh, packages so we'll add a package called uh, entities uh, or we can call them as uh, models and uh, we'll add services we can call them services or you can call them uh, endpoints uh, you know apis like that you can add okay uh, so here we create uh, first of all uh, you know just go to gallery tags look at that response okay so we have this response uh, we send that uh, okay uh, so inside uh, models we have this so this is the response that has come what I will do is I will generate a model. I will create a new uh, so Kotlin data class from JSON. So this is a plugin, by the way. You can install this plugin in Android Studio, which generates model classes from JSON automatically. You can go to Android Studio and uh, so you go to plugins um, and inside plugins, if you search for marketplace, um, just write Kotlin JSON. You should find this called JSON to Kotlin class. It's a very popular plugin to convert uh, JSON data to Kotlin uh, data classes. 
there is a robo pojo generator as well and there is generate kotlin so these three all are pretty common i personally prefer this one so i can go write uh, kotlin data classes uh, this is probably gallery slash tag so i'll just write it as uh, sorry paste this data here class name gallery tags response okay so some advanced stuff like you know uh, annotations for moshi with code gen i want to generate properties would be val by default auto determine them on nullable or not from the json value uh, right uh, and other stuff like do you want to enable order by alphabetical enable inner class model all of that stuff uh, okay uh, and uh, you know indentation how much you want to do and all of that stuff um, so okay we go and we generate this so it creates like a bunch of them so it creates like uh, you know gallery tags response is one that we get but then inside that there is data so just created a separate class for the data model uh, description annotations and stuff like that so many of them you might not need uh, for now so there is tag x and there is tag you know uh, so tag and tag x are probably very similar to each other uh, you know so what you can do is uh, you can play around with that a little bit um, you can do is or you can use an inner class model format where what you can do is if you're creating this paste that stuff now go to advanced and you can select uh, the uh, enable inner class model okay generate in that case only one gets generated and everything is generated as inner classes for you okay so this data data contains a gallery and tag uh, the gallery data contains uh, top post and image and tag the tag contains description annotations again probably th these are not useful to you you can just remove that stuff we'll do a little bit of cleanup we don't need all of that stuff uh, but that's the gallery tags response this is the uh, you know gallery response i would say let's just copy this as well uh, and if you find common stuff we will do that so we'll do new uh, that's gallery response data name all that stuff is there okay uh, we don't need anything else for now. I think we we'll just start with these uh, information and then we will uh, generate more of them. So Let me clean up the API a little bit. Okay, so This data stuff uh, so what I can do probably is take this data stuff new uh and and i can do uh probably kotlin class of file uh gallery response data paste that stuff here uh call it gallery response data map that class here as gallery response data like this same for the gallery tags response i think uh, for this uh, stuff what i can do is for this data class that we have here is it very similar to each or not so it's not actually so this data class contains add config image processing tag it's a very different thing this contains uh, featured galleries tags very different things out there okay um, so in fact let me just uh, go back actually not uh, do this okay um, and, and uh, keep the data file here that's fine if the data file is here this is inclusive to this thing so what are the classes that we have gotten uh, generated here uh, right so there is a add config uh, there is a image 
So is this image very similar to the image inside gallery tags response? Uh, so there's a tag and there's an image. So let's let's uh, do some of these ones. So let's take the tag class. The description annotation is seemingly there is nothing inside that uh, description annotation. So I can just go find. There's no such thing as description annotations. It seems. It's, it's an empty object. Uh, it is apparently an empty object here as well. So we can clean up some of these classes that get generated, which we probably don't need. Uh, right. Uh, remove this class in that sense. Okay. Uh, this is the tag class. So what we can do is take this tag class. Uh, create a new Kotlin class called tag. Paste that stuff here. Okay, uh, tag works. Here, do we have a class called tag? We can remove this from here as well. It will still be fine. It will resolve the tag properly. Then we have got uh, the processing status. Uh, so do we have that processing status here? So we have this processing stuff. Again, seems common. It just has... Uh, status image so in fact this is inside image so what let's do is let's take the image class and let's externalize that okay so new uh got a file for okay so we put image out image seems to be mapped fine uh, gallery response has a very similar image class right similar information inside the image class uh, by the way so so we can do is remove that image class here okay uh, the tag class from here also i can remove by the way They're going to be very similar to each other. So this is the tag class. This is the tag class. Accent background hash. Background design minute display name. Same stuff. So let's just remove this from here. Right. Uh, okay. What else? So add config seems, uh, do we have anything similar there? There's no add config. Uh, what else? Processing seems like we have already used that. Can be used uh, from outside. So this processing we can probably use image dot processing from there. It seems like. Um, so that's data. It does not contain any further, so this add config is only in a class. Here we have got data, uh, then uh, inside data we have got gallery object itself. Gallery contains description, ID, name, and top post. Uh, inside that we have got top post. Uh, top post uh, contains account ID, account URL. So is this similar to? image so it's pretty similar as you can see account id account url add type add url all the uh, stuff is album is add all of that stuff is okay not exactly the same so we cannot uh, use them uh, to to replace with each other uh, okay uh, there aren't any inner classes so i think we can let it be the the name top post here is fine. So we have gotten our responses kind of sorted. Now next we will create the uh, APIs. So in fact, we'll move. So we'll create a new uh, interface. Uh, 
सो इमगुर एपी आई वी थ्री और इमगुर वी थ्री ए पी आई अप टू यू कैन नेम इट इधर वे आई थिंक आई इमगुर ए पी आई वी थ्री एम जस्ट कॉन बी नेम इट सो इज एन इंटरफेस दैट आई मी क्रिएटिंग फॉलोइंग द रेटर ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन ऑन हाउ टू कैंड ऑफ यू नो क्रिएट दीज थिंग्स हाउ टू क्रिएट अ सर्विस सो द रेटर ऑफ इट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन यू यू बिल्ड इट लाइक दिस इंटरफेस गेट अप सर्विस ओके uh and then you write get and then you write a call and like that you you go ahead doing that stuff okay so get so here you you write only the additional part the base url is going to be same so for all of these the base url till 3 is same so we write the rest of it okay so we write the rest of it here so uh, for the gallery response we got gallery slash hot album reviews equal to true so this is one just write it here we will change these things very soon okay uh, the hot will not hard code it to hot we will change it to something else uh, i'll just write that use path params i'll get back to that uh, this is just so that we can start testing that stuff uh, there is this function uh, which is get galleries or get gallery i think get gallery and it returns a call uh, inside which there is uh, gallery response okay sorry uh, okay and there is uh, the other one which is the tag one this is just slash tags and i can just do tags and fun get get tags i can do right get tags and then this is a call we should probably rename the tags response to just write Oh, that's a gallery response. That's a tag response. Okay, so we we'll get a tag response uh, when we call this. Okay. Uh, now I to test out this API, we should write some tests. So how do we write test? You can just open uh, it. It it in uh, terminal. So we'll find that you know uh, there is src main, and inside main there is Java and all. So create a folder called test here, just inside src. Okay. and inside test uh, create a new folder okay so this test has been created okay uh inside that you'd have to create that same package com scalar lib imgur so you can create a new uh package com dot scalar dot lib imgur okay so these are going to get marked as test sources by the way for your libimgur in the dependencies should add the junit also as a dependency so we can run some tests here okay um why we are writing test right now so that we can actually test out the api layer before uh, writing the ui of our app okay um so i will go and uh, just copy that stuff junit test for the unit test library and if this this here So you have to be a little patient in this space where nothing of, uh, you know, nothing visual is yet happening uh, till now. It's, it's boring stuff is happening till we get to some results happening. Okay. So when we are adding the J unit stuff, once that's done, leave him good. And here a new I think uh, package for the APIs I can do. Inside that, I can create a Java class, uh, a Kotlin class, uh, Imgur API v3 tests. Okay, I can start writing kind of tests like this. Test and get uh, tags. slash does not work so get tags uh, working 
that's the name of my test. I can name my test like a sentence if I want to, and you can use this back tick so that uh, in Kotlin you can name variables with spaces like that. Okay, that's a, that's a strange thing that Kotlin allows. It's nice uh, that allows that act. So here what we'll do is uh, we'll need a retrofit object and I'm not writing the test in the proper production way yet. We'll get to that. So uh, well, uh, retrofit equal to retrofit dot uh, builder dot build. So I just build a retrofit builder and then I do uh, val API uh, equal to retrofit dot uh, create and I pass uh, my imgur API v3. Okay. And then my API would have this uh, get tags response. Okay dot uh, I can do is execute it get the response okay so I can get assert not null uh, import assert not null from uh, the JUnit assert library assert not null that uh, response dot body is not null okay so if I just run this uh, you know it should make an API call and test that the body is not null. If it fails here, then probably my API setup is somewhere wrong. Okay. I should not be creating uh, the retrofit class like this every time. I will get to that. Okay. So I got a failure here. Base URL is required. So I'll have to pass a base URL. In fact, what I can do is I can make these uh, part of the class here like this okay uh, you can make these uh, private okay uh, base url would be uh, essentially this part okay and dot bit okay so let's run again Let's see if the body is available. Something else is a problem now. Unable to create converter. So converter is not created because I have not added a add converter factory. So I have to add all of those things one by one. Uh, dot add converter factory. I'll add a moshi converter factory dot create here. Okay. Let's see now. Seems to have failed. Uh, somewhere internally, it seems to have failed. Assertion error. Uh, we can see the further logs to find out why it has failed. Uh, Maybe we can print the response and see what happens in that case and see why it's not getting printed correctly or something like that. So we got a 401 uh, response here. So that's the reason I printed it. Uh, and I'm doing it like this for you guys, like facing every error that people face so that, you know, you know what are the errors people face here. So the the problem is that, uh, you know, this uh, 401 shit that's happening. That's because we have not passed the required header. Uh, the header that we require is for the API, uh, uh, the client ID, right? So we need to pass that header here, authorization client ID. So what I will do here is I will add a, uh, you know, dot add uh, 
So I'll also do is okay HTTP I will uh, fetch. So So I will add an interceptor. So inside that interceptor, what I will do is So you pass an interceptor and that interceptor should, uh, you know, basically uh, return uh, response here, okay. Uh, so uh, sorry, I think I have to create a So I'll pass a interceptors body is supposed to be a chain. A chain is supposed to have a proceed call. A proceed call is supposed to, I think, return response. Um, I believe I call dot proceed. I uh, should work on this. Um, Just brush it up quickly. Uh, how to add an interceptor? Uh, so, interceptor so that is a chain dot request. And uh, how do I create a response? So, chain, 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 chain. Okay, I get a chain in the intercept. It dot proceed. So I have to do it dot proceed. Uh, well, request equal to this, and then I pass it dot proceed request. Ah. So that's all I have to do, uh, except inside the add header, I have to uh, add the header. I have to pass uh, this, the name of the header is authorization and the value of it is gonna be uh, client ID and I will have to pass the actual value here. Okay, not this stuff. Instead of that, I will actually hard code the value here for the test right now. Uh, so for the test right now, I will hard code the value to uh, uh, go here, edit, find the value of this variable, and just pass it there. Okay. Now we will not hard code it obviously in our final app and everything, but I'm just gonna write it here so that I can start testing. So let's run it again and let's see what I get. I should essentially add two tests, one uh, where I should check it's working with a header and the other where I check it's working without the header. Uh, by the way, sorry, I, I forgot adding the client. Uh, client is gonna be that client. There, I created. Uh, just proceed at interceptor uh, dot bit, okay. There we go. I think uh, now it should work. So on every request, it's inside the interceptor, it's adding this client ID. Uh, it's still failing. Let's check why. Uh, so required value GIF V is missing at galleries top post dot images. So apparently uh, GIF V is a required value, but it's missing, which means that if I go and search for my gallery uh, tags response, uh, uh, 
So Jiffy is stated as a non-nullable string. I should uh, make it, by the way, a nullable string. Gallery response is inside the data. Jiffy. Okay. Image and this is the data itself. Okay. Cool. Just run that again. If uh, more of these are happening, what you can possibly do is actually make all the values in a label by default, uh, which is also something that you can do. Uh, let's see uh, what happens now. I've made GIFP as a label. I might find more such errors actually, and I will actually getting HLS is also uh, a label, something like that. So, uh, again do the same thing uh, HLS we can try to find out and set HLS uh, to string and then you can probably do that a couple of times and find out all the nullables uh, generally it should have gotten defined uh, like if you search there are a lot of types where it has been set as nullable Okay, since it's happening with a lot of them, I can do is uh, right. So everywhere there is a question mark, uh, and without a question mark before it. So you know, uh, int. I just turn it into this. If uh, there are string comma like this, I will make all of them nullable as well. And uh, anything else is there now nullable? So I think boolean uh, kind of is also there. So okay. Hopefully everything is now sort of uh, nullable supported now, um, right? Let's just uh, try it out one more time then. When you're generating a data class from, you know, uh, you're generating this stuff, uh, you can actually set it inside advanced. You can set uh, everything is nullable or something like that. Okay. Uh, that's probably a better idea, I would say. Uh, everything is nullable by default. So processing can also be okay. This can also be nullable apparently. Uh, so cool. Let's do that as well. So when you're watching the video, you can skip through this part uh, because it's the same kind of error happening over and over again, right? More of them. So int uh, but was long, so bandwidth, uh, so bandwidth could be long apparently. So bandwidth is uh, int here, so we can set it to long here and we can give it a question mark here, okay. So by the way, there are very similar things happening in these two cases. Uh, let me actually make it the same by the way. So inside uh, gallery response, there is uh, this data. And inside tags response, there is this uh, image class. Um, so the image class is used, I think, here. Gallery name, oh, sorry. Yeah, list of images. Uh, so this image class and the gallery data here. So account ID, account URL, add config, account ID, account URL, add config. So this is the add config is a special thing that's there here, which is not there in, in the image class. The add config contains data like high risk flag, save flag, show ads. I think we don't need the add config for now, but even if we did, what we can do is I can push the add config data from here to just make it a separate class. Uh, Uh, 
okay add config is separate uh, gallery response contains add config type which i can add to image type right add type and add url and all of that stuff is already there so this is uh, like 99 line bricks and uh, this is 75 line bricks so there's more information in the gallery response here so i'll do is just copy this and paste that there instead Uh, and remove this data type from here and make it image okay so this has now all the types that are needed I believe um, yep yeah. so what happened about the test let's just run that again let's see if you're facing any more errors Still errors. Let's keep fixing them. Add config uh, missing data. Uh, okay, add config is missing uh, because my add config have not made it nullable. Just go one more shot at it. Okay. Images is missing. Top post dot images okay. But there is another way of also approaching this is uh, you can actually start with only those keys that you need. In that case, you can just manually start creating the data class and just have those keys that you need. By the way, it just worked, okay? So finally, it worked. I am gonna remove uh, my uh, log line here. I don't need that. I can put a breakpoint here and I can run it in debug mode, uh, right? And here is where we'll find the good stuff. That is, when the breakpoint hits, And here's the response. The response contains body, body contains data. The data contains four galleries. All of them fully fleshed out data as you can see. Uh, you know, you can just open and uh, you can kind of evaluate the expression right here, right? You can turn it into two string and you can, you know, view that all of that data that's coming out here. Uh, there is the tags 195 of them have come here as well status 200 so great right so the data is coming uh, my test sort of works right uh, how we're creating this client and how we're creating this retrofit and how we're creating this API and all that stuff we can probably commonify all that stuff as well okay um, so let's get tags working let's do the other one which is uh, test uh, fun get galleries working okay uh, response here would be api dot uh, get gallery dot execute and uh, i'll just assert not null that response dot body i'm getting okay i'll make more detailed tests soon but for now, I'm just going to check that I'm just getting a response. Here again, probably something might break. Uh, again, maybe some nullable stuff. So then check. So required value width is missing in uh, data. Uh, so width apparently. Um, okay. probably one or two uh, stuff to be checked here and uh, yeah so that's working so my basic api stuff is working 
although that's not the correct way but data is supposed to be structured i will just get to that but now i can see that okay i am able to fetch the data i'll have to make sense that i can do this client id and all of these changes uh, properly from the app okay and i need to use coroutines so that this stuff this i can only do it in the main thread like this but from the app i can do it like that so i'll make those changes first and then i will proceed okay okay so since the api is sort of working i mean there's a lot of work to be done there we have to create a you know some dependency injection kind of stuff maybe a singleton for the client and uh, pass the api key properly we're going to get to that but let's take a look back at our you know uh, UI a little bit again. Okay, so we just to open this app right now. You'll see that you know there's this home dashboard notifications. These three things are done for us. We look at the code inside UI. There's dashboard home notifications. Each of them have a fragment. Each dashboard fragment, uh, home fragment, notifications fragment, all that stuff. Okay, so uh, we don't need it really like that. What we need is we need a single. Uh, fragment called feed fragment and we would use two versions of the feed fragment one with top one with viral and all that stuff right so and, and we need some icons and all also for that so let's uh, go to do that uh, let's let's get some icons that we need so this is for example the the, uh, the dashboard icon this is the uh, home icon and all that stuff so what if i need like a you know top or a viral uh, for that i'll need a you know popular or something like that so for the icons i can go to you know there is this uh, website called flat icon i like that website so flat and uh, let's say if i pick up the fire icon which i can use with the uh, viral so if i open the fire icon here i can get the svg for that so if i just do the svg for this uh, by the way we should say thanks to flat somewhere in our app if we use the free icon from here now if you open the uh, you know the SPG file with say something like um, a text editor okay interesting why am I saying because uh, if you open it with a text editor uh, then uh, we just need to do is uh, use the you know path here and that's all that we will need uh, so let's make a copy of this uh, ic home black i will just call it ic fire okay just uh, put the path data from here and paste it uh, in the path data field here and we should have uh, okay do not have the file um, i don't know uh, do we have it? Uh, seems like no. Mm -mm -mm. So height is uh, 134 uh, and width is 134. Uh, have we set it? Uh, so 134. Is that visible in that case? Uh, there are a couple of ways we can uh, go about doing it. One is we can actually obviously save this uh, SVG file. Let's just say we save it uh, to file.svg in downloads has been saved. So I can import a drawable. Uh, so new and I can uh, sort of uh, do email vector asset and I can import a SVG file from uh, downloads folder here i just downloaded this uh, fire file uh, so fire.svg open right uh, let's say the size is supposed to be uh, 24 plus 24 dp and uh, opacity is 100 it's fine uh, next uh, rest directory main release finish so i got ic fire uh, i'll just call it ic uh nav fire because it will go into my navigation bottom navigation thing right so that's the fire one uh let's say i want to use uh something else so let's see uh top is there like a icon for top uh sort maybe a sorting icon we can use 
top posts. Uh, maybe I can use this one. Uh, is there an icon for popular that's available? So trending, popular, something like that. Graph top something. I think these can be used as like uh, the popular icon I think uh, so probably a good one so SPG I'll do a free download for this again as well uh, save file to download this fine uh, okay let's let's import another one from here so new and uh, vector asset this time we're gonna be the line chart uh, I L, this one okay so do again the similar 24 dp cost 24 dp size I make it uh, I see nav line chart okay so you got both of these uh, generated uh the fire one right um sounds okay we need to create a fragment called uh, feed fragment so i'll create a new uh fragment and i'll create a blank fragment with view model it generates one for that so i'll call it uh feed fragment feed view model kotlin uh, so just finish that uh, should create uh, a layout file and a view model and a fragment all three for me i'll just create a package called uh, feed here move this stuff into feed okay great dashboard home and notifications we don't need we just need to open the feed fragment twice the view model is kind of empty here the other view models they have probably some just example mutable live data and uh, normal live data kind of a thing right uh, so i'll do the similar thing here as well we'll get to that uh, we don't need these uh, you know notification home and dashboard so i'll just remove these okay uh, feed fragment is okay for us uh, for now we'll go to the uh, this icons as well this this and this we don't need them okay uh i'll go to the the navigation uh, bar here obviously the fragment name and all is gonna get to change i will need two fragments i don't need three okay so feed fragment for both the cases it will be feed fragment okay label would be uh so i'll just remove these uh title these three things i'll create a new string uh nav title um, viral and another one popular let's just say okay um good or uh we can call it hot itself so hot and i just say hot and top okay right that's kind of the apis that have they are on nimgur so i can you can go for hot i think uh, most viral or you can go for uh, i don't know user submitted and uh, go for I don't know uh, is there something like that most viral this top this is this top and there is a thing hot right that's hot that's top okay so top and hot that's that's fine uh, we can go with hot and top right uh, these are my two uh, feed fragments so here be uh, nav 
title hot and uh, so now I have title top by the way right uh, the layout would be again uh, we don't need these layouts that the other ones were created so uh, fragment dashboard fragment home fragment notifications these are I'll just delete these uh, feed fragment I'll just rename it to fragment underscore feed this naming convention I prefer more so that it's easier to sort the files all the fragments are shown at the same place so I'll call it fragment feed in both the cases okay same fragments opening everywhere uh, cool uh, ID I'll just have to change uh, to navigation uh, hot and uh, this would become navigation top okay uh, my main activity code has to change a little bit so navigation hot top and there's not going to be any navigation notifications anymore right so that's what it's going to be like that's my app bar configuration and uh, nav view is there um i don't think anything else is needed i need to actually write the text and all inside that as well i'll, I'll get to that so so if i just run my app again let's see if it crashes or not if i missed changing any one of those things right nothing will show up in the layout by the way and that's the part that we need to change kind of uh, so the bottom nav menu this thing needs to change so again i need two items inside it uh the first one with uh, ic fire this is with ic chart uh, and i'll call this navigation hot navigation top title uh, again this will be hot and title top so this actually creates the ui of the navigation bar and that just handles the navigation the navigation xml file handles the navigation Okay, so this should work uh, and there we go so we've got hot and we've got top nothing changes it just says hello here and, and I need to work on that so what I will do is uh, in my feed fragment I have to pass a bundle and I have to handle that so uh, what do we do uh, in my mobile navigation thing uh, here we add a argument okay so argument uh, argument type i will set to string first of all okay and uh, argument name i will set to uh, feed and uh, default value i will set to hot okay i'll pass a similar argument here where i will send the value of top okay so how do i get this bundle uh, so for the fragments so passing data inside fragments so there's actually a page in android i think uh just uh stuff uh yeah so uh android navigation pass data if you just search pass data between destinations okay so how do you pass data between destinations you create this argument which i've already created by the way right now and how do i get this argument inside the fragment so i will get it as um, in the receiving destinations code you can use uh, get arguments so i will just do that i will do get arguments inside my uh, feed fragment on uh, create view if i do get arguments dot uh, so there is a get string for the value feed uh, val feed equal to this so That's my root view. Uh, I will return root view. Okay. So if feed has been there, uh, I've gotten a feed. In that case, I will do root view dot and I will actually add a text view here which has an ID. 
text view feed type okay make this center center so make it the layout gravity at center so it's center of the screen okay and then uh, i will write here in my feed fragment code that uh, root view dot uh, find view by id uh, r dot id dot tv feed type right um, set the type to text view uh, dot set text or i can just do uh, dot text equal to it. okay so if feed exists then i will set the value of that into that feed type text view inside that i will just run that again and you will see what the difference is that based on the feed type that i'm getting here i can set up uh, there we go so hot and top and hot and top it's okay it's coming out there uh except i think the fragment feed i have set to center uh the frame layout this i have set to should be at the center of the screen i believe uh but it's not coming out at the center of the screen somehow um why not oh I, i'll just lay out width then i'll just wrap it and wrap it so that it's at the center of the screen just to restart the activity and see the changes happen here okay yeah so that's the hot on the top so the argument is getting passed correctly this is the hot fragment and this is the top fragment okay um uh, let's uh, get down to actually connecting this with the data piece and actually showing some real data here so user model view uh view model method of doing stuff so you know as a view model that's where we'll get the data from the feed we'll probably need a repository kind of a pattern here as well uh, so we will uh, discuss about all of those things soon right uh, before that we need to clean up our api a little bit uh, when we use that i'll just come uh, commit the code till here and then we'll proceed further okay uh, uh, before we proceed more with the uh, ui side of things let's clean up the api a little bit because right now it's kind of a bit of a mess so first of all this class just use that for testing so i'll just delete this one um uh, okay and uh, we'll go ahead and create uh, so by the way when i deleted that make sure that inside activity probably there's a code you'll have to uh, that code has got removed so have to remove that stuff as well so that it does not have any problem in building and all right uh anyway uh, so we'll create something called an imgur client and i'm going to create a kotlin object now uh when we proceed uh, further like in actual production level apps we use something like dependency injection and their libraries like hilt and uh, uh dagger and you know uh, hilt is basically a wrapper over dagger or there is coin or coding those kind of dependency injection libraries are there but here we'll just create an object uh, which would essentially act like a singleton for our current use case now at this code is fine to use that uh and then uh, call it uh, imgur client let's just say okay and as we have seen in the case of this test we had to build this uh client and retrofit and all that stuff so let me just quickly you know uh, pull all of this stuff out from here put it inside imgur client uh these can be private uh that's fine so i'll call this as my uh, http uh client uh this uh would go there and this would be my retrofit object and this would be my api object uh fine uh, this uh not making it uh private i'm making this one as uh, public okay uh, a couple of things uh we will also turn this into lazy so i will make this as a okay http client by lazy and i will put the code here okay um what does lazy do essentially is that it creates a new instance uh only when it is first time required uh so when you get it for the first time then only it is uh, created for you so when the app starts by default these codes will not get executed only when the first time you try to actually access http client it will get executed so the further this object also i'll just make it lazy uh so okay 
and uh, this again also will make it lazy okay okay the benefit of doing this is that whenever the first time somebody actually access api it will try to create retrofit and then only it will try to create http client once it is created then for the next time it will use the already created one uh, pretty similar to the singleton pattern that exists in uh, java and it is thread safe by default uh, you know it is synchronized and thread safe by default so you don't have to worry about uh, that part this uh, client id we can just uh, extract it and make a separate api key like this here uh, so uh, okay uh, So also I'm just writing a to-do line here that uh, the library should only deal with logic and your API key should ideally be inside the code of the app and not should be in the uh, code of the you know uh, library because uh, once this project is actually uh, you know made uh, what we can do is we can distribute our libimgu library actually even to other developers who might want to use the imgu library in their projects okay. So for them, the API key, they might be using a different API key. So the library is not a good place for your API key to be there. Uh, your app is ideally a better place. So I just write it in a to-do here and we will deal with that uh, sometime later on. Writing to-dos like that is also a great uh, practice that you should uh, follow. Now here, this API, what I can do is uh, val API equal to uh, imgur uh, API client dot API like that. Okay. So now you can do API dot get tags and all of that stuff okay just quickly just run it and see that where this stuff is coming or not hmm. uh, seems like did not run quickly check that all of this stuff is running uh, not running uh, it's taking a bit of time to build the project probably uh, I mean let it build not an issue um, Furthermore, one of the things that I want to do is, uh, so if I go to APIs and if you look at uh, this one, here, uh, this hot, I can actually turn it into a parameter. Now, uh, this uh, album previews being true, so what I can do is actually uh, give, give a query parameter, query parameter uh, called album previews. So make it true by default so if somebody does not pass this query parameter then album previews would be true uh, the path parameter uh, so this is uh, supposed to be actually coming from you know in the good api as you can see it is actually called a section whether hot or top so we can call it like a uh, section okay and query parameters will automatically come from here so i can add a path parameter here path section I started a string like this okay now wherever this code is actually called inside the test I will have to pass either hot or uh, top so I can pass hot here and I can actually make a copy of this uh, test so get galleries uh, hot working get galleries uh, top working this should return me the top galleries and this should return me the hot gallery. So let's just see how well that works. Um,
Okay, so at this st stage, if I just run the tests here, uh, you know, uh, let's see what happens. So when I run the tests, uh, so there's some error and the tests don't actually run, okay. Uh, Oh, sorry, uh, there's some extra stuff that I was just trying. Uh, sorry, uh, so let me just uh, quickly run this test again. Right. So what happens with the test is that they're working correctly. Okay, cool. Um, one one more thing extra uh, to be uh, taken note of here is that we can actually make this API a little more safe. We are using strings hot and top here, but somebody could send xxx, and in that case, uh, the you know test would actually fail because uh, you can only search for hot and top. You can't search for xx uh, xxx as a tag for galleries. Now, since you can't do that, uh, why not prevent users from doing something uh, other than hot and top? So what we can do here is generally what I prefer. We can create an enum right you can create a new uh, enum class called say section and uh, have two values in it called hot and uh, top and then we can say that you know in our api let's say the section is basically that section object okay so then we can only pass uh, section dot hot or section dot top Okay, now if I try to run it, uh, run the test, the problem is it will still actually fail and then I'll tell you why it fails. It fails because uh, Moshi and the retrofit do not know how to convert an enum into a string. Okay, that's the reason it fails. Okay, so uh, there's a way to deal with that. Uh, so gen basically give it a, you know, JSON class and uh, generate adapter. This is similar to how our model classes are uh, written, right? Uh, so we have got JSON class in adapter equal to true, uh, right? And uh, then we can actually add JSON uh, and name equal to hot for this and JSON name equal to top for this. Let's see with this much change, does it work or not? Okay. Uh, we need to. So apparently it says that, you know, uh, code gen for enums is not supported or uh, necessary. So if you just check, why does it say so? Code gen for enums is not supported or uh, necessary. Uh, sorry, this is for Swagger. Um, so uh, there's another way of doing this as well. What we can do is we can create our own converter factory for enums. Now, by the way, we have our own converter factory, which we have added here, which is the Moshi converter factory. We can add our own converter for, uh, you know, say enum converter. Uh, okay. So enum converter will extend from uh, converter dot uh, factory. Okay. Here we will override one method which is string converter. So string converter takes a type of uh, some type and turns it into string. So for this case, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be uh, converting from uh, type. Uh, basically uh, enum to enum of any type to string right so here what we'll do is we will uh, in fact uh, i can just write uh, equal to converter of this type okay uh,
converter which takes enum turns it into string as a kind of converter I'm gonna uh, return from here okay so what we're gonna do is that uh, so if uh, type is of uh, some class if it is the data type that's coming is at least a class and uh, it is also an enum in which case uh, we can do something about it uh, else we can return null from here okay uh, So we take an enum and what do we return here is that we try to return uh, enum dot name uh, dot java class dot get annotation json dot name um, else you know if there is some error then we return null from here okay so that's how it looks so if the type is of class and it is of enum type then we try to find out the annotation of json and the name inside it if we don't find it we return null or uh, if type is not of class or enum then also we return null and we create an enum converter factory like this uh, what we can do is in our client we can add a new converter factory here we can add a converter factory enum converter factory Let's check if that works or not. Uh, let's go for our tests and see where we go with this, right? Uh, yeah, got, oh sorry, uh, we don't need uh, this anymore then. Mm. We don't need uh, the generate adapter thing here. You can just go and run the test directly. Okay, so these are still not working. Uh, there's a bit of an issue here. Uh, we can do is uh, let's just go to the converter factory and check what happens when the converter factory is hit, right? Let's just debug these tests and uh, let's put some breakpoints there. What happens when this converter factory is uh, kind of invoked, right? So this is the first one. We just pass that. Then we get there. So is type class and type enum that has been true we have gone here uh, inside that we reach uh, you know the next level here so we get enum dot name is actually top uh, so if you try to find out that uh, enum dot name java class dot uh, get annotation Coming out to be null. Uh, if I just do the enum dot Java class dot get annotation, I think that's also coming out to be null. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, let's find out. Uh, let's 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 uh, just uh, run it again. Oh, so I think uh, my mistake, I, I did a little bit of problem in the enum processing here. Uh, it's not something I do daily. So I, <laughs> uh, so what we have to do is actually in, in this uh, place, uh, we have to go for enum 
dot get field uh, so enum dot java class dot get field if I do for enum dot name I think I will get this which is the the top value right here if I do dot get annotation uh, json class dot java uh, further java class if I do and here if I do uh, dot uh, get annotation so this is going to be a set of annotations here okay uh, this is the first annotation here so i'll do like you know uh, dot get annotation for json class dot java hmm. i'm getting a blank here as well uh, let's just uh, write it out uh, so this is uh, going to be just a second i'll just stop this stuff yeah so enum dot java class dot get field enum dot name this would uh, give me the data type of uh, hot okay uh, here if i do dot get sorry get annotation of you know json class dot java and then dot name I believe this should uh, be available just try the tests once again so this gives me the data type and then it gives me the you know the annotation and then the fields yeah that works so I'll just uh, recap that a little bit might be a little bit confusing for people who don't work with annotations a lot so this is a converter that gets used to convert enums to strings. So whenever uh, Moshi faces an enum in the request, so it sees there is a enum in this request here, right? So it tries to convert it into string. So for that, it will use this converter factory and it will use this string converter. It will hit this string converter, it will find the type. The type here is basically this data type section, okay? So it checks whether the data type is class or not. It is because it's an enum class, right? And it checks whether it's enum or not, uh, matches that as well because it's an enum class. Uh, then it creates this converter fact, uh, converter. This inside this converter, so enum.java class, this is the class for section. Inside which I try to get the field for hot or top, whatever the name was. So I try to get this particular class or this particular class, the data type, okay? So I get that and I get its annotation. So I try to get the annotation for it, which is the JSON annotation for it. And within that annotation, I try to find out the dot name parameter. So it's a bit roundabout process, but I'm able to find out what is the JSON name hot or what is the JSON name top for this uh, kind of a thing here. Okay. Semi-converter factory works. Okay. So now uh, creating enums is kind of easier as a result of this. Uh, you know, uh, I can basically create uh, enums of this format, uh, right? Um, where I can write json name which is what i want actually in the api call then give it a you know caps name because it's a constant and wherever i want to write the test i can write section dot hot section dot top now technically i cannot call api dot uh, get gallery with any xxx anymore it's not possible i have to add a uh, section dot top or section dot hot one of those things so i made my api a bit type safe out here which is uh, kind of useful right so my api kind of looks okay at this uh, stage i would say if you close everything so my client has a http client it has uh, you know retrofit uh, if i want to add cache or something then i should add a cache kind of things here so you can add a cache you can use a uh, you know so you can use a disk lru cache or stuff like that which saves data inside uh, the disk so we'll see how you can add caching and stuff we have our own retrofit which has its own converters um, right it has an interceptor to add the header out there and i'm getting the api object 
So wherever I need the API, I can simply do, you know, uh, in the tests, as you can see, I can simply do is uh, imbu client API, imbu client API, and then I can do api.get tags, api.get tags, like that stuff. Okay. So that gives a structure to my API, but it's still not going to handle background thread and all that operation correctly. For that, we need to add uh, support for Kotlin coroutines. And uh, we will just get to that uh, very soon, how to add support for Kotlin coroutines here. Uh, Right, but my API is kind of in a better shape right now. Uh, you know, I am using proper enums so that I don't make a mistake in, in stuff here. Okay. Okay. Now let's get back to the UI and uh, let's start adding a feed which we need so that we can you know show the data inside that feed. So we'll uh, get to that now. So the feed fragment is uh, we're using this uh, layout uh, called feed fragment here and we'll need to add some libraries here as well so the feed fragment would obviously be it's a frame layout that's fine uh, we will add a recycler view here okay so so we'll have to add uh, the uh, recycler view widget um, i would uh, give it a match parent and a match parent so that it uses the entire space okay uh, Give it an ID, uh, recycler view, uh, gallery feed, okay. Uh, so, so there are a bunch of ways you can name them. I prefer using a Hungarian notation where I write the recycler view, image view, that kind of thing notation at the beginning. So RV gallery feed like that, I, I prefer writing that. Uh, some people use something like, you know, uh, feed, recycler view, like that as well. So kind of up to you how you want to do that. Okay. Um, so by the way, uh, to, to use things here, uh, we have used like a TV feed type like this. Uh, there's another way that we can uh, do with using uh, view binding. So we will actually use uh, Android view binding here. Okay. So let's uh, search Android. Uh, view binding so how do we use view bindings okay so to use view bindings you have to write build features view binding equal to true and that i will add uh, in my gradle file uh, so in my apps gradle file uh, build feature so view binding is actually set to true uh, right uh, so how do we use uh, view binding basically so you know we do it somewhat like this uh, Well, binding equal to, and uh, you can write uh, this is uh, fragment feed binding. So you just import that, and when you are constructing that, you can actually pass this thing dot inflate, and you can pass a layout inflate on inside that uh, dot inflate, and you can pass uh, the layout inflator here. You can pass the uh, container parameter and you know false those parameters out there like this uh, right and we can return here uh, binding dot root like this okay so I just write normal binding as well so generally we use underscore for private values that's a notation that's used okay um, so we've done that uh, then uh, we can do here is that feed is available uh, instead of doing this stuff we we have a recycler view now to populate uh, so our recycler view would be uh, kind of available by the way if you just want that text view also to be there so i can add that uh, text view that was there so text view uh, wrap content and uh, wrap content and uh, give it an id uh, feed type text view uh, or we can write TV feed type okay so stick to one type of convention you can either use Hungarian where you write the type first and then the variable name or you can use the normal Java Kotlin kind of convention where you do uh, feed type uh, text view and you can do uh, feed feed recycler view okay uh, so we can do here uh, binding dot 
feed type text view dot uh, text equal to feed then give it a layout gravity of center so it will come up with the center like that okay um exactly what we need uh, so sorry this is not what i want to run i want to run the app let's just run that again so what view binding gives us is that that find view by id you don't need to do and you get type safe values for your id so you can do binding dot the id that you have placed here and dot text like that okay so it automatically connects the xml to the java in, in the kotlin to a very nice way okay uh we don't need to show this text there in fact what we need to show instead is something else uh we need to show uh, yeah so hot is coming top is coming both things are happening okay so you don't need that in fact what we need rather than that is that uh no we need uh, the recycler view to be populated and we need a repository from where we will fetch that data so let's do that thing let's uh create uh you know a directory called data and let do an imgo repository here so kotlin class or file so so class uh, imgo repository you can create a normal class we can create an object type as well if they are going to be mostly static functions so it's kind of up to you uh, right um, so you just let's say create an imgo repository like this here it will create some functions here, which is uh, um, fun. Uh, get hot feed would be one. Fun get tough feed would be another. So in each of these things, we basically would want to make a call uh, to to the corresponding uh, the repository so we can get like you know hot feed what we'll do is uh, val api equal to imgo client dot api then we do api dot you know uh, get uh, gallery and all of that stuff so we can do uh, get gallery and we can pass here section dot top right and uh, this we can execute or NQ. We will actually not use execute or NQ. We will use uh, suspend functions with that. We will uh, make it uh, using coroutines. We'll get to that once. So we'll do like execute this, and uh, then from that, you know, we can take the body data and that response and all that stuff we can do here. Okay. Uh, so so let's get there. Uh, uh, we'll do that. So for that, we'll need to add the you know coroutine stuff inside our project so i'm going to add uh, kotlin just open the github repository for that where you can find out how to add kotlin x coroutines into your project so to add coroutines into your project there's kotlin x coroutines core which we need to add into our project uh, right so uh, what we can do go to file uh, project structure and uh, dependencies for so libim go just go and add library dependency kotlin x dot coroutines and see what comes up no it's not come up it should be you know uh, org dot jetbrains dot kotlin x i think yeah so we'll find uh, kotlin x coroutines here um, got it so kotlin score routine score uh this is the one that we are supposed to add i think the version is 1.4.3 uh is the latest one that's available it's native empty it's probably not the correct version we can just add uh, just 1.4.3 as well i believe uh -huh. or dot brains dot kotlin x and kotlin x coroutines code i think there should be a 1.4.3 itself available let's check so it should have been added into my dependencies like this Kotlin score routine score uh, 
I should add the same version into my Android project as well because I'll be using coroutines in my Android project in as well. So I'll just add Kotlin as coroutines for here as well. I uh, will arrange these libraries a little bit better in our Gradle file. I will uh, come to that part. Okay. There's nothing specifically for Android, by the way, here. Uh, the core already contains dispatchers for Android, etc. So, uh, you know, there is no... Uh, for for There's a Kotlin as coroutines UI library, uh, which is uh, useful for Android. So, you can use Kotlin as coroutines Android as a library, if you want to. Whether the library has been added correctly or not, you can check also using this thing. Go to project view and then you will see external libraries and there you can see uh, JetBrains and you can see Kotlinux core routines Android has been added and Kotlinux core routines uh, core has been added, Android has been added, all that stuff is there. Okay, so uh, that shows that the libraries have been added that we needed. Them. Okay, once that Kotlinux core routines has been added, what we can do is uh, we can actually take a look at our uh, API code. And we can change a little bit of the code here. Instead of responding a call, we can respond with a response and make it a suspend one. Okay. How does that help us? Is that uh, if you go to now the uh, test file for this, Oh, sorry, not this one. Uh, the lip and go test. So now you cannot call directly execute. Instead, what you do is you do a run blocking, and inside run blocking, you just assert these things there and uh, like this. Okay. Uh, in fact, you can put that in entire thing that run blocking uh, in this format itself. Uh, same with this. So run blocking means it will actually force it to run on the main thread and block the main thread while this operation happens. For testing, that's fine. For actual Android operations, we want the core routines to happen on a background thread. Here, because we are testing it, we want it to happen like execute happens. Execute happens on the main thread. Uh, so this way it will happen on the current. Uh, so run blocking as a definition says that, you know, uh, runs a new core routine and blocks the current thread till its completion okay so the actual task does not run on the exact same thread it runs on a defined dispatcher itself uh, right a dispatcher is uh, kind of like what thread pool executors are in java there, there is a pool of threads and tasks are executed on any one of those threads uh, only thing is the method of doing this is a little different there is a state management state machine available which uh, enables you to load a lot of tasks into a very small pool of dispatcher with a very low overhead. Okay, so coroutines uh, kind of appear to be like lightweight threads. Uh, so you have one extra layer of virtualization. So generally you have got hardware threads. So your CPU has got four or eight cores, uh, which means, you know, you have that many hardware threads. You cannot actually parallelly process more than eight instructions at the same time parallelly on the CPU. That's the hardware thread. Now your operating system is sending uh, probably software threads, probably a thousand of them to your CPU. The CPU is basically round robining in that. They are executing one thread at one time, another thread another time. So there's a one level of virtualization in scheduling there between your OS and your CPU. The CPU has got eight fixed threads, the OS is creating probably a thousand threads there. And there's another level of virtualization that coroutines build up is that per software thread, now you have got n number of coroutines. So you can have like a pool of four software threads and on top of it, you might be having 50 coroutines running on that. So uh, another level of virtualization makes uh, background task management a little easier. Uh, for our understanding here, run blocking means is that it's going to make this current thread stop while the task is ended so that, you know, our test run properly. Uh, so for tests, it's better to use run blocking always, right? Uh, but, but in our app, we will not use run blocking. We'll do something else. We will see what we'll do, but let's just see.
Uh, while the test runs, uh, let me get to our repository layer again and talk about what we're doing. So inside this repository, um, we can't call suspend functions without our external function being suspend, by the way. So our repository can have suspend functions inside them. If it is a suspend function, it means uh, that function can run on a background thread. It can be paused in between. Uh, somewhere above in the upper layers, we'll have to define on which thread it will run, how the dispatcher will get handled, all the stuff. For now, we're just making a suspend function for this. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, sorry, so we'll just go for the tests again. Just make sure the tests are running. And here in the fields, what we really want in the fields is that you just check val uh, response equal to this. And then, uh, so if uh, a response has a body, right? Um, we would, uh, you know, uh, so we can do like response dot body. Uh, For now, I'm just adding null here uh, and uh, the data type that I'm going to be, uh, so the tests have run properly there, okay. So what I'm going to be returning here is I will return um, it dot the gallery response. Uh, it is supposed to contain this list of, uh, you know, data images, right. Uh, so it dot data is something that I will return. So I can read here is that. Uh, list of images something that I'm going to be getting. Okay. So this makes it kind of fine. Uh, you know, I can remove this actually. So just to return data dot body like that. If it's not available, null is returned. I'll write a to do condition uh, by the way here. Uh, return a proper error object. If null. Okay. For now, I'm just returning null here, but I will Re replace that with the proper error object if it's coming out to be null. Okay, uh, this is the get hot feed, so I will do with hot here. Sorry, and uh, similar thing I will do here uh, with the get top feed. Okay, right. Uh, similar return type we have here. Okay, now how do I use this repository? Uh, inside my view model. So it's in my feed fragment. Inside my feed fragment, there's a view model. So instead of feed view model, what I'm going to do here is that I will contain the feed. Okay. So while feed equal to is the mutable uh, live data of type uh, list image, which I had there. Okay. Uh, Then I do val feed. So this is the private one, which I will not expose the actual mutable data. I will expose a non-mutable one. So val feed of type uh, non-mutable live data. Well, feed equal to, I will just do uh, feed and I will do it of type uh, list of Image. Okay, a thing here is that uh, you know I'm just doing equal to feed. So basically, this object and this object are gonna be the same. Uh, but I've changed the data type to live data here. So anybody who is accessing the view model from outside the view model, they can't change that data. Like compile time, they can't actually make those changes. Nobody would be allowed to. So here in the stuff, if I just do that, you know, uh, view model uh, dot feed, and if I have to set data or something here, I can't do that because the data type of feed is live data, not mutable live data, right? Uh, so I have essentially done right protection via simply assigning it a, you know, basically smaller type, right? Which is not mutable one. Uh, I don't need to copy it. I don't need to create a copy or something like that. I just, I'm giving the same reference, 
but at compile time my code will not allow me to compile any mutation related stuff now if i actually manually do stuff like this which is uh, you know as mutable live data right if i if i kind of converted it and then did set data so set value it would have actually worked because uh, sorry it would have actually worked because uh, the actual object is still mutable uh, only thing is i should not do obviously such a casting here in the first place and uh, i have protected uh, it simply by making it visible as a normal live data not as a mutable live data anyway uh, we'll get to all of that stuff uh, slowly and surely uh, so here we will do is uh, you know what we'll do is that you know uh, we'll create a function update feed okay and uh, we can do a feed type and we can pass feed type as string here okay so do feed type as string and uh, what we'll do here is that uh, if so by the way uh, when we create the view model let's also put the repository here so private val repo equal to uh imgo repository sorry okay that's done so when i update the feed so uh, when i do feed type is uh, hot uh, then i do uh, repo I'll do like this um, I will do uh, view model scope dot I will launch a function and I will launch it on uh, dispatches dot IO so this is an input output operation so when uh, feed type uh, is hot in that case I will do uh, feed dot post value and I will post the value of uh, repo dot get hot feed okay and if it is top feed dot uh, post value repo dot get top feed okay if it is neither of that else I will add a log line here log dot e uh, feed and I will just add uh, feed has to be either top or hot okay if somebody sends a different data here I, I should check for that although in my app I will not write anything other than hot or top but in this code I should make sure that I handle the case and I write a log line correspondingly okay so this is the update feed uh, function okay so what we do in our feed fragment uh, here is that uh, there is an on create function So in my on create, I will initialize the view model. So view model uh, equal to view model provider dot uh, so think hello, view model I can construct the view model directly. Uh, probably deprecated, right? So I do view model provider. Uh, I would pass a view, view model store. Or I think I can do view model store dot uh, 
just check this uh, stuff out just a second. Is there like a view models thing? Uh, view models. Uh, I think we can get a view model for uh, feed view model. Hey, I can just look at the talk. That's faster, I know, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, I'll just look at the docs once. It has changed a little bit of the how to do the view model stuff here. Uh, <laughs> um, so, 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 so quickly, let's see. Uh, okay, how do we create a view model? Uh, never shy away from looking at the docs, by the way. Uh, and that's the reason I, I, it kind of changes how these things happen. So in your activity, you can do by view models. Okay, by view models. We can do this by view models. Can I do that like that? Uh, view model. Probably not gonna work like this. Seems like it does. Uh, can we just uh, inside a fragment? Uh, so let's just see how to do it inside a fragment. So inside a fragment, uh, by activity view models is something uh, that uh, they have said to do. Um, by activity view models so let's do by activity view models okay that should work so i don't need to do anything inside on create uh in fact i should do something inside on create instead on create what i would do is well feed equal to arguments dot get string this uh this stuff i will do inside on create and then i will do view model dot uh update feed and i will pass the feed argument there okay it's supposed to be a string, uh, so I can do is like this feed if it's available. If it's not available, obviously I can't update the feed. Okay, and uh, I don't need to do this thing then. I don't need to set the text, right? Uh, let's just see if the view model gets actually updated and I can see that by checking out uh, putting a breakpoint here in my app and actually running it on debug mode. Okay, not the test. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I need to run the app with uh, the debug mode here and uh, let's see that when my view fragment opens up. Oh, actually the on activity created this code was there. I don't need that code actually anymore. I can remove this stuff here, sorry. So I can just do it by activity view models. That's fine enough. So the old code was there, which actually does on activity created. It creates the view model provider dot get, which I don't need to do anymore.
So when this runs and my fragment opens up, it should ideally make that, uh, you know, call. I have, by the way, missed one thing. I should uh, go ahead and do that. I don't have added the, I have not added the internet uh, permission, by the way, which I should add. Uh, so users permission, uh, the internet permission should be there in my app for this to work. Let it get built uh, by then. So, so now what happens is, uh, you know, fragment gets created. Um, this new instance method, by the way, right now is not used because I'm handling it by the navigation XML file. So it automatically gets created via that. Um, when uh, it is created, I am, uh, you know, updating uh, the, the feed on the view model. Okay, uh, I need to make sure that uh, so this might or might not be the correct place. By the way, we will get back to that important question there. There is a difference between on create and on activity created. And that's actually defined if you look at the definition of view model here. So there would be a life cycle uh, of the view model, uh, which is defined that is on create, on start, on resume, all that view model scope is there. So the fragments, there is a on uh, activity created. So it's not there in this current docs, but we will cover that. Uh, for now, inside just on create, I have uh, picked the feed object and I have tried to, you know, make the update feed call here. Um, Compile is taking a bit of time. Uh, I can do is, uh, Okay, so it did work. Couple of things uh, did not work. So uh, retrofit dot response and all these kind of uh, things are not available in my class path. The reason that's happening is because uh, you know retrofit is not actually exposed uh, in in uh, the upper layers. So there are two ways to solve it. Either I don't expose retrofit to the upper layer. Uh, or I can create custom wrapper classes. So I'll just go with the easier fix for now. Uh, I will make this uh, the uh, retrofit implementation as an API right now here. Okay. And uh, then make that build. So, that build just run. So computer is running a bit slow. I just pause the recording a while while the build runs. Okay, uh, I just uh, give a little bit of pause for my, uh, you know, studio to settle down a little bit. Um, uh, so let's just see that how what's happening. So if I go to my repository, put a breakpoint on, uh, you know, get uh, the top feed. Uh, let me just update feed if I put a breakpoint there like I have done. Let's just uh, debug this app and see whether the update feed is happening or not, right? And uh, so I don't think we need this kind of breakpoints. Uh, so. Uh, so yeah, we just need uh, those breakpoints. Uh, yeah, so we model scope dot launch. This stuff is happening. So when this stuff happens, obviously, you know, uh, one of these things will happen, uh, right? So just run and uh, it will find out a uh, result report.gethotfeed would come and it will put that value into feed.post value, obviously, right? Uh, so app is running, uh, nothing much has happened at this stage yet. Uh, what I intend to do is now see how much results have been actually fetched, fetched from the data and all that stuff. So let's do is uh, go to our uh, feed fragment and inside the feed fragment on when view has been created, uh, let's do this thing is uh, uh, view model dot uh, feed dot uh, well, let's put an observer on it this. Okay. So observe and we put life cycle 
here i think uh, Right, so uh, we do phi dot observe, and uh, here when we get the uh, feed, we just do a limp simply a toast uh, toast dot uh, make text uh, pass the context require context. Uh, downloaded uh, it dot size images. Right, uh, and dot toast dot short and show. So another data has been downloaded. It will show how many images it has downloaded. Uh, I'll just run this app uh, one more time. Okay. We can also see what's the actual network call that's happening by using a profiler if you want to. So, but right now. If I just run this app should show a toes 60 images has been downloaded if I go to top shows again 60 images have been downloaded right uh, hot again shows 60 images have been downloaded uh, if I just want to sh show the list of images right now uh, like you know uh, what we can do here is that uh, let's take this recycler view okay so binding dot uh, you know feed recycler view and we can set our adapter and all of that stuff to it so we'll have to create uh, those things here so we'll have to create a feed uh, recycler view adapter and we'll have to create a holder for that where it will contain the data and we'll uh, show it on that uh, screen uh, right or we can also do is we can just paste all the data that has uh, come here we can just uh, do is you know or just put a breakpoint here, okay? Uh, what's the data that has come here? We just want to see it, right? So let's stop that app, just run it again. And you can see the images have actually been downloaded or not, we can uh, see that. So it's loaded, fragment comes in place. Uh, I, I don't need these breakpoints anymore. It's working till here, we have seen. Um, we'll wait for the data to be loaded. And here we go. So it is an array of 60 images, as you can see. Each of those images have an account URL and an account ID, and uh, they have this uh, cover photo along with that, uh, and an ID and all of that stuff. So if you take that cover photo, I think, uh, you know, uh, so if I just take the copy value of that cover photo, if I do uh, just i.imgur.com and I just put that cover photo value here, I believe I get the image that I need there, right? So that should generally work for uh, you know most of the images that are getting downloaded here, right? Uh, so the next step that we need to do here is basically set up a recycler view adapter and put all these images on the screen, make them as cards and put some nice uh, stuff around that. Okay, but my feed is essentially working at this point. Uh, I need to do a lot of polishing work there. Uh, just a quick recap that what are the stuff that we have done uh, to get this working. We have got uh, the repository which uh, does the get hot feed, get top feed stuff. Uh, in our view model, we have added the repository. We have a feed of images uh, and uh, you know, uh, we when we call update feed, then uh, we take the value of hot or top. And based on that, we call get hot feed or get top feed, and whatever value we get, we update the feed accordingly. In our fragment, whenever the feed is updated, we put that data, show that data in in our screen. Okay, so that's kind of why the MVVM model works. You can actually test the view model uh, without uh, touching the activity. The view model uh, is easier to test, and whenever the view model is updated, we are showing it on the screen right now like this. So we need to have a recycler view adapter. That's one of the things that we need to do. Uh, apart from this, so we're just gonna get to that part next, okay? Uh, 
Uh, next, let's start uh, working on creating the recycler and <coughs> showing that data there. So what we will do is we will create a you know a new here uh, an adapter uh, and I'll call it uh, feed uh, recycler adapter. Okay, uh, and this can basically extend from list adapter. So uh, list adapter is basically a uh, recycler view uh, adapter widget so you can use a recycler view adapter also you can extend uh, i'm going to use the list adapter which is uh, has some additional features also along with that it contains two things that you need to add here a t and a vh the t is supposed to be the object type and the vh is supposed to be the view holder type so i'll clear a class inside here called uh, you know uh, um, so this is the feed recycle so feed uh, view holder i just call it uh, which extends from recycler view dot view holder okay uh, this should construct uh, basically uh, you know use that constructor uh, and then here we will use uh, for t for the first item so in the view model as you can see our uh, Feed is basically a list of images, so I can do a uh, you know uh, image from Imgur and view holder. I will use these uh, feed view holder from here. Okay. Uh, so once we have done that, we need to uh, implement uh, these two members, and we need to uh, change to constructor invocation like this. Uh, this should uh, sorry. Uh, this is supposed to have another constructor, which is a diffutil dot item callback kind of a thing uh, right uh, this is a diff callback so we can do is uh, here we can just pass uh, class uh, feed uh, callback which extends from diffutil dot item callback of type uh, image and uh, then we can just construct one of those here uh, make it private so it cannot be constructed in other places by the way because we don't need this diff callback to be implemented in any other place so just implement the members uh, make it a constructor invocation here so our items the same can be found out using uh, old item triple equal to new item and our contents the same sorry uh, uh, old item uh, dot uh, to string dot equals uh, new item dot to string okay so that's kind of how uh, we do this okay so uh, There should be generally an equals uh, notation also within data classes which checks for all the contents so you can also do is like just do a double equal to here and do a you know uh, old item triple equal to uh, new item so So I'll tell you what this does. Uh, so items the same means they are actually referenced to the same item. Contents the same means that the data inside them are uh, the same. Uh, so the data inside them are same is checked using the equals annotation. So the equals annotation generally for a data class whenever you create an equals uh, uh, item is created for you. Or you can just do is you know uh, dot to string uh, is equal to new item dot to string. And that's another way of uh, you know doing it. Uh, so you can check whether the string notation the java java the json string of old item and the json string of new item are equal to each other or not uh, which is to uh, check it this way uh, our items the same they are checking whether the reference are same or not you need a diff callback so that it knows when to recycle the items in a, re, a recycler view uh, it's a better way of uh, creating a recycler view around this so you have a list adapter uh, for this uh, we have got a feed view holder you have to create one so here i can do is uh, 
uh, on create view holder uh, we will do is val inflator equal to parent dot uh, con layout inflator so i'll do uh, context dot get uh, system service Okay, so we got the layout in creator. Uh, then what we'll do is we will uh, create a view uh, inside which we will hold each item of the feed. So we're going to be creating that. Uh, so we'll go to res and uh, inside layout we can create one uh, new layout resource file and uh, list item. Uh, gallery image okay make it a uh, start with a linear layout let's just say okay uh, create that so it's a vertical linear layout how I'm gonna make it look like uh, probably have a image view so the width is match parent height can be wrap content uh, it would have a image view okay where the width uh, would be match parent the height uh, would be um, you can go with uh, you know uh, wrap content here by the way and then uh, give it an id so the kind of ids we have been using with the other layout again just using the annotation uh, this type annotation at the end uh, so you can do the same thing here so uh, just call it the image view only and below that we can add a text uh, so just use uh, width as match parent height wrap content again uh, use an id uh, text view just like that okay um, okay cool uh, for preview purposes what we can do is we can add the tools ns here um, we can add the tools namespace and then we can add here uh, that for tools purposes tools uh, background is uh, say color gray and let's give it a height tools layout height 400 dp okay um, so that's what it's gonna look like um, cool and uh, for the text view below that uh, we can do is uh, again give it a so the tools uh, namespaces are only used for displaying inside the studio for previewing purposes they are not affecting the actual app in production they don't even make it into the apk right they are good for preview purposes right here so i'll give some uh, tools uh, text here uh, image description here like that uh, I can just uh, probably zoom it a little bit more uh, and see how is that looking uh, right um, so give it some padding of uh, 10 dp everywhere uh, 10 dp is too much 4 dp let's go with 4 dp uh, right um, let's give it a text appearance caption so caption is a good text appearance to give maybe and uh, we give 4dp uh, here uh, that's where the caption comes up i'm just going going with that okay uh, so let's call this uh, caption text view by the way and uh, that's how it's going to look like okay so the feed recycle adapter what we will do just run rebuild project once this would create the view binding for this xml file otherwise the view binding does not exist by default and in our adapter we will uh, do that stuff there's some red underline for something uh, okay on create view holder we need to uh, return 
uh, field view holder like this. I, I will get to that. Uh, let's just rebuild the project. You will find that there would be a list item gallery image. Uh, dot binding this I can then import uh, dot inflate inside this inflator uh, in this uh, parent uh, attach false I can do like that uh, return feed view holder and I can pass uh, basically um, this uh binding itself so what i can do is uh this dot inflate creates me a, a list item gallery image binding right uh so what i can do here uh, essentially is get this here uh, instead of item view in the recycler view I can pass uh, binding dot uh, root here uh, right uh, pass this item val binding equal to this and pass the binding here okay now we have passed the binding there uh, inside my feed view holder uh, we can essentially create a few uh, items like um, caption text view equal to binding dot uh, caption text view uh, the image view uh, binding dot uh, image view like that uh, these kind of things we can keep there right or, or we can do is uh, just keep the binding here uh, not deal with these things we can use them later on anywhere where we want to right so that's my view holder just like this I have passed the binding uh, right um, in my on bind view holder what I need to do here is that uh, I will get the the item using well image equal to get item for this position okay and then I need to set the data. So I will do uh, holder dot binding dot uh, caption text view dot text equal to image dot what's there inside the text. There is some kind of text available. Um, so let's, let's just go with that, uh, you know, make a call to the gallery tag API, right? gallery uh, tag api the hot one so just make a call to sorry gallery uh, section uh, uh, album previews i'm going with uh, true and uh, this i'm going with uh, hot so if i send it what information do i receive so there's a title that I receive. So let's let's use the title. That's the text that's easy to be used. So I can use the uh, title here. I'm just going with that. Okay. So holder.binding.caption text view equal to title. And we need to obviously set the uh, image itself. So for setting the image, what we will use is we will use glide. So how to use glide? Let's check. So this is uh, image loading library called glide. Okay. Um, so to use glide, essentially need to add this uh, two lines. Okay, 4.12.0 is the latest. So I'm gonna add it into my apps uh, implementation here. Okay, uh, so image loading has been added. Let's just sync the library once. How to uh, set things there, we just need to do glide dot width and pass a context and then load a certain URL into the image view. So we'll just write it kind of like that. Let's just go with that. Let's let it build and all that stuff. 
and there are a couple of other android uh, image uh, view libraries so android image uh, libraries if you search for there is fresco there is uh, glide there's, there's a bunch of them uh, and if i look for 2021 there's some latest libraries that are available um, so this coil has come which is i think uh, these days pretty popular and uh, it is uh, has 6000 views as well uh, and apparently less than glide so so that's what coil uh, says so to use coil we can do image view dot load and just this uh, there's a load extension function so we can use coil in fact instead of glide by the way uh, so let's let's go with uh, coil coil seems to be a better implementation uh, it's a smaller and faster implementation and it's more modern so you want to use coil just add implementation uh, io dot coil like this uh, don't need the brackets here so we'll go with coil uh, right uh, coils latest release 1.2.0 uh, to do image view dot load and you just pass uh, the the url kind of pretty easy right uh, It uses extension function in Kotlin, so it's more modern kind of library, Kotlin dependent. So here we go. We'll do folder dot binding dot image view dot there's this load function. Uh, so load is apparently a disposable, by the way. Uh, it's a disposable, so you know. Uh, probably can be used with core routines and all as well but for now i'll just add the load and uh, we'll put the url there so how what kind of url will be put there so if i look at uh, the uh, cover it seems so if i use the cover image dot cover like i have just shown if i just put the image dot cover in a jpg like this it gets me what i need so i'll do that i'll take this text dot load i will pass this and instead of this i will pass image dot cover okay um uh, on bind view holder when i did the bind okay uh, this is the recycler view getting created cool now uh, you need to use this recycler view so to use this recycler view obviously i will go to my feed fragment uh when the view has been created i'm gonna do binding dot feed recycler view dot uh, layout manager equal to I'll put a linear layout manager okay then I will do binding dot uh, feed recycler view dot adapter equal to and I will create an adapter so I'll create a private val adapter uh, feed adapter equal to feed recycler adapter I'll just construct one of those feed adapter great whenever the view is loaded i'm going to do is uh, feed adapter dot uh, submit list and i will submit this list of images into it which is going to be it okay that's it essentially this should work uh, it it i have got a list adapter inside which i can show a list of images i've created the uh, adapter where i show the image and a description and all of that stuff there and uh, i i might need to tweak the ui a little bit for, for making it look better i'm getting to that part uh, very soon right um uh, what else uh, i don't think we need anything else uh, as soon as the data is available to us we are just uh, setting it off here Let, let's uh, go and take a look at if it works or not okay we we need to add uh, progress bars and everything so we'll work on that stuff pretty soon A uh, couple more to do's maybe that we can add here is that uh, this argument also we can turn it into a you know possibly a, a 
turn it into an enum here. So I'm marking it as to do. We can do that uh, later on very soon. Here we go. So images are coming in and uh, all the description is there, except it needs a placeholder image as well. So uh, otherwise it kind of looks like these images loading a little later and all that stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of things we can do here, uh, right? Uh, so with these images, uh, you want to push them into square or something, we can do that uh, and, and uh, other things that we can do here. So if you look at uh, the image view here, we can do scale type and we can do uh, fit at the center, fit center kind of scale type by the way. Or we can do a center crop as well, which, which crops the center of the image bunch of things we can do in setting up the images there. Some images are kind of big and some images are small and all of that stuff is there. So I'm doing the fit center one, which uh, kind of puts it like this. Uh, we can do a, uh, you know, uh, we can do a center crop, which generally would kind of crop only the center of the image, which is needed inside that image like that, like this. So. This way only the center of the image uh, shows up here, stuff like that. We can we can do a lot of these transformations accordingly and you know, see what uh, suits us well. And when we click on that image, we can make a bigger place where we can slide to the images and all of that stuff we can do, right? Um, up to you uh, kind of things, right? Uh, so, yep, I think uh, we can go head with most of the things here. Um, so images are getting shown. The description is getting shown as well. If we need a, you know, kind of placeholder image or something like that, uh, we can deal with that stuff as well. So we can do, uh, when we're doing it dot load dot so we can add actually a placeholder. Uh, and we can add a drawable there inside that placeholder. Um, so you can go to placeholder image PNG. We can just search for one. There's like bunch of them. We can use uh, any one of them. Let's say we want to use this one, right? So it's a good placeholder image. Uh, it seems like uh, for our use case. Uh, or there is this one, which is a more squarish one. Looks pretty, pretty tough. Ah, we can go with this one. So I'll just uh, open this image somewhere. It's placeholder PNG. So let's save this image. So let's save this image somewhere in our uh, course or development, wherever we're doing this. Uh, So app, uh, I'll go to SRC main uh, res and inside drawable, I will uh, put this placeholder uh, image.png. So I can do is uh, placeholder r dot drawable dot uh, import the r class r dot placeholder image. I can uh, put it as a placeholder there. Okay, this is uh, what my placeholder looks like, drawable placeholder image. It's it's pretty big actually, uh, 1200 cross 1800, you can make it smaller if you need to, uh, but that's also fine. So we put the placeholder image there. Uh, there's other things that you can put here, you know, uh, bitmap config and add header and crossfade and all that stuff. Uh, okay, whether to use a cache, or whether to you know, use a life cycle of your app, so you can add a, life cycle by the way here uh in the adapter you won't find it so you'll have to get it from the parent uh, those things we can do uh anyway uh, let's just run this again and see what happens in this case when we have that placeholder in place Okay, we need to restart our app or something because 
the placeholder image needs to be loaded. So it's taking the whole space like this center crop uh, we can do is uh, fit center is also fine. In this case, the entire image would actually show up. So till the image comes up, it will actually be these uh, things that come up in place of that. Okay. There's a lot of improvements we can do there. We can put a loader there or stuff like that. Uh, and we will get to that uh, eventually. Okay. We can set a maximum height and a minimum height of that image as well uh, around these things. Okay. A uh, bunch of stuff that we can do or we can make it, you know, uh, we can give it a layout width of, uh, you know, match parent and a layout height of around like, you know, uh, 400 dp. Uh, 400 dp is pretty big. I think we can give it uh, 350 dp. Okay. This, uh, we don't need this then anymore. This is a 300 dp like that. Fit center. Uh, we can do it uh, in that place. Right just load it again so it will be fixed size everywhere in this case some images might not load and uh, those cases then you might need to handle them separately as well so if the images uh, probably do not load you can create a image error placeholder as well so placeholder error image so something like you know broken image kind of a thing uh, stuff like that you can also add probably image currently unavailable or you can design your own uh, stuff as well around uh, that you can, you can do something like that so for now just uh, you know you can do is uh, in case of error by the way in your adapter so for error also you can pass the same drawable just saying okay and uh, if image is not able to be loaded it would show that uh, placeholder right somewhere any in chance image does not loaded keeps showing that uh, placeholder and all that stuff So we got this feed kind of stuff done here. We got both the feed. So we got the top feed and uh, we got the hot feed. Okay. So this little layout shifting thing that's happening, that's because I'm sharing the uh, view model. You can do is uh, in my view model thing, in my fragment, instead of using activity view models, I can use just view models. I believe. Um, So if I use just view models, in that case, I believe uh, a separate view model for each instance of the fragment would be created. Let me just quickly check that. In that case, that you know layout shift problem would not happen. Yeah. So I'm not sharing the view model across these two. So that problem is not happening. Okay. Uh, this image, the you know the placeholder image, we can actually make it a little smaller as well. By the way, so just uh, I know, open with uh, open a terminal, and uh, I'll just uh, change the size of it. So, Mogrify uh, placeholder image. Oh, is the drawable view? Resize it to something like 500 cross 500 or smaller than that size. I'll just do it. So now it's hmm. should have. Uh... 
I don't know. Uh, does not seem to have run. It's 500 cross 33 now, which is fine. I can uh, set my uh, type to center crop again then. Good. So here we got our sort of feed. We can improve these, uh, you know, items and all a little bit more as we go ahead. But we got our basic feed working, but we don't have that uh, top uh, stuff yet, which is uh, where we have our uh, stories, right? So next up, we'll do that, um, right? Uh, before we do that, let's do is uh, remove that uh, nav bar from the top. So that can be changed in the themes. So if you go to themes, um, right? uh there is themes and themes night so no action bar let me just do okay so i don't use an action bar then my app goes up to the top right uh something did not work Oh, setup action bar with nav controller. I don't need this actually. Uh, since we are not using an action bar now. So the padding and all we need to deal with uh, something else in that place uh, if we do that. So our main activity uh, layout. It has this margin at the top which we can probably deal with uh, padding top we can just remove this yeah so we don't need an action bar at the top uh, you can just have the images uh, right at the top like this okay seems good um, I'll just mark it here that we are not using a So just commenting uh, this part out. So I'll just write uh, action bar code here. I'll just uh, comment this part out of the action bar code, which we don't need for now. Okay. Great. So inside our activity, we would need at the top of the screen, uh, we would need actually it's a constraint layout, which we don't need a constraint layout, by the way. So that's fine. Let's just see this fragment is there. Uh, it's constrained to the top and to the bottom and all that stuff is there. Uh, oops. Um, we'll put a recycler view here at the top the width would be match parent 
height would be wrap content uh, okay i'll put a tools height parameter here uh, of uh, 50 dp so you see like what kind of height it's it's not a 50 dp probably 100 dp so that's where my stories will go at the top okay uh this uh, recycler we will give it an android id uh stories recycler view okay um i'll give it some uh, constraints and all since it's a constraint layout right uh we could do like a bunch of things uh here i mean we could uh use a linear layout and all of those things this fragment has a bottom to top of nav view we have done uh that's great uh, this has the wrap content so we'll do uh constraint layout top to bottom of uh, top sorry so first of all this recycler view uh, here i will do uh, left to uh, left of parent um, right to right of uh, parent top to top of parent okay these are all uh the height is wrap content right uh just say we get it maybe uh, 64 dp maybe okay that's kind of height or 75 dp uh we'll just see what what is the probably best height and this fragment we will just uh constrain uh top to bottom of uh the storage recycler view okay uh, that's how we'll do okay uh just exactly does not have anything right now but let me just uh quickly run this so that's the recycle view inside which we'll put those circles okay so now uh if i actually give it a instead of tools if i give it an android layout height right and then i run it oh, sorry 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 uh my bad here itself it will go 75 dp just run it once so um, it's not happening uh somehow let's see why not happening fragment constraint bottom to top of nav view and top to bottom of stories recycler view it should have happened uh but but let's see uh that's because i think the width and the height is match parent which we can deal with probably let's see this exactly who does not have any data inside it as of now uh, we we'll just give it a background of color black maybe we'll just see if it is working correctly or not working correctly uh, is it coming over top of it uh, it's coming on top of it which is uh, not the best thing to happen right now here so we'll try to figure this out why that is happening or like i believe the better way is not to use a constraint layout in a case like this and use a uh use a frame layout okay great so recycler view chuck all these constraints um uh, layout height is 75 dp right bottom navigation view again height instead of wrap content let's give it a height of 75 dp let's just say okay uh check all these uh constraints again layout width is uh, gonna be match parent okay height is 75 db margin start and end can go away gravity uh, will give bottom so we'll go to the bottom of the screen automatically 
Uh, we can give it 64 dp, I think, here. Good enough. Uh, right. This fragment here, we give it match parent, match parent like that. Remove all the constraints. Uh, margin top can be 75 dp. Margin bottom can be 64 dp. Sort it, right? It's much better way to handle this stuff. So there's space for the recycler wheel at the top. Uh, bottom does not uh, collide with things as well. So things are kind of better handled this way. Okay. Um, cool. Right. Now this recycler view needs to have those photos inside that. Now those photos, uh, there are a couple of options that we have. We can either go with circular image view. There is some library, Android uh, circle image view. Okay. Or uh, we can try with a card view as well. So I think we could Android card view image corner circle. I think we can cut out things with a circle view as well, with a card view as well. Um, so there's an all shown here that you can actually create using the Android X card view. You can uh, give it some corner radius and layout margin and so and so and you can actually get a circular stuff created out of that. So let's do with the card view stuff. Let's use card view which would not go into using third party like this. This library is pretty famous library by the way uh, to be very honest. It has 13,000 stars pretty pretty famous library uh, but it's a bit old. Uh, it probably does not have any latest code added since 2020 December like already been four five months. Uh, we can use the card view library. So I will do is uh, add the card view library. Do we have the card view already here? Well, we have the Android X card view stuff here. So what I will do is I will create a card view for that uh, image thing or the top there and create a recycle view for the same. In fact, we can use a card view for uh, the, the items here as well. So just a second. So this uh, feed item stuff that we have, uh, list item gallery. Here also we can do is uh, actually create a card view, right? Make it a card view. Card views are frame layouts by default. So if you look at card view, they extend from frame layout. So here what we can do is uh, we give this image view uh 350 dp uh like this uh then we give it a or we can just add a linear layout inside that of width match parent and height wrap content and uh, orientation vertical and then put these two things inside that so we got that stuff there so give this card view a margin of 10 dp. So we got a margin around that. Um, and uh, we need to add the app NS. Okay. We need to add a few things like card corner radius uh, 4 dp. So makes the card having some radius. Maybe you can add more as well and card elevation less elevation let's say just 2dp of elevation uh, there is supposed to be a stroke color as well or outline so when you add outline and all that stuff as well but we'll, we'll get to that let's just run this see what happens so every post becomes sort of a card in this case like this then there's a little bit of uh, padding between the cards, which looks a little odd, uh, right? We can deal with that. We can deal with that. So let's make it 60p. Sorry, 60p. Yeah. 
good. If this uh, distance on the left and right looks a little uh, more than uh, less than the one on top and bottom, we can handle that as well. We can do margin horizontal and give a margin horizontal of uh, 8 dp and give a margin vertical of 4 dp so that you know the the gaps look exactly the same because 4 plus 4 8 would be done now they look probably better the distance probably looks exactly same i believe now right yeah yep and uh here we go uh maybe elevation 4 dp is also fine let's just see how that looks like Cool. So I have got the cards here uh, in our page, looking nice. How about list items for the top view, right? So we'll have to build those as well. So let's go and build the one for the stories, okay? Okay, let's uh, proceed with the stories part here. Okay, so I'll just create a package for stories here inside UI. And inside main activity, like I have said, uh, we have got this, uh, you know, layout for activity main. We've created this recycler view thing here, okay. Uh, we'll create a stories. Uh, uh, we can create new. Um, Kotlin class of file stories view model okay uh, which extends from view model um, right it'll write all the stuff there uh, slowly one by one uh, it'll be kind of like the feed view model right we need the repository to go here uh, okay and uh, or we can call it the tags view model maybe because in our case it's the tags or whatever so so with the tags we can do is um, where do we get the list of tags from so the tags are actually available uh, here in the api so we get these uh, tags response inside the tags response we have got uh, the data which contains a list of galleries so Um, or let's just take gal tags equal to uh, mutable uh, live data of uh, type list gallery. Uh, by the way, it's, it's inside tags, inside data, inside gallery, uh, like that there. Uh, a couple of things we can actually clean up here as well. So if you look at the top post and if you look at uh, the image model here, so the top post and the image model are kind of very similar account account url add type comment count cover cover height uh comment cover cover height cover width edited so so, so seems like pretty similar images count is add album views both all that stuff is there actually uh in fact this is uh probably a super set because this contains 99 lines this contains uh probably less than that 69 lines so less parameters here but what you can do is actually remove that stuff top post can be of type uh, image itself okay this gallery data we can actually probably uh, put it outside uh, the gallery object okay uh, so there are a couple of ways to do it uh, one is you can just use uh, sorry you can do right click refactor and you can move it uh, move this to right click uh, refactor and move move to upper level class name refactor so gallery has been kind of uh, extracted out here um, can do is uh, put it here new Kotlin okay so 
So that's where it'll use gallery from, by the way. Um, makes the files a little uh, cleaner in that sense. So in a stories view model, we can actually use a list of gallery. This, okay. Um, and uh, we can do val tags equal to uh, val tags of type live data uh, list gallery. Okay. Uh, fetch tags, uh, maybe we can add a method called fetch tags. Fun uh, fetch uh, tags. What we will do here is we will make this uh, view model scope dot uh, launch on dispatches dot io again very similar to how we have been doing in this other view model okay uh, so what we'll do here uh, we'll do repo dot uh, get Oh, I think we have not written that stuff. So suspend fun get tags is going to be a list of uh, gallery we are going to be getting. Well, response equal to API dot uh, get tags and return response dot Body. Uh, if body is available, then inside that there would be data, and inside that there would be galleries. Okay, could be null. So we return that way. So in my stories view model, we do fetch tags and the repo dot get tags. Sort of like that. Okay. So we do that and we put it inside tags dot post value. Cool. Uh, that's how the stories view model is gonna work. Okay. Now inside my activity, main activity, I can do is uh, private val uh, stories view model by uh, view models. Okay, so we got the stories view model in place. Uh, when the stories view model is in place in on create what i can do is uh, stories view model dot uh, fetch tags i can start that happening and uh, so on uh, resume uh, we can do uh, certain stuff so activity is uh, resume we can do it inside on resume we can do it inside on create itself as well but let's just say we can do it in on resume what we do is uh, stories view model dot uh, tags dot observe uh, And then we can pass observe this and like this also it's possible to do in fact in the fragment one uh, a little update here i can do the same thing i believe using the same way ah, like that okay cool uh, so this and uh, when it is getting observed I need to do a bunch of things here. So the bunch of things that I need to do here is uh, binding dot, it has a stories recycler view. So you've oh, done the binding, set content view has happened. This is the navigation uh, stuff. So I'll we'll just write here, uh, you know, uh, Uh, it, you can in fact actually put them into functions which is kind of a better thing to do so you can take all of this stuff out 
and uh, create a function private fun setup okay so do the setup nav here so i call uh, setup nav okay uh, stories view model i do uh, this thing here um, setup binding i'm done uh, i will do this thing binding dot source recycler view dot layout manager equal to linear layout manager uh, i have to pass a couple of things here i have to pass uh, context then i have to pass orientation would be linear layout dot horizontal or should i pass recycler view dot horizontal Recycle to horizontal, I believe, is just linear layout dot horizontal itself, right? Yeah, so it does not really matter anyway. So, uh, yeah, okay. So, I've created a linear layout manager which is horizontal in time. Uh, reverse layout is basically it tells you whether right to left or left to right layout happen. So, that should by default be false. But I have to pass this third argument because there is either one constructor which takes one argument or another which takes all three arguments. There is no argument which takes, no constructor which takes just two arguments. I have to pass the third one uh, as a result of that. If I was only passing context, then none of these two were required. Okay. Um, okay. So do the setup nav and all that stuff. Um, adapter. So we need an adapter. The story is adapter, right? So it's a new. Uh, pretty similar to how we did free recycler adapter. So we do a you know stories recycler adapter uh, which extends from uh, list adapter again okay t will be of gallery type here and view would be of uh, i'll create a class stories uh, view holder which extends from recycler view dot view holder okay um, We'll get to there uh, so we'll do this view kind of stuff there in this case uh, it would be a stories view holder like this here the recycler view this wrapper correct now uh, change it to constructor invocation for uh, diffutal callback uh, put the methods here okay we will go and create that uh, stuff here so we'll create a class stories the diff callback which uh, extends from diffutal dot uh, item callback of type gallery have to do a bunch of things constructor invocation implement the members this is uh, gonna be old item equal to new item and uh, this is gonna be old item item have to add a suppress for this don't need this i believe anymore now uh, and we can write here uh, stories uh, diff callback like this can make this private okay so okay create view holder what we need bind view holder what we need so we'll get to those things uh, so we'll need a layout of course for the items that will go here so list item story so new layout source file for that list item story 
story head i will do These are the top ones the story heads okay so we start up story head uh, make it a linear layout is fine to me okay so it'll be a linear layout vertical type split i'll just go ahead and see so how do we go about doing this the the height and weight i'm just gonna see so so we have made a couple of things uh, we have made this layout activity main i have given space of only 75 dp at the top so i will make it accordingly i will make it uh, height i will make uh, 70 dp width i will make it uh, 64 dp so it'll look a bit like this it will contain an uh, card view by the way first of all with uh, width and height of uh, 64 dp and 64 dp or uh, i'll just go with 60 dp and 60 dp let's just bear with me okay i will give it a card corner radius and all that stuff uh, i will give it off 30 dp we'll start looking a bit like a circle I don't know if the shape is starting to look up here or not yet. So it'll look like a circle. I will give it a margin of 5 dp. I think I can't afford a 5 dp margin. I think I can afford only a 2 dp margin uh, because the outer view is like that. Uh, let's do, let's give it 75 dp total height. Uh, let's give this uh, layout width of 65 dp uh, 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 64 dp which is fine um, 66 dp let's just say we give a 3 dp of margin to this we'll get around to it we'll see uh, okay mm. so card corner radius is uh, 30 dp which is fine uh, there is something called a shape i think uh, believe either android shape or app shape uh, so just card corner radius itself is needed i believe let, let, we'll just get to that okay uh, inside this uh, card view i will put an image view with width match parent and height match parent right uh, i'll give the tools and s here so that I can write here that uh, tools, sorry, background, color, black. Okay, so that's how it's gonna look like. Um, okay, cool. That's how my image view is gonna look like. That's a tools background. So this is just for previewing. It will not actually uh, reflect. Got it. That's my image view here. Uh, cool. Then uh, what we do here is that we take uh, below the card view, after the card view, I take a text view here. Width, match, parent, height, wrap, content, and uh, I'll give it some text here. So I have to change the size a little bit, I believe. Uh, text size maybe uh, 10 SP, smaller. Uh, probably the entire thing not looking exactly very, very great. Uh, a zero dp margin and uh, padding also zero dp. Line height, can I reduce? What can line height be? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Eight SP. Let's just see. Okay. Barely visible, probably. Uh, that's how it looks like. Uh, avoid using sizes smaller than eleven SP. That's what it says. Uh, anyway, 
I'll give it a gravity of center here. Uh, text appearance. What text appearances do we have? Uh, small. Can you have a small text appearance? Caption, subheading, small, medium. Let's see. Maybe just go with small. We'll, we'll figure those things out. Slowly, slowly, the styling and all of that stuff. Uh, that's how it looks like. Uh, give this whole linear layout a, a horizontal margin. Margin horizontal of uh, 5 dp. Okay, so this is what my list item story head looks like. I will give this image view story head image view and I will give this uh, story head text. It's just something, something like that. Uh, give it a rebuild uh, so that I can create list item story head view binding. Here on create view holder, I will have to do is uh, val inflator equal to parent dot context dot uh, get system service layout inflator right and then uh, binding equal to uh, list item story head binding dot inflate pass the inflator same here pass uh, parent and false to attach to root let this take a binding here and let this be binding dot root okay so we'll pass the binding stories uh, return story view holder with the binding here Val uh, gallery equal to get item of this position, correct? And then we do uh, this stuff. We will do holder dot binding. Call it bad here. Holder dot binding dot uh, story head uh, text view dot text equal to, and I will do gallery dot title is there or I don't know gallery dot name is there which is fine and then holder dot uh, binding dot uh, story head image view dot I will load I will load uh, what will I load let's see so whenever you fetch for all the gallery uh, by by tags right we send we get like this list of tags so there's trees is something and all of that stuff so we get a background hash by the way so this background hash probably is useful you can use this background hash and uh, and you can use this here which gives me an image sort of like this okay so if i use this background hash here uh, again the same way take this format put gallery dot background hash gallery dot Oh, why I don't get gallery dot um, interesting get tags what did I get out of get tags tags response I'm getting data status success am I not getting data status success there is something different here where am I making this request so slash tags. If I make a request to slash tags, we get something very different here. Data contains tags. Oh, it contains galleries. I did not need the galleries. Did I? I have got most viral, user submitted, random, staff picks. No, I need the tags actually. So the tag response contains data 
and it contains galleries or it contains tags. So let me just change that stuff up a little bit. Uh, so I've got a few things back here. Let me go to my view model. Tori's view model. Tags is going to be list of type tag. Okay. Uh, list of type tag. Get tags. List of tag. Not the galleries dot tags is what I want. So cool. I get the tags. Once you've gotten the tags, uh, adapter code I need to change a little bit now. Yep, yep. So val tag equal to get item position tag dot so what do we get? tag dot name. Do we get a tag name? Tag has names. Awesome. Tag has a display name as well. So is the display name different from a name? Usually. I don't know. But display name sounds a better name to be used. Uh, oh, there's a space here. So I will use the display name. Hmm. Interesting. I will change tag to here as well. Change this tag everywhere. We good now. Has a display name perfect. Uh, okay, so here it would be tag dot background hash. Okay, on bind view holder we do tag dot background hash like this. Great, let's run my app and see if this kind of works or not i have set up the view model to fetch the tags on the tags available i have done is oh sorry um private val stories adapter equal to story recycler adapter okay uh adapter equal to this stories adapter great so now i will do is binding dot this dot adapter dot uh, or i'll just do stories adapter dot submit list uh, it right so i've created a stories adapter attached it to the adapter of the recycler view create a layout manager which is horizontal in nature and then when the activity starts i set up to fetch the tags when the tags are fetched set the data here adapter handles the rest of the stuff let's just run it once and see how do we get it hmm interesting only thing is that uh, the scale type here is a little bit of a problem, which we can fix. Uh, how can we fix that? Scale, I think we can use uh, scale dot fill. We can use scale dot fill type. Should do a center crop kind of a thing in that case hmm. fill the image so that both dimensions of the image will be equal to a larger than it does not happen that way the way i wanted it uh, we can check that and set the scale type here if i want to in my item image view scale type center crop okay so trees oc contest funny movies to watch and all that stuff is happening which is uh, sort of great 
not all are loading at the same time but but we can again deal with those things slowly slowly we can deal with those things one by one a uh, couple of things we need to make this a little bigger which is what i understand so i'll go to activity uh, so let's take a look at the layouts again so here's the activity layout this needs to be 85 dp i believe this does not need a tools layout anymore in that case uh, which means here my height can be 85 dp lot of space this text could be 12 sp in that case 11 sp in that case let's just run that and see where do we get there with that hmm interesting little bit of padding is also required so i'll make this 85 dp i'll make this you know 90 dp now i'll give it a margin bottom here of 5 dp uh sorry so need to make a different changes so let's make this 100 dp let's give it a top of 100 dp as well uh, or i think 90 dp is fine and 90 dp is cool here we have 85 dp and 5 dp and all that stuff let's go Ooh, cool, cool, cool. What happened? Mm. Margin top 90 dp. Uh, did that not work? Okay, that worked. Cool. Great. Uh, top stuff is there and uh, hot stuff is also there. Interesting. And all of the stories are there. Okay. So, fantastic. We want to preload them before they come to the screen uh, there is stuff we can do about that as well by the way uh, so we can check coil kt preload is there like a preloading stuff uh, to be done so here is how to do preloading to preload an image into memory nq or execute an image request without a target uh, so how do we do image request dot builder data is this uh, size is going to be a view uh, size resolver uh, so we can do something like that we can preload all the other requests as well via the view model actually Okay, uh, let's see uh, how we can do that. So that, you know, when we scroll, they are not coming out blank like this, um, right? So we can uh, do some preloading on that stuff. So, but this is like the tags. Now, if you click on that, we should store images of the tags, which is another thing that we need to do. So let's start working on that as well, by the way. Okay, uh, let's finish this. Okay, uh, so now if we get a tag as a story, how do we find out the photos inside the story like Instagram does, right? Uh, so, so to do that, um, if I go for gallery tag like this, okay, this is the next one. So in place of tag name, if I pass uh, trees like one of them was given, uh, sort window page again, not mentioning them uh, and uh, send them. So we get this data, which is uh, consisting of uh, the gallery object and further there are some items inside that. Now these items here are some title inside it, uh, some ID inside it, uh, there is a link. Um, 
it contains tags of that image and it contains images within it okay um, the ID that's there can we actually use that ID for something uh, on Imgur uh, I don't know uh, maybe uh, I dot Imgur.com like this if I pass the ID here uh, it does not show something like that it will show the images within it uh so, so so basically the first image within it would be uh, the url which we can uh, sorry get that pass there okay so there could be more than one images actually within that stuff uh, within that particular tab it could be an album right uh, in fact is album seems to be like true for most cases there is very rarely is album false uh, in case of is album false there is data directly available here uh, you know image so that's kind of the setup there so tag response if i just do tag response the data consists of uh, i just let, let me just copy this entire data for a second and let me create a tag response here models my data new uh, here advanced it should have well auto determined let's keep everything nullable annotation for code gen and extensions um, seems okay uh, so this is called tag response rather than tags response it's for a particular tag now actually inside this the data that comes uh, and the tags response so this contains this data as well which contains featured galleries tags like that this data here contains accent background hash background is animated which is basically looking a lot like the gallery object is it uh oh so it's looking a lot like the tag object right accent background hash all that stuff so we can turn this data into a not really because this also contains images within it uh description annotations i think we don't need this stuff we will remove that shit from there uh, contains item so items each item is basically so so an item is of type image uh which further can contain images it's interesting uh okay so we can make it a little recursive we can go to our image object and uh, does this contain a list of images so actually image contains a list of images by the way uh, it's it's recursive in that sense there is images which is a list of images so this item stuff can be actually image which makes this redundant don't need that and uh, yep so i can go ahead and uh, close this stuff out right then we've got this data so this data is quite a lot like the tag object uh, so we've got the tag object it contains does it contain items uh, it does not contain items here but it contains accent background hash description all that stuff uh, thumbnail is animated all that stuff is there so this is uh, 29 lines it's not a good way of doing it you should actually go and check all the fields I'm really doing it in a hurry 31 lines this has more stuff so maybe just this here into tag right it adds the 
items actually that's total items as an int which is seems to be the nullable part of it great so we don't need data here which can actually be tag sounds great gallery response actually has data like that tag response contains data data is featured gallery so okay. Look, looks cool uh, to me tags response uh, so this is a tag it's for any one particular tag and we can add a test for this uh, so let's make a get request to uh, where gallery t trees like this so gallery slash t slash tag and suspend fun get tag gallery uh we can pass path tag it's gonna be a string basically right and uh, it will give response of type tag response right cool so let's add that to our tests as well so here's where tests are very useful you don't have to actually go and change the code inside your app you can make changes in the test and quickly check out if things that at the logic layer are working correctly or not uh, get tag tree working so tree stuff boy right right or i can check for the or tag i think no yeah. uh, tree tag okay uh, get tag gallery trees i think what tags did i get right So all was one. I think we can go with all one. Get together and response body is not null. Let's just check that we get this response or not. Uh, debug. Let's hit it. Okay. So do we get a list of images out of this or not? Hmm. So. response um, body data um, contains contains what does it contain where are the items oh there's the items it's uh, 60 items out here each one of them is an image uh, has an account URL um, should have further images within that right uh, so either it has a gif so gif v's are basically copy the value here gif v extension it's i think a extension it's a video file so it's a extension created by imgur themselves um, interesting can i just get the gif out of it apparently can I can get the only pure gif out of it I can get the mp4 out of it fantastic I can get the mp4 out of it as well so I can make it a video player for this if I want to right can I get a jpg out of this just the still wow I can get a jpg out of this as well how can I get a moving jpg is this a gif Oh, it's a GIF. So if I look JPG, then I get a GIF at the end of it. But not a problem. Um, so we either are gonna get uh, is album in this case. No, I think, yeah. So either like is album is supposed to be false, but if is album is true for any item. If this element is true, then there will be images, right? And if there's going to be images, then uh, I can get that image out of there. Okay. So great, seems pretty good. Um, is there a way in the Imgur API? To get only JPGs? Or 
or not uh, let, 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 let's check that we can do that filtering on our own on our end okay uh, never mind but but uh, we're getting the data here okay so once we get this data with that data what can we do so with this data what we can do is we can create a new activity where we show that uh, story layout that Instagram has where there is a bar at the top which uh, sort of scrolls through stuff okay uh, let's let's do that right let's do that um, so we will need to rearrange the stuff here a little bit let me call this as home package uh, stories view model I think we can call this as a home view model I put the main activity into this gets refactored there uh, let's create a new package called story let's create a new activity here and I will go with an empty activity so I'll go with uh, you know uh, an empty activity of name story activity story activity uh, generate a layout file activities industrial story sounds good so you need to add the story activity and the main activity and all that stuff so need this cancel um, just load the file system changes add uh, so I think got a little bit of problems here import the r file here i think in main activity also i might need to import the r file it's already been done uh manifest in the story activity and the uh, main activity cool so i'll send an intent to the other activity uh, uh, from there right so i'll send a intent to the story activity uh, does the Android navigation graph work with activities? Let's just quickly check. So if you use navigation component, you are generally using uh, between fragments. So you can add activity destinations as well, apparently. Uh, from A to B so you can do a start activity intent or you can add an activity also into your navigation graph apparently that's great I can just start with a new activity intent uh, directly like that but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see activity destinations later on. For now, I will use the simple activity stuff. So if you look at the navigation, it has like a design view where you can see what all navigations are happening, navigation navigation top and all of that stuff. Uh, we can create another acti navigation graph for stories, but we don't need one. We can just simply send a new uh, intent to that. Okay. So what happens is when I click on any of those stories, uh, which is inside that adapter. So I go to the recycler adapter and uh, if I click on folder dot uh, binding dot root dot set on click listener. right so i will uh, start activity so i have to do context first so sorry uh, i can just do holder dot root dot apply set on click listener uh, context dot start activity create a new activity with intent
to uh, context and uh, story activity story activity plus sure right so it'll open the new activity in this case uh, if i click on any of those uh, things just quickly check that out So if I click on any of those, it opens the story activity. Come back from here, it just opens that. Okay. Uh, what do we need in a story activity and all? We're going to be uh, working on that. Okay. So we'll pass on uh, the, 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 the tag uh, name, I guess. I, I will pass the tag name into an argument into that. And the story activity needs to have, uh, you know, story pager view model or something like that okay uh, we'll call this as the home view model by the way uh, it's called the home view model uh, we can call main activity as uh, home activity by the way uh, and uh, they have to create a view pager so a view pager is basically how you, you page through different different images in your screen right so so you can use a view pager um, right and inside a view pager we can page through uh, different different items right and we can create a pager adapter uh, for that so we don't, don't need a pager fragment page adapter we can just use a normal pager adapter uh, pager adapter should work for us so there's a view pager 2 as well i believe this is the newer view pager apparently um, okay view pager 2 and it obviously has got a view pager uh, adapter also as well i believe view pager 2 dot adapter so i can create a view pager adapter here But I think a normal pager adapter should be okay for me. So let, let's go ahead and build that stuff. So I will add in my activity story, make it a frame layout. God, I hate the fact that they always make default constraint layout everywhere because most of the views don't require a constraint layout. It, it's too complex for that. Frame layouts are kind of pretty cool enough for most stuff. So What's the difference between view pager and view pager two? What's the difference? Uh, is there anything new available from view pager two uh, that offers enhanced functionality addresses common difficulties? If your app or uh, okay, if you want to use view pager, no slide between fragments and create swipe. Okay, slide between fragments. I don't need slide between fragments. I believe. Uh, I just need photos. Just need simple views, right? Um, view pager supports vertical paging uh, view pager uh, okay vertical paging so maybe we can use instagram reels kind of stuff maybe and you know right to left support modifiable fragment collection uh, view pager 2 is built on recycler view interesting Let's open view pager two. Uh, okay. 
How can I use the pager adapter? Update the XML file to vPager2. Update your adapter classes. Uh, when vPager. Uh, Oh, we just use a recycler view dot adapter with view pager two. It's interesting. Uh, we can use a uh, recycler view adapter itself because it's based on view pager. So let's create a view pager two here. Match parent, match parent. Let's give everything to this. View pager, okay. Uh, let's call it the story view pager. Uh, that's my frame layout. Um, uh, looks good. Okay. Then, 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 then. Uh, my activity we need to access this view pager what do we do so new kotlin class story pager adapter extends from recycler view dot adapter I think I can extend from list adapter itself, right? Because I mean, list adapter extends from recycler view dot adapter actually, uh, right? So have to do all that adapter stuff again, which is kind of boring. You have seen all of that happen once again. So you have to create a bind view holder, create view holder, you have to create a stories. Uh, so you have to create a class story page view holder extend from recycler view dot view holder. Uh, make it constructor, whatever, whatever. Uh, it will contain a story page view holder and first argument here would be of which type of uh, image type okay uh, get all that stuff ready uh, we need to implement uh, these two things then we need to implement uh, the callback um, we'll create class story diff callback extends from diff util dot item callback of type image right make it constructor invocation implement uh, members uh, pretty similar again this is kind of boilerplate uh, looking bad uh, bigger apps like kind of places I've worked at we generally create a base recycler adapter Which does this boilerplate in one place. You don't have to write the same boilerplate over and over again, right? Um, but for now, we're just doing that and uh, Universal recycler view kind of things that we make in other places. So we had that similar stuff in, in uh, Zomato we have some of the stuff in target. So everybody does that with big apps uh, You see there's a lot of common stuff we're writing inside every adapter anyway uh, besides the point, uh, this is the view holder. We will get to that view holder stuff soon. Uh, okay. What do we need? Um, we need a pager item. So we need a page item story. Uh, make it uh, frame layout. Pretty simple, it's just gonna have an image view. That's it. Match parent, match parent, that's it. Uh, just give a story image view, okay? That's it. 
page item story just uh, rebuild the project so page item story binding i will get there on create view holder i will do while inflator equal to parent dot context dot uh, get system service layout inflator hmm. right uh, page item story binding dot inflate with this inflator uh, inside this parent attached to root false well binding let's make the constructor here use binding binding dot root there right okay. return story view folder with binding here sorted on bind view holder what we want to do is uh, val image uh, equal to get item image get item composition okay so if image dot is album uh, i think i've got a wrong image here uh, not this image it is supposed to be the imgur image all sorted if image dot is album so if it is album then uh, what we do is uh, image dot uh, images and uh, image dot is album dot images count not zero okay so in that case i will do image dot images zero dot uh, link i think right yep else uh, image dot link is also there okay so you get the image url okay um, then image url is if it is available then we do folder dot Uh, binding to create val binding here folder dot binding dot story image view dot load img url okay so load that image there okay if it is available to us cool uh, the story will get loaded or something like that hmm. makes sense this is my story page adapter i can page through that and then we'll see how this works out we go to that activity okay uh so we create a story view model now so the story activity now we create a new uh view model story view model which extends from view model um give it a constructor um just like any other view model you need the repo 
just copy this and I will change the stuff. So instead of tags, we need uh, images, which is going to be of type image. It's going to be good image. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, fetch tag gallery, I will just do. And I'll have to pass a tag name of type string. Then we'll do uh, images dot post value repo dot get. Uh, oh, I have not added that stuff here. So suspend fun get tag gallery tag name of type string returns list of uh, images. How do we do that? well response equal to api dot get tag gallery with that tag name and return response dot body dot data dot items right so that's how we get it Images itself could be null apparently uh, in this case. So in the repository, we can do like dot filter not null. Get cool. So get the non null ones at least mm, because in the in the code it says it could be null apparently uh, we can fix that part by the way like it should probably not say null there uh, here we look at uh, the repo the, the repository get tag gallery uh, tag response uh, contains data tag images probably should not be null here it should be list of non nullable images yeah uh, the list is null yeah I think that's a better way to sort it so we don't need the question question mark here and we basically don't need to do the filter not null here because everything would be non nullable okay so fetch tag gallery is done here in my story view model okay uh, story view model I will create in my story activity um, so I'll do is uh, private val Story view model by view models mm, story view model. Okay, I don't need this. Cool. So I'll get my story view model. By the way, everywhere else my view model should also be private. I believe it's yeah, it's private. So this is my story view model. I've gotten it. Story activity. Inside on create, I'll do story view model dot um, fetch gallery tag. And what tag name will I pass here? So for that, I will do uh, val tag name equal to um, intent dot arguments uh, get string get string extra and uh, pass tag here okay so tag name dot let I do that so if tag name is available then fetch that data and then I do inside on resume story view model dot uh, images dot observe on this the images are available then what all do I need to do is that uh, By the way, you can use bindings here as well. 
So just set content view like this, we can do while uh, private late init var binding is gonna be of type uh, activity story binding. Okay, um, we can do binding equal to activity story binding dot uh, inflate on uh, layout inflator set content view binding dot root like this okay great uh, what else we need to do is uh, we need to set up a adapter and all that stuff for this here so binding dot story view pager dot adapter equal to and here I can set the adapter to a private val adapt story pager adapter equal to story pager adapter like this story pager adapter set that uh, story pager adapter dot submit list it okay believe I don't need to set anything else um, let me just quickly check how to use view pager 2 the Ray Vendalich article we can check that out as well Let's where is the code? Where is the code? So, gg. bogus. I had a view pager here, uh, and and then what we need to do? View pager. We just need to add the pager adapter. We don't need to do anything else. It seems like okay. So, cool. Let's just run our code and see if that works. Oh, by the way, it will not work directly like this. Um, we'll not be able to get this tag name, so I'll have to pass this tag name. How do I pass this tag name? Uh, Story pager adapter. Oh, sorry. I need to remove this stuff and I have to make this there. The other thing is uh, that start activity stuff that I had inside my adapter here. I have to pass uh, this. put extra tag and inside tag I will pass uh, tag dot name okay so I pass the tag name inside the intent here I receive that in my story activity here when I receive that I start fetching a particular tag re accordingly I believe this should start working Click on any new activity opens. Hmm. Not bad, right? The images are not preloaded, which is a bit of a bummer. Okay. Uh, so if we just log all the image URLs, so if it does not end with JPG, we can not show it or stuff like that as well. Uh, so I just do image URL stuff here. So in my story pager adapter, in my binding, let's just say I add another um, text view here at uh, wrap content, wrap content, give a gravity of uh, center bottom. Image URL text view, let's just call it that. And here I will just do uh, folder dot 
binding dot uh, image url text view dot text equal to image url i'll get to know which ones are not loaded and why it's not loaded actually so auto scroll as well we'll get to that as well soon this was a gif so it did not get loaded so coil is sort of unable to load gifs uh, can can coil load gifs let's check so uh sorry coil kt gifs can it load gif so i have to add the coil gif uh, stuff Unlike light, these are not supported by default. Has a coil as an extension library to support them. So let's implement that for sure, right? We need the gifs. So let's go to app. Uh, let's add a coil gif, right? Then we need to add something like this here, which says that uh, to add the to your component registry when constructing your image loader. Uh, when you're creating an image loader, do I need an image loader? I have not created an image loader as of now, right? Uh, so I believe how does this work? Dot load is taking a context dot image loader, it's a coil dot image loader. Can it take a image loader? Uh, can we create our own image loader? This does not use the GIF image loader, so we'll have to add the GIF image loader everywhere, I believe. Um, hmm. Context dot image loader. Instead of this, we can add our own extension for this. So we can pass image URL and uh, we can pass the image loader, uh, which we can do. So that's kind of where stuff like dependency injection is sort of useful, right? but we can deal with that problem a little bit uh, using some 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 context and all stuff so load image loader is context dot image loader call dot image loader this it always creates an image loader like that so okay uh, let's create some utils uh, Let's create an image loader. I'll create an object here. Okay. So, interesting. So, I'll do is uh, private var image loader uh, of coil type. Yeah, this is going to be private okay underscore like this right then uh, val uh, image loader is going to be a image loader coil type um, will
it will create a get function like this okay uh, Uh, let's just call it coil image load by the way okay private var uh, just call it image loader which is going to be of image loader type uh, one get uh, pass a context okay So if image loader equal to null, then um, we do is we do image loader equal to uh, coil dot image loader Or we can use a set image loader apparently exists so uh, we can remove this stuff from here so let's do is uh, imguram app extends android dot application cool and manifest application uh, give a name imguram app Okay, so in Mgurana map, I will do is on create. Coil dot set image loader. And I will pass uh, an image loader factory. Uh, image loader factory, which needs. new image loader something like that so i can do okay what do we need to do image loader dot builder okay we have to do a builder uh, kind of a thing so dot uh, component registry and you can just write this stuff here if SDK int greater than uh, 28 is what piece piece 28 I believe yeah is greater than P uh, add image hmm. so it's not working out decoder decoder uh, where is that coming from Okay, where do I get GIF decode around that stuff from? Image decoder decoder, why am I not getting this? Do I 
do I not have a target SDK of 28 or above? I do have. Okay, uh, image decoder, decoder import, and GIF decoder import. Cool. So if uh, greater than 28, then uh, image decoder, decoder, and else uh, GIF decoder. So this is only available in 28. So cool. Uh, that's my image loader uh, builder and uh, image loader builder dot build I have done. So I've set the image loader when the activity is created. So it should be able to decode GIFs automatically then I believe uh, because like this. Uh, what this function says is that set the image loader factory that will be used to create a singleton image loader. The factory is guaranteed to be called at the most once. Node factory will take precedence over an application that implements uh, Factory would take precedence over an application that implements image loader factory. Um, okay, set image loader, we'll do that. Okay, uh, got got uh, makes sense. And uh, let's start. So apparently, we can add uh, application can image uh, loader factory we can implement there as well it seems like if it does so so we can put all that stuff here uh, and then in on create we can do coil dot set image loader this interesting This should allow us to decode GIF images that coil is allowing via this method. Let's see if that works. Video frames, it can. Okay. Something crashed. Uh, okay, something crashed. Let's see. Action bar dot set title. Um, okay, some some something wrong happening here. Set of action bar with nav control. I don't know. Maybe I just need to uninstall this. Okay, let's run it again. Why is such a stupid thing happening? Okay, again, it's happening. Okay, here it's happening. Context is not yet available uh, when you need it. Hmm. Okay, that works, I believe. Uh, will the GIFs work now? It's not exactly still working. Hmm. Should have added the GIF decoder here. Remove this probably and not implement this and uh, put all of that stuff here. Let's try one more time.
there's a lot of mp4s which obviously are not working gif is also not working okay uh okay Let's try something else then. Uh, let's try one more uh, thing instead of doing this image loader dot builder. If I just use this for a second, set image loader uh, in my story pager adapter. Let's try this one out. If this GIF decoder works, apparently it does not. Uh, so I'll have to search coil kt GIF URL. Hmm. One of the problems that you face if you use like a more newer library because Glide does work with GIFs kind of properly. Uh, here it's saying it is giving a bit of a trouble. Can I set the type here or something? Uh, this obviously did not work, so check that. Image loader uh, builder is there. URI is there. Uh, interesting. So, coil kt not loading gif from URL. Let's see if we have. Cool. If I just use. Uh, Maybe GIF decoder everywhere. Okay. So for all APIs, if I use GIF decoder, maybe then let's give it a shot. Still not working. Use the GIF again. Still not working. Oh, that's working. Okay, so some GIFs are actually working. Some GIFs apparently do not work. Should we probably set a loading or something here. Uh, apparently, there's some uh, stuff happening here. I actually set it to 28 does that other gif still work so we have to understand a lot of these problems that happen in production level code certain gif has certain format which does not work so we'll have to deal with those things as well okay so gifs are actually working perfect right uh, make let's make a few more changes in my uh, page item story let's give this frame layout a background black So stories are kind of there. We need to auto scroll the stories. We will just develop that. 
by the way this background black here instead of here we can also give it the story uh, story xml itself so the activity story itself we can give it here as well that should also work Okay, uh, we need to create that uh, bar for sliding out that stuff. So, so let's do that next after this. Now we have basically a idea of the stories working, feed working, quite a lot of the stuff working, right? We need to create proper error handling, maybe add some dependency injection in our code to make it look more professional. Uh, but for now, basic stuff is all working for what we set out to build. Okay, uh, a few more things that we can do is we can actually cache the data uh, so that, you know, uh, when we are, you know, loading stuff so that, you know, that loading is a little smoother and, you know, when you go here, then these are less of them are empty and all of that stuff. Um, so let's uh, do that. So first of all, let's go with uh, the layout and then, 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 then the story head, uh, this stuff. Let's actually give it a background, by the way. Uh, Right, so the circle shapes are correct, correctly can be seen when we start loading them. Right, so they have this gray kind of thing beforehand. You can use a different color as well, or you can circle through the colors as well, and all those things. Uh, next, uh, how to uh, kind of preload stuff? So, if you look at coil preloading, so I think. Uh, uh, So you get uh, is there like coil uh, FAQ or something like that? So this is coil FAQ. Yeah. So there's this preloading information available. So how do I preload an image? So apparently you create a request and you enqueue that request like that. Uh, so preload a network image only into disk cache. Disable the memory cache for that request. So, so stuff like that. Um, What we can do here uh, for those cases is let's let's go to story activity before we submit that list here. So it dot for each we can do uh, is that uh, while URL equal to and uh, inside the story page adapter as we are using we are using image URL. Oh, not the story pager adapter sorry story activity story so not here not here my bad not here uh in the home activity right and in the feed activity feed fragment so in all of these things so home activity the story recycler adapter we are using this correct so instead of the home activity let's do uh it dot for each URL equal to this, right? Uh, for each tag, basically, right? Then let's copy this stuff from here. So while request equal to image request dot builder, context we can pass this. Uh, you data we can pass the URL here. Uh, in fact, we can just pass this there. Just directly pass this remove the url size okay so size we have to pass some size here and then you have to build and then we have to do uh coil dot image loader for this context dot nq this okay now size what is the size that we should pass here so the size here is supposed to be each story size so the story heads let's give them a size 60 dp 60 dp so let's go to the demands right uh, let's go to values and dimensions and let's add a dimension story head uh, image size okay and give it 60 dp here cool nice little size uh, let's add that here story head image size story head image size in those cases so that's the size so here you have to pass that size value here so what size value can i pass um, resources dot get dimension pixel size r dot demand dot same thing okay 
the requested width or height as per that size okay so we can do that perfect more preloading with uh, the feed fragment as well so in the free fragment also let's do feed fragment here um, so it dot for each here then uh, in the feed reset adapter we're using this thing right so the image you're doing this so just paste the request stuff here image request dot builder uh, the data we will actually pass this here into the data size for this case it has to be a little different i'll just get to that pass require context and uh, coil dot image loader require context okay so what should be the size here in this case so in this case the size uh, we can do is the width of the recycler view so with the width of the recycler view could be binding dot feed recycle view dot width okay so we can use that width as a size um, parameter or yeah okay so let's go ahead with that and see uh, what caching gives us so does caching give us something better all the images seem to be previously loaded uh the hot and top seems to take a little time to load uh, to me images are taking a little bit more time we can disable the disk cache by the way as it is said so disk cache policy thing what they have said is do uh, memory cache policy uh, cache policy disabled Oh, if you just want to download to the disk uh, or if you don't want to download to the disk and all uh, so we can set up just do this so i disable it in the disk but only keep it in the memory is that faster doesn't seem to be any faster Uh, anyway probably nothing better uh, so so one more thing we can do here is uh, actually do that a little while later so submit the list a little while later uh, while the cache is getting built that's also something we can do by the way right uh, so we can do for each indexed and delay the loading and all that stuff we can do a little bit uh, for now we need one thing else uh, when we load the app for the first time we can show a little loader uh, till the stuff is loaded in our uh, page and all so if i just remove the app from home screen and then if i just start it fresh takes a bit of time to load right so we can add a loader and all that stuff in our screen that could be a useful thing to add by the way and we can add that swipe to refresh thing so if you pull down here it will just refresh itself and all that stuff so that is something we can add swipe to refresh um cool but but i think for now it looks great uh, we need to add that animation that when you click on that it should uh, go to you know the next image while it goes to the next image by the way these images are also not cached so if you want to cache uh, these images probably you might want to do something about that as well so to cache these images uh, just to cache probably the next image only what we can do with this adapter story pager adapter here is that uh, this is the image of first position if i want to just cache for the next image private fun cache next and pass the position okay so we can call cache next and pass position here like this so while image uh, would be get item of the next position
we should try catch it so we should do try and uh, so we should probably get a you know index out of bound uh, array index out of bound exception if the array list is not that big so we can just catch for an exception and return null here right so if image is available and inside that find the same thing so while image sort of like this right so the image url is available then in that case i will just do is cache the next item uh, using the similar stuff that we used here what else stuff do we have to do that so we need a context so we'll pass the context so how do we pass a context uh, we can pass folder dot story image view we can pass that as a context Um, you get the context from there. Cool. The data we pass this URL that we just had, IMG URL like this. Size. So the size would be. Um, so let's pass the image view actually. Sorry. Um, let's pass the image view. The next page would be of the same width actually. So I will do image view dot context here and I will do sorry image view dot width here and here I will also do image view dot context. Okay. So I'll cache the next image every time I fetch an image. Let's see, hopefully that works. Just stop it, run it again. Okay. We open an e-story. You should really definitely add the loader here, but before that we open a story. We got an error here. So what's the error? Let's see. Width and height must be greater than zero. It's what it says. Uh, okay. Let's not pass the size then. Let's pass the whole thing. Apparently, image size coming out to be zero in this case. Does the next image get cached or not? Let me check. So we open funny. Hasn't been cached. If I see. Ah, oh, yeah, they are getting cached. So it's there, yeah. So 
sometimes it's getting cached sometimes it's um, sort of not depending on whether it's able to load the image or not but if it is able to load the image then at least the next image uh, kind of gets cached okay uh, that's cool i think the next image gets cached here at least when you're swiping through images the next image at least is uh, sort of loaded cool that's it not bad right uh stuff here is also sort of cached top So stuff looks cool. You can run the profiler also, by the way, on on your app when it is running, and uh, might take some time for the profiler to load. I have so many things to load on my laptop, but you can check like the memory usage and what network calls are happening from your device uh, when when this stuff is happening. Okay, so. Right now, it's taking a bit, a bit of time to load the profiler, but it should uh, work otherwise. Uh, so cool, I think uh, we got that working. The next part is would be to animating that header at the top of the view, which we would love to do. So the header at the top of the view, uh, we can go for the fragment, uh, not the fragment, the page item story, the frame layout. We can add a you know view here. Uh, Layout width match parent layout height say 2 dp. Uh, so let's just put a tools background here. Yeah. So I got this view. Uh, margin uh, top I think uh, can be 4 dp from the top. Maybe even more 8 dp from the top. Yeah. Uh, height can actually be 4 dp itself. Uh, background uh, is white. So you have that thing. Um, color white. Again, we can add another color. So. white transparent 50 where rgb uh, a so i think uh, we can just pick that stuff and make it you know half transparent okay so 88 eight, eight, like that so white transparent 50 and uh, let's put another view exactly at the same point right make it white uh, width i would say here uh, so scale x i will do uh, 50. So, sorry 0 0.5 uh, should be 0 0.5 okay and uh, layout gravity left why is the layout gravity thing not working uh, should 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 happen uh, um i don't know So do the translation and scale and uh, stuff uh, like that around here. Uh, we'll, we'll check that. Um, so, yep. So let's just give this uh, an ID. Um, progress view kind of thing. Just call that. Okay. 
So with the progress view, I, I would want to move, to do a transition for five seconds or something like that and then make it grow. Um, so let's, let's try and achieve that thing, by the way. So in the story pager adapter here, uh, we would have folder dot uh, binding dot uh, progress view. So how to set a transition? So let's see, Android set transition. So I'll do a scale animation on a few. So let's check that out. So to create a new scale animation, uh, and start animation or something like that. Dot animate scale x scale y something like that. So if I do. animate dot scale x 0 0.5 dot duration I think 3000 milliseconds dot start So I think let's let's start it from uh, let's scale it to one f and let's start it from a scale with zero. Okay, how would that look like? Let's just check that. Hmm, great, right? So every image we come to transitions like this. You can do from left to right as well, but I think this is also a good way to transition. Uh, set duration and there is a interpolator and alpha and a lot of those things. Uh, And you can do a with end action. With end action, you can run something. We can basically go to the next page or something like that, uh, right? Uh, so you can check those kind of things uh, if you want to. Uh, or we can do something. Uh, we can do something is uh, actually keep this stuff uh um we just keep that stuff here instead of there let's give an activity story and uh, let's just keep it here right same place it goes um instead of doing that stuff here we can do it in my um, story activity. Binding dot uh, progress view dot animate like this, and we can do it for every page change like that. We can do okay. So here will happen only once and not happen for every change. But to do it with every change, we have to work on a few things. So it will happen once. It's not happen after that. So we open a new activity. Then it happens. There's a bit of a stutter here, which uh, seems bad. Should not happen. Okay. Cool. So maybe we can give it a five second delay. And uh, 
bunch of things we can do here okay so first of all if you want a page transition to change to every uh, new page uh, on the page getting changed stuff like that so we can create a handler do a post delayed and every five seconds we can go to the next page uh, so stuff like that we can add here okay so first of all uh, we should add uh, Story view page dot. Uh, so animate gives me I think a view property animator. So you can register a on page changed callback and uh, we can add a on page change callback we can add here add uh, is that an abstract class? Well, it's an abstract class, so you can't do it like this. Um, we can't actually inherit two classes, so that's fine. Uh, we can do object that inherits from this. On page selected, so we can do something like this whether we get on page selected or not so post dot make text context position short and then show that let's see if we can see every page change is happening or not we'll have to make a hook to the page changes as well obviously this page zero page one page two page three that happens so congratulations that happens uh, what I will do is I will create a class here Parallel page change callback equal to I can just do you know uh, story uh, page change callback like this, right? And uh, or I can even in fact do an object here. So okay. Um, so use the page change callback object here great so on page change uh, we can actually do is um, take this stuff on every page change Clear animation and uh, I think on every page change we can at least make it happen every time again to start with
uh, wait a second. Where are we with this? Can we reset that animation or uh, we'll just check how, how we can make it work? That did not work. Can't reset that animation like this. So let's just create a view property animator rather than that. So private late init var view property animator. Okay, and I will do is uh, view property animator equal to view property animator and put a uh, binding dot uh, progress view inside that. What I can't do is uh, seems to be does it not have a public constructor? apparently you can do that so uh, you can do is uh, binding dot uh, progress view dot animate okay so view property animator uh, probably we can do something about this progress animator dot uh, cancel and then progress animator dot scale x to zero f dot duration 0 set duration 0 dot start and then scale x to 1f set duration for 5 seconds and start Set start delay after 10 milliseconds. So set start delay. Dot start. Okay. Uh, let's just see if that works or not. Apparently not. So I'll probably put the scale x uh, binding dot progress view dot scale x equal to zero f. I will set it again and then so you can chuck this stuff.
let's see that works ah that works perfectly so every time you change the page it starts from zero like this which is fantastic obviously plus every time i change the page let's also do one more thing uh, handler dot so let's create a new handler here for us uh, So create a new handler. Uh, it says it's deprecated. Uh, so what I should do? Uh, okay, we can pass the get main looper. Cool. So we got the handler. Let's create a runnable. Uh, So to go to the next page, what I need to do is I just have to call a uh, binding dot story view pager dot current item plus plus. Okay, so that's the next page running. Okay, um, what we do is that. Uh, handler dot remove callbacks for next page runnable and handler dot post delayed next page runnable after five seconds okay let's go and see how that works so this animation thing took uh, quite a bit of time actually uh, because a bit of a trial and error around this uh, and I don't do that kind of stuff on a daily basis so it's a bit of a trial and error for me as well so you click on that so open that after five seconds you should go to the next page ah perfect five seconds goes to the next page not all pages actually have data sadly so it's up to you you can choose to kind of go back uh, if you go ahead and all that stuff and uh, there we go you can use different kinds of animations at the top the Instagram has three four bars for number of photos and all that stuff so you can do all of those things uh, you have gotten an idea how to do these things now okay cool guess. so we have got quite a bit of an Instagram clone working we got stories we got the feed we got hot feed top feed all that stuff using the Mgur API I think uh, that's a great app that we have learned uh, building uh, we can uh, possibly continue doing other things we can clean up the code a little bit use dependency injection here uh, use something like you know tag a coin something like that uh, wrap up the errors in a better format right now so it does not have good error handling right now in this case uh, we have exposed retrofit from my libimgur which i i really did not want to do uh, you should have it implementation here and expose only the created objects uh, so that what network library are you using is encapsulated only to the lib level there's a bunch of things which can which we can do for making it a little better but i think at this stage it's pretty workable app uh, and a lot of people in their initial days they do deploy apps of this quality to the play store and we keep improving things uh, as we go by Hope this has been a good learning experience. Uh, if anybody has been seeing this video so long for five hours, I mean, hats off to your patience. Um, if you like that, please subscribe to the channel. We will probably have more such marathon sessions, building stuff. Um, and and, and if, you like, if you have watched all of these five, six hours of content, please do uh, mention in the comments uh, that you have. Okay, I uh, love to talk to you. Uh, great, so we have got an app, which is a clone of Instagram using the Mgur APIs. There we go.